Welcome, welcome everyone. How's it going? I'm Black Death Doom. Here to run this game. Hope you all doing well. Enjoy the marathon. Uh. Hey, Mies Baker, you there? <laughs> yo, yo, I'm here. Hello, hello, guys. I'm Mies Baker. I'm gonna help with the commentary a little bit. All right, well, turn off. Uh, no. Turn off vibrate and let's go. It's a win light. <laughs> Ready, set. Is vibrate doing anything bad? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's annoying me. That's what it does. How's everyone right, doing? Makes sense. Hey, Ryu, how's it going? So yeah, there's some beginning cutscene. We'll go ahead and watch it. It's pretty sick. Probably the best cutscene in the game, besides the ending, maybe. Yeah, it really is. This one is very good cutscene always. Like. So, what can we say on the run? It's a pretty long run, that's for sure. Almost 11 hours. Lots of text in it. And, well, mostly just a classic RPG run. Most of the stuff you need is like good movement. Because man, use shops, you need to know the route to spread. It's not investigated that much in like skips and glitches or RNG manipulation yet, but everything else is really very precisely routed out at this point. So, yeah, gonna be very interesting. We'll see how it turns out. Lots of RNG too. Oh yeah, tons of RNG. This way. Mostly all battles though. Oh yeah, and then the voice acting here. This is probably the best voice acting in the game, actually. So, this yeah. is her. Uh, let me turn up. <laughs> Alright, how? Okay. Oh, uh, I'm. I'm. Okay. Is it better now? Mm, indeed. Yeah, maybe just the game, or I don't know. Maybe I could put this up put a little bit. Custody. I don't know. That helps. Voice acting goes downhill. Yes, voice hand. acting necessary. <laughs> voice acting Everyone in this game is man. like crazy. Take that girl into custody. Favorite one is disc two. The faster cutscene that was like that is not your concern. Black monster? <laughs> the black monster! <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks for the feedback, guys. So, yeah, we see a, an invading army, a small town for a little girl, apparently. What could it be all about? Who knows? Some moon? Some moon in the background? Some shiny forehead. <laughs> shiny forehead. Yeah, that's what it is. I really think in this run we're not going to get away with just talking about the run. There's has so much text we need to talk about the lore too. <laughs> yeah, there's we had text. We had to talk about everything. We had ten hours to fill here, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so here we have the queen of disc one. She's like our main damage in disc one. Or also like really the most important character in the beginning of the game. Later on, not so much. Yeah, her beginning stats are way higher than everyone else's. Yeah, it's just For like the first three or four levels that you have her, she just has super, or maybe like six levels. Like I think eight to 14, she's like super OP and then. Yeah, and then she scales down. The rest down. starts to catch up. Yep. Yeah. I think she has like almost the exact same stat growth as Dart later. Just like Dart is always like one stat higher or something like that. <laughs> and he has more health too. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, so we're just meeting a bunch of characters yeah, now. Yeah, of Rohan. <laughs> what the heck is this? I was wondering that too. Like, she said the dragon, and it looks more like a mantis. Oh yeah, the dragon models in this game are very, very unique, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting design. All, all of them, like, themed. Something that does look like everything but not a dragon. Dragon in that shot is a very loose definition, that's absolutely true. This is like uh, with Turbo Right. Yeah. Because this game is really kind of heavy on mashing in the strats because we need to charge up the items. And, you know, for a marathon for 11 hours, you kind of kill your fingers with that. It's a little bit more relaxed with Turbo to do the round. Oh my, it's so much more relaxed with Turbo. I, I don't think I can mash for 11 hours right now anyway. I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really like, um, I think it's probably the most mash heavy run that I really know of because the amount of inputs that is required to charge an item up to 268%, it's it's so high. It's even more than the Valve in FF8 a lot more actually. You need to just do a different mashing technique where you slide over the button with two fingers and it's really stressful for that long time. I use a double thumb. Double thumb mashing. Oh really? That's crazy that you get that high with that technique. Yeah, it's not more Never consistent than the sliding too. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's sometimes weird. Sometimes you do the slide and it just doesn't increase at all, right? It's it's so. Yeah. It's I, th I think it's a ten it's inputs per second for matching to the max. No, 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 no. Ten inputs per second is rather easy to do. It's like fourteen and a half that you need to get. Is it, it to fourteen? Max. Hmm. You need to go really close to like fifteen hearts turbo. It's super, super hard to do it. So your double thumb technique seems to be really good if you can do it with that. Yeah, I'll use yeah, it. it's really, really mash heavy. I'll still, I still have to mash occasionally in the, a little bit of the with turbo. First battle of the game, let's go. Okay, so the battles... Yeah. The battle system in this game is like physical attacks are like combos, and every time you see like the squares, you have to you have to push X in the right timing so you continue. So the first one is just, you know, double slash, it's just two hits. But later combos can get like way longer. We're not using physical combos all too much though. They're called additions in this game. Because the best damage in this game is magic, and we're gonna see that very, very soon. The wind dance only run. It would actually be interesting. You want to pick up that burnout? Burnout, yeah. I wonder what we're gonna use that for. <laughs> yeah, magic in this game is like you have access to magic only over items or over dragoon, and dragoon obviously. You can't imagine it doesn't really pay because the transformation just takes really long and the animations take really long too. But the items just have incredibly high damage if you get them charged up well. And also with magic items you can uh, exploit elemental weaknesses of the enemies very well. So that's like the main thing that we're going to do. And also the main thing for the shopping routes, what stuff we buy, is mostly just about buying the stuff that is, you know, exploiting the elemental weaknesses of the next bosses we're going to run into. Gust of Wind Dance only a run is like the Japanese any percent. <laughs> Japanese in this game is way yeah, different. Yeah, right, the Japanese version. Yeah, it's different. They had to make it way easier for the English audience. <laughs> so they basically made attack items way stronger in the English version. So in the Japanese version, we use all editions instead of attack items. Remember how much it is? I think it's like a 50% higher damage right on NA. That's 1.5 malt is gone. Yeah, in Japanese. Could be even more, I'm not sure actually. Yeah, so here we only need to 
defeat the commander in the back and then the others gonna run away, so... Here's the first showcase of the charge items. Burn out on the commander and that's the fight, basically. Yeah, you see the turbo, it's going up so fast. <laughs> yeah, stop a little early because we don't actually need the maximum 268% to defeat that guy. 14 health only is achieved after already 234%. Went a little higher just for safety. Yeah, actually, it doesn't matter. There's break points. The, level up. <laughs> the, the break points for the animation. Yeah, yeah, right, right. It stops anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're right. right. Yeah, so uh, 204% like is the exact display. same time as the 268%. Mm. Mm. The, the break point numbers are 112, 158, and 204. So we'll be going to those ah, numbers. Okay, 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 okay. That's true. We'll be going to those numbers very... Yeah, so it's like when you charge up this thing, the animation just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, every time you're in, like, the same animation, it's probably the same. That's what you mean by breakpoint, right? Yeah, it's the exact same time of the animation. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stardust. Oh, Stardust yeah, we missed the Stardust. Only a in, like... <laughs> in Faust percent. There's a category, actually, for it, where you need to grab all the Stardust and defeat the optional super bosses. But not here, we don't need the Stardust. So, we're gonna enter the first hostile field now. So, a screen where like random encounters exist. Same, pretty much similar to like how Final Fantasies work. It's just that in this game, you get an indicator of your danger. So, you have the arrow over Dart's head, and it just keeps changing the color. It's first blue, then yellow, and when you're very close to the encounter, it gets red. And eventually, then you get a fight. However, we're never gonna trigger any of those encounters. Because there's an item in this game called Charm Potion, which just resets the danger back to blue. So, some sort of an equivalent to like step count in this game would be that you, you know, you have good movement, and you know exactly at what points you would get an encounter, and then you menu, use a Charm Potion, and remove the fight. So we'll never see any random encounter. Gonna skip all Hopefully. of those Charm Potions. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Another thing to notice on that is also that for some reason, when you use analog for movement rather than a D pad, then it increases slower. So you can get further before you get a fight. So the shopping was just he sold some stuff, he bought a few burnouts for, you know, item damage, and then bought uh, just charm potions. In this game, you have to take a little bit of. Uh, care with like how many items you buy of what that's one of the most important things about routing because you can only carry 32 items so you have to route out like having a good balance between items for you know skipping fights and still having enough battle items for boss fights and here's the first charm potion menu charm potion go back out also heal and keep going yeah, so the, actually the steps are exact if you have perfect movement anyway. And certain directions actually have more chance or increase the encounter rate even more. Right, so. Yeah, and that's really something I find weird. There's also some areas, I think. Like yeah, that, when you like go that area right there, there's no encounter. goes up slow and then the other one... Yeah, it suddenly goes up super fast when you go backwards. It's... I don't know if they have like different encounter rates within the same field or something like that. Or, uh, no, it's really the hard. directions that you're holding, control. actually. Uh, it's just the directions, yeah. And also, uh, it's really interesting that the analog movement actually does change it because it's not like you're in you're using less steps. D-pad also moves in the same speed. I tested it. It's like the same to the frame when you just hold up, for example. But still, uh, still, it increases slower when you use analog for whatever reason. I love this theme so much, the Helena prison theme. Yeah, there's a lot of good themes in this game, actually. Oh, it gets a little bit repetitive. Yeah, this game has really good music, it just loops a little bit fast. And then they use the same song for a lot of different uh, places, so... In the beginning you're like, wow, this game has amazing music, and then uh, when you play for like five hours, you start feeling like... I'm not sure, man. <laughs> kind of looping. 
But it's still pretty good music. It's maybe not as complex as for like FF, but it's still really good. So, in places like these, there are different types of encounters. You always have the danger on red, but not because the encounter is going to trigger over movement. In these places, just means that there are ways to trigger fights just by running into people. So you have to avoid those. It's like some mini guard dodges that you have to do eventually. That you just, you know, don't run into those guys. If you're not running into anyone, then you're not going to get a fight just from moving. So we don't need charm potions in these kind of places. Actually, this is the only place that we're going to use a charm potion in battle. So in battle, charm potions stop minor enemies from targeting the person you use the charm potion on for three turns. And we'll see that in this next fight. Right. Reason simply why we never use it anywhere else, usually usually we are not alone or don't fight enemies that are susceptible to charm potion. It only works on smaller or like you know, like bad enemies, not like boss fights. And when you have other party members in the team, then it doesn't skip turns. So then the guy will just focus on someone else. But when you're alone, using the charm potion will just not make him attack at all. Because there's no legit target for the guy anymore. Like, this is really the only scenario where it really makes sense to use Charm Potion Battle. Because now he can't attack you. Until we have defeated him. Elena Prison is also one of the few places where we really focus on physical damage, mainly because um, it's just not worth it to use items here. They're not doing that much more. The animations drop along. And I think those guys also have... Uh, they have... Uh, resistance to fire and the only thing we have not right now to attack with items is uh, fire items and well we need those for the bosses right so in fact the fire items we actually carry them over to disc 2 we're just keeping them most of, most of them at least we're gonna keep like five burnouts just for later water bosses in disc 2 Yeah, so it's just physical damage here. That was like the first dodge. It's that one is like nothing. You just have to wait for it to turn around. It gets nasty when some of the guards like surprise you. For example, where we just left, uh, a guy can suddenly come out of the screen, you know, against him. Then you have to make a little dodge, like go left, right around him. It's not a terrible thing, but it's really it's annoying if you mess it up and then you get like one minute long fight. So the battle system in this game, um, uh, turn-wise, it's like it's not like ATP, as you can see, it always turns back to back. But there's just like RNG in it, and you can't tell. So it's a little bit like FF10, except you don't see who's who's got the turn win. So that puts a little bit of an RNG element to to know or not know when it's you know, your next turn or enemy's next turn. And it starts to matter in these fights actually, because now we have three enemies. And we have two people to fight, and you always need one addition from each to kill one. So most of the time the best thing is to just hit who attacked last, so that you can be sure that uh, he doesn't attack twice in a row. And preferably you also want to attack with dart first, but you can't always choose that, because when they get like in low HP, they start throwing magic, which is slower. But when Dart attacks first, because he's weaker, he keeps them in high HP, and then Levitz can defeat them before they do that. So yeah, there's a lot of time swing in this place, just with how many enemy turns you get. It's really a lot of RNG here. So that was the bad worst start possible, three enemy attacks. Yeah, so he cancels Double Slash, like you can see, because he doesn't need that, but finishes hard to or not. <laughs> we'll go ahead and showcase. <laughs> yeah, so enemies have different turns, or different uh, abilities they can use once they get to yellow or red HP, or half-life. So he doesn't do that unless he gets yellow yeah, okay. or life. This is all part of Levitt's manipulation to make sure that he dies on the wall. Or no, he, he keep him alive there, right? It's, uh, it's Levitt's early right? right? Yeah, lab it's early until hoax. Yeah. So 
it's not so often, but... <laughs> yeah, so I would reset this already. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. That would be a reason already. Right? Probably, we have. Uh, oh no. We have like a mess up turn order now where they're always. You know, where Levitz has to hit first. We always need the big damage from Levitz and then they use magic. When Dart hits first, then, you know, it's only two damage from Dart. They keep doing only physicals and then Levitz kills before they can do that. Yeah. We already have Volcano. It's just not worth it to equip it because we. Um, Double Slash does more damage than, like, you know, the first two hits or one hit. So you just don't need it yet. Yeah, it's all about animation length. Do you even equip Volcano in this? No, we don't equip Volcano, uh, volcano at all. Yeah, the only additions we see in this route are Double Slash, Harpoon, Raw Typhoon, uh, Gust of Wind Dance, and Hex Hammer. Right. Maybe Whip Smack if Farash HP. Work oh, yeah, in a yeah. certain way. Maybe when Rose has to finish there, yeah. Very rarely, yeah. But rarely, yeah. Yeah, we're not seeing Gusta Wind Dance until the very, very end for Albert's uh, moon fight. So, uh, <laughs> long time to wait for that. Oh, right on Dark Dole, right? Yeah, right, right. Yup, he gets the turn. Yeah, this is like the worst RNG start so far. And then the mistake, of course, yeah. too. <laughs> like every guard attacks as many times as they can. pick up the key here to get into the right tower where Shana is being held captive. Yeah, it's a long speed run because there's no major skips. Like like Mies said earlier, there's no... <laughs> the route isn't... Well, the route's just all execution of the game normally, basically. There's a few minor skips here and there, but they're really hard. Yeah, we need someone in the community who's like, yeah, he's like really good at researching this stuff, like RNG manips and glitches and things like that. Like I'm, I just don't know how to do that. That you just find valid, like super important addresses for like story triggers and things like that. I always need to build up on work that other people have done for this kind of thing. Yeah, I'm the same way. I just, I just do runs. <laughs> <laughs> There's been like one small thing, like one small skip has popped up at some point, but yes. no one was ever able to reproduce it, so we don't know if it was just version independent because it was done on the PlayStation 3, and it's known that the PlayStation 3 emulator for PlayStation 1 games is pretty goofy, so it might be just that it only works on the PlayStation 3. It's just a weird thing where he just runs into a barrel and suddenly just triggers like a door that's completely in a different place and it just warps there. And no one really knows how it ever worked. It has not been reproduced yes. an emulator yet by anyone. Like a PC emulator, you know, an accurate one. <laughs> this one went pretty well, I'd say, this fight. Yep. It's just seconds, though. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Once we get to uh, uh, Melbu from the final boss, <laughs> then we'll have some RNG that shifts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's just, it's right. Like the heavy RNG in this game is basically 
later in the discs when just bosses start to have such a swing and how long does it take until they finally take out your party members and you're allowed to kill them, right? <laughs> so it, it just kind of hurts still, you know, to lose time earlier. Like no one likes to run with like plus one minute or so, but in the end, it doesn't really matter, that's true. Real RNG happens later. Oh, Shana's getting her roll. As we said earlier, additions are barely used in the run. We mostly need magic, and Shana has, slash Miranda has the highest magic step, so she's gonna be the absolutely key of this route. She's the damage most of the time. You're gonna see a lot of Shana in action, for sure. I think I see Dart on the ground. Dead. <laughs> yep. It's like the funniest thing, so at some point you realize that you can manipulate the way that the game hands out experience. That's one of the most defining things about the speedrun. Because it's like the experiences are first divided by how many people are alive. So for example, when a boss gives 600 XP and you have three members alive, every party member gets 200. If only one party member is alive, you get that one party member gets the full 600. Which is very important. Basically better to have one high level guy than three immediate level guys. But another thing is also that the passive members get more XP. Because the experience that is getting handed out to every party member is just getting halved. Meaning when <clears throat> meaning when you have three party members alive, the passive members outside of battle get only 100. They get like a sixth of the XP. However, when you solo, so that one guy gets all the 100%, the 600, then everyone outside of battle gets 300 which is still 100 more than you would normally get if you have like three active members in fight. Which means you also build up the, the people outside of the party much more. And that that just makes it, you know, that we can be very much stronger in boss fights and win the boss fights a lot faster. And therefore, in all the boss fights, we're gonna try to solo with someone. Or at least in most of them, we're gonna try to solo with someone. So we have to wait until the boss um, defeats the other party members. And early on that guy is Levitz, he's like the damage. But, you know, for Frugal right now we're only gonna get rid of Dart because it's not worth it to get rid of Shana too. Or do you get rid of Shana? That's like different routes for early game, I don't know. Are you... Uh, we let, we let her survive on Frugal. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah, right. Because she helps on a robot as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's also, at the same time, one of the biggest RNG elements. Because in Legend of Dragoon, you cannot target your own party members. This run would be so much easier and faster if you could target our own party members, but we can't. We always need to wait for the boss to have the mercy to take out the guys that we don't want, so we get the XP manipulation. So here we're gonna buy more items. Just stock up spark nets, the thunder item. Thunder is, by the way, never able to exploit an element. It's kind of like, it's similar to like neutral. It's just some enemies can be resistant to it, but you can never exploit a weakness with it. But it's just the only item we can buy right now, and the next enemy doesn't matter, so. Then go with the Spark next year. We got Frugal. Let's hope for good luck. So Dart is the one we're gonna want to get rid of here for XP manipulation, and he's already pretty low, so he's just gonna die definitely from the AOEs that are gonna happen in the fight. RNG is really just um, how many turns we're gonna get from the guards that pop up. So let's see what's gonna happen. Levitz and Dart take out one guard together with their physical damage, and Shana yes. takes out the other one with her magic damage with the very low charge spark net. So this is Shana's strength. Shana is having the highest magic set, and yeah, she's there for you. She can do a lot of damage with those items, so only to stock up to 120 and get And now here's the reinforcements, and now you can target Fugo too. too. 
and it's like when these when one of these uh, guys is dying, then someone uses a power up. And we want to try to make sure that Kugel isn't using the power up. So you can defeat him with like 200%, but you see he only goes to 190 because we want that guy to use the power up, which makes that it, it's very hard to deal damage to. Him. So we charge him first low, down to one, to 1 HP, then we defeat the other guard. And then that guy's gonna use the power up, we can still defeat him very easily just with a physical, although he's powered up. And we don't have the problem that Fugil does the power up. Power up basically increases both physical damage and physical defense by a lot. So that's why we didn't kill the first guy with the item. We only brought him down in health. So now we get 200% on that one. With, oh, no. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. We don't need 200 because he dealt physical damage here. Yeah, so he stopped it early. Now he's defeated, and now the other one is going to use power up. We have to wait to kill him until he does, because if you kill the, this guy now before he does power up, Frugal does it. Okay, uses the power up. Now we can defeat him, and then we can start. Dart is down too, which is what we need. We need only Shana and Levitz alive so they get more XP. Works. This guy, this fight, uh, this fight goes really well. Right. Let's see. Levitz slow. <laughs> Levitz has to survive here. Levitz is pretty low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope this goes well. <laughs> we need three items only to defeat Fugo. So hopefully we get those through. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Should be good. Should be good here. Shana and Levitz should both get a turn, then we have GG. Textbook fight. We got more turns than I thought was going to be. Oh! Okay, everyone alive. Hey, don't worry. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty casual <laughs> that everyone's <in> red. <laughs> everyone being red HP is pretty normal here. <laughs> Alright. Excellent. Nice. Okay. So, more XP, twice the XP for Shana and Levitz, and that helps us for the next boss, the Urobolos. Urobolos is an enemy that maybe a lot of people have seen before, even if they haven't played the game, because that's the fight from the demo version. There was a demo version back then when the game was like about to be released, and it was basically just the next level that we're going into now, and that's made possible. So, I said earlier we try to actually focus XP on Shana, or in this one rather on Rose first. But right here it's worth it to just keep um, to keep two people alive, you know. It would help probably a little bit more in later in Hoax with Levitz if Levitz had all the XP. But it's not worth it because on Urobolos we want two damage dealers in the boss fight. So well, we're using a so PS2 good. console for the game. Yeah, the Wokia Amardillo horses are the best. I like them. I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to ask. I was wondering. I was too busy looking at other things. So you see, we only healed up Levitz, because now in Robolos we eventually do want to get rid of Shana. So we have more um, experience for Levitz, because after Robolos is a boss fight where you only have Levitz and Dart. And it's all physical damage, and so you want as much uh, XP on those. Shana does not help you in Hoax, so unfortunately we can't build XP on her here. She would be so useful in Hoax, but you know, she doesn't fight for some reason. Only the dude fight there. She has to cook food, I think. Super old-fashioned. Yeah, that's one of the many complaints. <laughs> she, she, she doesn't even get mad about it. <laughs> you should just cook <laughs> instead, Shauna. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A little bit of foreshadow in there. Lavis gets hit in the Achilles. Hmm. <laughs> you mean foreshadowing to Skyrim? Taking an arrow to the knee. <laughs> I 
I used to be a legend of the green main character, but then I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> this place is so chill. Like, this area of the game is, like, super chill. I like it a lot. Okay, got some mini game here. Go to the river, find the tree, chop the tree, cross the river. And lots of text in between. And this is again hostile area, so we talked about earlier, gotta be careful. When the arrow is turning red and about to get a fight, you need to use the charm potion to remove the fight. <laughs> Early grinding place in casual. Not really. One of the things that I like a lot about this game, this is the thing that makes me like it really, is that grinding is so useless. I mean, outside of building up additions, but the main, the most important thing is what you do in the boss fights and the strats, because you can't just make yourself overpowered unless you invest incredible amount of hours, because the amount of experience that random fights give you is really, really low compared to boss fights. Boss fights do all the XP in this game. You're always gonna be like in a similar level, more or less. That's really nice. Now it's story it's time. It's also why the XP is mostly so important. Yep, story time. How long are they talking? You 10 minutes or something? <laughs> it's like a four and a half minute cutscene here. Yeah. And right before the cutscene, we picked up a pretty good item. Total vanishing. Kills a minor enemy instantly. Worth picking it up. Yep. Total Vanishing is... <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, Total Vanishing just is super nice because also the animation is so quick. Just, it's like a... Woo! One enemy's gone. No, that's, again, uh, probably you saw Dragoon in this area in the demo version. In the demo version, everyone has Dragoon unlocked. You also have Shana in the party. But here we actually don't have Dragoon yet main game it happens much later or like a little later let's say a little later like half an hour from here fun fact um so in the german version of the game actually charm potions just crash the game it's just like a real mistake in the game. It's not something that's like console related or version related or anything. Like you can't play it on PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, even a real PlayStation 1. I have a real old grey PlayStation 1, it doesn't matter. When you use Charm Potion, like that item that removes uh, encounters, if you go on the menu and use it, if it's a German version, the game just crashes. Which is why, until I saw speedrunning, I never knew what that item does. Like I was always like, what does it actually Charm Potion? Like what does it do? I never knew that you could just remove encounters like that. Because in the version that I played as a child, the game would just break if you use it. It's crazy. Yeah, they never fixed it for some reason. It just got released like that in my country and you can't just use that item, it just crashes. It's... I also researched it on the internet, other people said the same thing. It's really like programmed like that. Yeah, Dart's just telling the story about his family. His first home in Neat, being destroyed by the black monster when he was six. Was he six? Something like that. He finds his father's memento, a little shiny pebble. And then apparently he makes it to Celis somehow, eventually, and meets Sean, and the rest is history, as they say. Yep. Oh, and apparently left five yeah, years ago. Really on an yeah, adventure to find the black monster and never find him. Game is really good storytelling, actually, with those little flashbacks. I would prefer them not for the speedrun. <laughs> it's actually pretty well done. Look at that beautiful shiny axe there on the barrel. I wonder if that could be used for anything.
Did you ever accidentally heal on the chair there? By the way? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's like the worst thing I know. I have that to me as well. So there's a chair in this room which heals. It's like a, you know, like a resting place. And, you know, we want to manipulate XP. So we want the, the health to be just the way it is. You know, we only healed up Levitz. And we want the other ones to be on red health. Just so they die easily in the next boss. And, you know, when you accidentally hit the chair, everyone gets healed and you can't pretty much restart. I like how they're trying to hold an entire tree with their hands. That never works. Okay, now it's, of course, dropping on the river where we were earlier. We didn't get past, and we can go through. Another charm potion quickly. But then, who defeats the Sandora Elite when we have Levitz fall down the cliff? We already put all the experience on him. <laughs> Dart is level 3 only, he can't tell. He can't help us. We need him now. Yeah, Turbo just makes yep. this game so much easier. <laughs> 11 hours of text and item mashing. That's... Turbo is... Useful here. A little bit of a water slide here. We. <laughs> okay. And a little detour here. There's another total vanishing right on the screen. The item we talked about earlier, which can just one shot very fast against non-boss enemies. I mean, it can sometimes defeat even enemies in the boss fight, but then they're like sidekicks that aren't bosses themselves. Technically, turbo is the exact same speed as no non-turbo. It's just a lot easier. <laughs> That's only if your mashing technique can last for 10 hours and is good enough. Yeah. No, it's not a different route because the people that run this game have brought the mashing technique to a level where they also get pretty much the max damage out of items. So you do the same ba battle strats with or without turbo. And also the tech smashing, which is so in, the, in, the, in this game, the tech smashing works a little different than in most other games. It's like when you hold the button, the text flows, but at every, uh, whenever it fills a line, you need, to pr you need to push ones. So that's mostly like technique to do that in the best speed, you know. But you can do it pretty much as good as Turbo does it with a lot of practice. It's not like you do like in Final Fantasy, you always do like vibrate mashing in text, you know? Because it's just like the text goes up automatically and you just need to have luck that one of your inputs is just when it's possible to close it. But here it's like you have to keep making text flow. So it's very different. Yeah, technically it's faster without Turbo for mashing text. If you do Really? It right. That's interesting. If you, if you do it right. Right, yeah. Like, because you want to be holding yeah, it and then just mash more, at the perfect right? time. Yeah, makes sense. So the text is actually scrolling a little tiny bit slower with Turbo because it's releasing at the button. Alright, here we go. Yes. We do not want Sean to get targeted so yet. This fight, we won. Exactly. <laughs> right. We want her to die, but not so early. We want to get... Shana does the most damage here. So the more turns we get with her before she falls, the better. But of course, we still don't want her to stay so long that you know, we have to wait for the boss to do more turns. So Preferably just the perfect timing. So, you know, let her attack a little bit and then defeat her. Just when it's right. Basically, as long as he doesn't so target really her now, it's fine. Yeah. Would be nice to target Dart. Get rid of him. Come on. Well, that Dart. sucks. Hit Dart. Nah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, now it's gonna take a little longer. Double flash. Mm. 
I mean, it is what we need in the end. In the end, we want Chana and Dark to fall here, but we just want Chana to do one more spark before she falls, because she doesn't know the understand how to do But it's fine. it's fine. It's just a small time loss. It's nothing, nothing critical. All good here. Nice. No poison. Poison is also not a terrible thing, but it's just a little annoying because you need to, by body pure fire, cure levels of the poison. Now we don't because he didn't get poison. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> never mind me. Yeah, this is just a slow fight. Now. <laughs> Optimally, yeah. Chana will have three turns for, to throw three items. I guess with the slow fight, it's like you always get poisoned, right? Because he gets another turn, yeah. and it's the only thing you can do from that position. Yeah. It was clear we get poisoned. So we also do actually have to consume one more burnout now than we normally would, right? Now nah, I'm just gonna harpoon. Oh, okay. That works. Oh, okay, yeah. Just wait a minute. Okay. That's also why I double slashed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So a little bit of physical damage because else we would need another item and we want to keep the burnouts here. We don't want to use more burnouts in this one because we really want them for Linus in this too. Yes, we need all these burnouts that we have for Linus in this too. So we're gonna save all five of these burnouts until this too. <laughs> Yeah, so I said earlier we always try to buy the items that have like the opposing element, but you can't always choose that, you know, because I item stores that you come across usually only sell like two types of items. So just around Linus where all like, you know, the water enemies are, or rather she's like the only one. You can't buy burnouts in that place, nowhere close. You would have to actually roam back all the way to this one. Probably even, I think that's even a, a, a point where the game tells you, please insert this one again, you know. <laughs> Switch the death to this one to see this one map again and then buy burnout. You know, I don't even think you can buy burnouts anymore until after. I mean, just... Even if you go back, I don't think you can because that guy, right. the merchant's gone. Oh, nowhere, else, nowhere else sells oh, the burnouts. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, even in this one, there's no burnout shop, actually. It's, it was that guy in the forest in the beginning where we bought them from. That guy disappears. You're right. We can't just buy more. Oh, also, that was the first case of Dark getting back up and taking the final hit. Yeah, we just kind of cringe because we keep letting him die. <laughs> but still, he's always like... He's like the kind of guy everyone defeats the enemy, and then when the enemy is dead, he comes like and kicks it like, I, I did it to you. <laughs> yeah, Dark's always taking credit for everything. They always say, I he got it, or I did it. <laughs> he always takes the final big finisher. <laughs> Although he doesn't do anything. He's on the floor the entire round, uh, the entire run, actually. Alright, cool, pretty cool cutscenes coming up here after a little bit of menu. Oh, right. Right, right, right. It's, it's very well. We talked about voice acting earlier. I think actually the cutscene that's coming up now is the one that has the best voice acting. Buy a weapon and armor upgrade for Dart so he can help a little tiny bit before he dies in the next boss fight. Yep, so in Hoax we don't have Shana's help, unfortunately. So 
gonna be the two dudes. So we actually want to Dart always to die, so he gives XP more XP to the others. But we just have only Levitz in Hoax outside of him, so he does need to help a little bit. Or he can help a little bit. Yeah, just sold the, the item. We mostly get money out of just uh, selling items, because most of the equipments or accessories that they drop us, like those rings, they're pretty useless. Like that, that thing, Workout Amulet. What's, what's that Workout Amulet? Is that the thing that... Uh, uh, 10 more yeah, more accuracy. No, I guess. Oh, 10 more accuracy. Yeah. yeah, accuracy. I think both magic and physical attacks. Yeah, because this game has so many misses, right? That it's so useful. <laughs> like in this game, stuff basically never misses. There's exceptions, but mostly stuff doesn't miss. Yeah, exactly. Accuracy is only useful for unique monsters that are on the yeah. world map sometimes. Because they have a very high evasion. But we're never going to fight those. <laughs> As if they were gods, Winglies ruled over Creatures this guy is such a cool boy. The, the enslaved suffered a terrible domination and injustice. Their anger turned to a flame of fury. Then a gust of wind blew throughout the lands, spreading the flame to a blazing fire. The wind <laughs> they to laugh was and burned the ass. Still. Seven <laughs> incarnations of dragons down. served the kind of looks like something that I would have inspired people to take up arms. Thus began the <laughs> look how they look campaign. on the dragons. <laughs> it was a harsh war. Both people and winglies suffered countless injuries <laughs> and fatalities. <laughs> After a long period of suffering, it was the humans who acquired the future. The age of humans had begun. Oh yeah, very good, very good. There's a few more of those in Somehow no one cares about the weird dude in the back. Oh yeah, main villain in the back for a few discs anyway. Just chilling there with his hood, being super incognito. So in this place, Dart's motivation to follow and go to a hoax is really just to help in the war, just to end the war, because the war has also caused his village to, like, break down, right? Or, like, what is the correct formulation in English? Like, get destroyed, invaded, or whatever. And now he just wants to help fight the other side that attacked his village. And so he's now, uh, yeah, supporting the side that fights his enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Exactly, yeah. That, that's how I meant. You did the shopping already, right? I was, uh, wasn't taking No, we're doing it right now. Oh, don't even Yeah, so stocking up. This is one of the shoppings where in the routing you have to be careful, because here you start hitting like a 32 item limit. If you're not paying attention. So you need to know how many charm potions you need. And, you know, you need to take the body purifier because that's the poison. 
He lacked exactly 11 charm potions is what we need. One Meteor Fall for one boss later and the rest spare of Frost. Meteor Fall is an item that hits all enemies. And we fight like a boss fight with two bosses later where one Meteor Fall is good. And then the rest is just Barrel Frost because it's just like you know, the single target item. Uh, Spear Frost is actually the fastest animation as well for attack items. So it's right. pretty sweet. But yeah, items are exactly, we have exactly what we need right now. We're going to use all of it before the next shopping menu anyway. Text option, a little bit faster. Almost messed it up too. Yeah, this game actually has surprisingly few spots where the second option is faster than the first one. You can often just mindlessly mash, but this is one of the places. Now there's like, uh, like 15 places where the second option is fastest. Maybe 10. Okay, then let's say there's only, um, let's say there's only a few options where it's faster that I know of right now. <laughs> well, you're going to learn today. Perfect. More story time here. We got some sick music, too. This probably has, like, the best music in in a row. There's Bale theme, Royal Castle, then this song. Yeah, and because they switch fast enough that you don't notice how much those songs loop. If they stay on for too long. <laughs> I like this autumn themed town a lot. The graphics in this game, especially also in battle, is probably like the peak of what the PS1 era had. It looks a good bit better than the FF games that you could compare it to. Yeah, this game came out, like, way late in the cycle of PS1. I think PS2 came out... I can't remember when PS2 came out. 2001? Yeah, I think so. 2001, I think, as well. Well, in Japan, 2000, but I guess everywhere else a little later, right? I'm cheating and Googling, so I can act like I know things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear that Legend of the Gunu got released, also 2000, so yeah, it's pretty much. It's just the end of the PlayStation <laughs> 1 era. I remember, I think Final Fantasy X is from 2002, and I, that's like the first game I remember playing on PlayStation 2. That and Gran Turismo 3, probably. So, healing up Garden Levitz. Body Purifier for Levitz to cure the poison, and one Charm Potion. And now we need another Charm Potion because this is like a longer world map segment. One you know, doesn't make it. And yeah, Shana's kept at one health because she can't fight here anyway. She's not in the team. 2001, thanks. Okay. Oh, yeah. You were. My bad. Just don't listen to me. I mix up everything. <laughs> Someone mute my mic. I got you. A little bit of casual, you know, late 90s sexism here. Shauna obviously can't fight, even though she fought the whole way here. Yeah. Yeah, this game has a few things like that. It's like super old-fashioned, uh, you know, roles for women and men. Like, also when you hear, like, the dialogue, how they talk about the women in the party, it's sometimes a little... <laughs> you know, it's an old game, right? <laughs> So, and Dart is like, hey, but you can cook. <laughs> you can make food for us. 
And she does the most damage, you know? She does all the damage. She would help so much. If she would fight a dart, make the food, this place would be much faster, you know? That's true. <laughs> like, let, let Art make the food and let Shauna fight it. She's better. <laughs> ah, he can make ravioli or pizza. Can do it. Can do it. He'll just use microwave. It's fine. <laughs> so that guy's name, the guy in yellow, Kaiser. That's just like the German word for uh, emperor. And in German, he's called Caesar. Which is, you know, like they just switched the word because it would be weird in German. So they took a different word for emperor from a different language, you know. It's <laughs> okay. No one's going to notice. Yeah, it's very interesting, the differences between the versions. I've only played yeah. the English or um, the US and the Japanese release. And they're very different. <laughs> yeah. In terms of mechanics, anyway. Hey. Guards fight. Alright, we got some good RNG here. So Dart has 69 life. Dart using Total Vanishing because since we never got Dart at the he's very low. And if he's very weak, he can defeat enemies without the Total Vanishing. And Levitz being strong can use the tech item. First occasion where the one shot item is useful. Alright, this is probably the hardest okay, addition now we have... fight of the run here. Yeah. I need some focus. That's the thing. So. I'm gonna let you focus. Go ahead and explain. Uh, you know everything, right? <laughs> yeah. So the addition that we have on Levitz now has counters. And uh, so that means some enemies have the opportunity to alternate whether you have to press X or circle to film the addition. And there are two timings for it. The first one where it can happen is early, then it's easy, you can react. The second one is very hard to react. When it happens late, then you can mess it up. So it's getting a little bit troll here. We just hope that we don't get late counters. Preferably early counter or no counter at all. Like two spots in the addition where you can do that. So wow, that's, that's terrible. It's like the strong attack and also slowest attack. It's magic based, which is why it hurts Levitz a lot. Levitz has high physical defense, but very low magic defense, so that's... Okay. Finish this one. Rock Typhoon. So early counter, that's the one that's very easy to react to. And he can't do two counters, so... At the same time, when he does the early counter, you're like, ah, oh, damn, I lose time. But at the same time, it's also like, hey, I'm not going to get trolled. Because when it's the early counter, you're good. You know, he can't do the late one, which is very hard to react to. So yeah, those counters really just have to suddenly press circle instead of X to finish the addition. Okay. No late counters yet. Looking good. 
Wait. He was yellow HP and he didn't... What? I've never seen that before. I thought he always did this in the other HP at first. Hmm. Anyway, it actually does. Exactly on health health, actually. It's weird, yeah. Shoot, wasn't paying attention. Ah, <laughs> uh, and there was the late counter. It's hard to hit. But we can afford one or two, and it's still the same. Yes. And you can afford Double one. Flash. With a damn cheated with Dark. And you still have the same amount of damage. Because, you know, if you finish everything, you have to overkill. Now we want Dark to die. So you can tell the real one by the shadow moving at the start here. So it moves to the right one, so the right one's the real one. Yeah, the shadow under the real one is a little bit bigger. You can see it's the big circle, the other two ones have like a really yes. small circle. Double Looks like Dart's not gonna die either, it's kinda bad. Three health. Yeah. It's fine, we'll just lose a little time on the, down, right? the arena, we'll just lose a little time. Yes. Oh wait, no, he just has potential to die, so... Oh. Oh, no, uh, we didn't target Dart. Sacrificed Dart, so Lavitz has a little extra experience. Uh, there you go. Oh, it didn't matter, he probably died anyway. Hey, hit the late combo. Nice one. Only said it's hard to react. No, it's impossible. <laughs> so Dart surviving there is not a huge deal. We're just gonna lose some time in the uh, low hand arena later. Yeah, and probably also in Virage. Nah, eh, hopefully not. Uh, with the leather armor on Lavis now, it's pretty easy for him to die. Actually, sometimes we could die too fast on the Virage now with the leather armor strats. can guarantee the kill on Dart by just not doing the addition, then Congo does a counter. And now it's just item damage. Yeah, what we were talking about just now is like, it's not a problem that Levitz didn't get to more XP, that's not the biggest thing. It's just that we want Dart low so he dies in here because he continues those uh, sacrifice threats all through, the, all through the run. And it's just easier when he's as low level as possible. We have like two places in the game upcoming where it really matters what level Dart has, which like how quickly he falls. And now he's one level higher than the normal. Which is, yeah, it's not the good thing. Level 4 is still pretty low, he's still gonna fall very easily. Yep. The thing is, Dart just has balanced stats, you know. And that's not so great. Either you have to phys focus on physical or on magical. In this version, in this category of magical, if it was, was physical, you still wouldn't use Dart. Because Dart is just like the all rounder. And again, Dart takes the credit for doing nothing. Alright, cutscene hype. Oh yeah, we uh, use him turbo turbo because it's a long run and I feel like getting tired. <laughs> yeah, actually, that one hit from Dart was needed too. Otherwise, we would have had to attack with Lavitz. Because of the, the way that the Neroli fight went. Yeah, it was like 83, 3 times, 249, 1 short, right? Skip. 
one one damage left. Yeah, normally Dart dies on Sandro Elite, so uh, that was with one level higher on Congo. I can kill him by himself. Love its face. Why is she scratching her nose there? Unfortunately, no, no dragon dragoon magic until the very end of the run. Because it's absolutely yeah, magic late in the run. Slow. Oh yeah, on the final boss for a little bit of a nip on the final phase. Oh yeah, I see what you talk about. Yeah. For a second, I was thinking like Dragoon Divine Dragon Cannon, Cannon. Divine Dragon <laughs> Cannon with level three dart. <laughs> I'll do like ten damage. With a two minute animation. <laughs> Yeah, we tried. We tried that. Not gonna work. Yeah, he's he doesn't have enough experience. So. That strat was even questionable when you focus all XP on Dart. It was still like super inconsistent, because you know if there's a phase switch, you get all your damage bonuses removed, and you have that flyer there with his two minute long attacks. Really, like the, the solo Dart now from I had like the craziest time swing ever. It was like possible to get 12 minutes or 24 minutes or something like that. So now we actually get Rose into the party, which we talked about earlier. Rose is in the beginning of disc one, or basically for the span of disc one in general. She's the strongest character just because her stats are higher on the low levels. She just has higher stats than anyone else here. So from here on, we're going to focus all experience on Rose and use magic with Rose because she's just the strongest character in disc one. So we see more of her. So you said like leather armor strat, does that mean um, you're gonna put the scale armor on Dart and switch the leather armor over to Levitz? Uh, yes, that's why we bought the scale armor in Bale. Yeah. So you can put the leather armor on Lavitz. Yes. And he'll die So way armor makes a lot of difference in, in, in like how much damage you eat. And since Levitz is so much higher level, he's very hard to uh, get rid of in Wounded Virage, right? So for this early game part, we focus XP on Levitz. So Levitz right now is higher experience than he would normally be. Still, we want him to die in Virage because from now on we want to focus XP on Rose. Virage, by the way, being just the next boss fight. And in order to help a little bit with that, what uh, BDD was doing is buying an armor. Because the worst armor in the game is only on Dart. And you can only get rid of it if you give him other armor. Right? So we only bought armor so that we can get the bad armor off of Dart. It's not that much about protecting Dart more. It's just that we want the bad armor on Levitz so that Levitz eats a lot more damage. It's kind of the switch that we're going to do for the next boss, so that we get rid of both Dart and Levitz easily. Dart because he's low level, and Levitz because he has the crappy armor. And then Rose gets all the experience, and from there, we just solo this one with Rose, pretty much. Well, not quite, but most mostly we do. We use Sean at the end of the disc, and then for the rest of the game after. Yeah. Shana being the character with the strongest magic stat, Rose. But Rose just has initially in this one a little, like, higher stats and lower levels. So it's like, before that, this is actually like a little bit newer stuff. I mean, it's not really new anymore, but 
It used to be so that we used to uh, focus the XP on Shana right away, already in this one, but realize it doesn't really pay. Because the XP is so low in this one, you get Shana to the same levels later where she matters. And you just lose a lot of time in this one because Rose is so much stronger. So now we focus XP on Rose in this one and then Shana for the rest. <laughs> yeah, I messed up. <laughs> uh, I sold the Night Shield, man. Oh well, shouldn't matter too much. Yeah, it's like 10 extra defense. It's Rose yeah. gonna be fine. She's gonna be fine. Yeah, it mattered most in Hoax. I didn't, didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the, honestly, in the Levitz route, it doesn't matter that much in hopes anymore because physical defense from Levitz is pretty high. His problem is the magic damage. And Dart, you want him to die anyway, right? So. I always thought Night Shield is more for like Virage for Rose and for Graham plus Feyerbrand for Rose. It's okay. By the way, notice the creative enemy names in this game. You have a flying bird that cons completely consists of fire. What could you call that? What would be a creative name for such an enemy? Moltres. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> How about Firebird? What do you think about Firebird? <laughs> that is Firebird. Yay. Oh, it is Firebird. <laughs> game has a lot of very creative enemy names like that. It's like the actually most obvious thing you think when you first see the enemy, it's always the name. I think there's even an element that's just called um, an enemy that's just called elephant or something like that. Or just plain rat. It's just a rat. That's mammoth. They have a mammoth. Yeah. It's just an ammo. Alright. Yep, this game is straight to the point on the enemy names. That's for sure. A little safe. And now my most favorite screen. I run into the fishes every single time. Yeah, just don't run into the fishies. Yep. We're, we're gonna stop. We're gonna stop. It's fine. Easier said than done. Looks like a mini game here. When you jump, you see those fishes jumping. If you run into them, you get an extra encounter. Whenever I played this game, I always had the special talent to have 100% accuracy to hit those things. Water and lava in this game look really cool. Also, like light and uh, smoke effects. Those flames in those green flames in Katsas, I love those. Yep. Yeah, graphically for PS1 era, this game was definitely good. You only hit them if you try not to hit them. <laughs> now that you know you're gonna hit them too. I just destroyed your life. And... Ah, not good. Hit on Rose. So we want him, obviously, since we want Dart and Levitz to fall for XP manipulation. To make Rose stronger and stronger. You don't want him to attack Rose. Ha! 
This is where run to go to die. Sure, typhoon. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna kill him either. <laughs> There we go. Is Levitt still also one level lower than normal, or is this 50 damage like what he always does? No, that's normal. That's normal. Well, that means that he's not like that. Well, uh, yeah, I just started going to die slower. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look bad, actually. Right now. He needs some magic on Levitt's, like laser eye on Levitt's could help. You're gonna have to solo this with Levitz and improvise from here and use Gust of Wind then. Stress. <laughs> oh my god. This is not good. I need to start guarding here. Oh, he's already red though. Will he just. Okay, I think we're actually good here. Just Gust yeah, now we're good. A one more spear fast will kill now. Yeah. So this deals uh, like negative statuses, which can be really nasty in this game. Oh man, he didn't use fear on Levitz. It would be nice if he had used fear because fear doubles the damage that you eat from enemies. So everything that Virage does would deal double damage if he had done Bruh. fear on Levitz. And both things we did guard was. Oh no. Oh no. That's not good. Uh, Rose, uh, was Come on, man. Status because we got Levitt's gonna actually kill Rose now. That would be like the worst. Oh, okay. He tried to escape. Okay. Fear. Fear. Fear on Levitt. Fear on Levitt. Do fear on Levitz. Oh. At least he hits himself. Yeah, we're not gonna die, it's just it takes really long. We got pretty bad RNG here. You can stab your toe. Toe stabbing hurts. <laughs> yeah, this run is uh, <laughs> not going too well so far. Maybe lost like a minute. So. It's gonna come back. Now, okay. That's it. More items. So, it's still looking pretty bad, but in the end, it's still absolutely worth it. We just need to do this route. What and what characters I've got levels is just so important. It matters in every boss fight from here. Even if this fight takes like minutes longer, it's still the fastest way to play the game. It just keeps building up on each other, you know. You gotta initiate that solo XP stuff as early as possible and then just stick to it. So, for people who tune in later, we talked about it earlier in this game. Speedrun is a lot about XP manipulation because the XP that are handed out after boss fights matter on how many people are alive. So when one character is alive, you get full XP for that character, rather than a third. And everyone who is outside of battle gets half XP rather than only a sixth of the XP. 
So it's very important that we keep doing that and keep focusing XP on the strongest character that we have. And since we can't attack ourselves in this game, we need to wait for the boss to do it for us. And that just puts a lot of RNG and sometimes you have to wait like that for the boss to have mercy and defeat your useless party members. Yeah, that scene does give some Terminator 2 vibes. And well, due to that XP manipulation route, Dart is most of the time on the floor, but still takes the credit always after the fight. Shoot, I forgot Dart was a uh, higher level. Should not have uh, defended with him. Shouldn't matter, hopefully. Is the item damage from Rose 227. Magic damage really starting to pick up here. Because here we can also, uh, for the first time, really exploit the weakness element, the weakness of a boss. Yes. Fire enemy, ice item, to get like 50 damage more, 50% more damage. Alright, so it didn't actually matter. And just like. Yeah. Didn't have to defend with a Rose, didn't matter. Practice is averted, Gabba. <laughs> and that's it. And now it keeps going like that. Rose always being solo, getting more and more experience, higher level, more and more magic stat, and yeah, the item's just going really high in the numbers. With additions at this point, we could maybe do like 50, 60 damage and with items like over 200 already. What's the highest percentage of on an item? 268% uh, is the highest that's possible. So we bought some pellets, that's the earth item, because we're going to run into some wind elemental bosses. And we bought some dancing ray, which is an AoE item. That's something that we need later in, when we go... Yeah, we have, like, later we have uh, guard fights with multiple enemies. And we just need an AoE there, so we can hit everyone at the same time. Yeah, XP is just divided by how many people are alive. When you have only one guy alive, he gets all the XP, 100%, and people who are not in the fight still get 50%. Whereas when three party members are alive, everyone who is alive gets a third of the XP, and everyone who is not in the fight gets a sixth of the XP. So we get a lot more XP for the one who is solo, who is the most important one, and we also get more XP for the passive members and keep building them up in the background. The XP man uh, thing, like the XP distribution in this game is kind of broken. And you just get total a lot more XP by just having only one guy alive. And 
also, even if it wasn't like that with the passive members, still it would matter more to put solo XP. Because we have a limited stock of attack items, and it's just the most important that one guy is as high level as possible, the one guy who throws those items and does the damage. It would still be faster, even if the passive members didn't get buffed so strongly. It helps a lot, mostly with Malbu Frama at the end, that passive members get that extra XP too. That we not only have like one super high level guy, but we also have a second guy who's still over leveled. No, no, the 50% applies to the one who are outside, the one who are not, uh, who you haven't selected. The ones who are on the ground get zero. Yeah, we're basically the stealing the their experience and giving it to everyone else. Yeah, exactly. All right, since my Pick bail guys down. That since we got poison from the snake, movement here is very important. Otherwise, I have to add a menu in Lohan. So I can only use one charm potion here. Yeah, right. We had to waste one of our precious 32 item slots for a body purifier, so we have one charm potion less, and now it's getting more tight with the, with the movement. Yeah, we don't really use additions. Magical attack items do all the damage in this game. You can't be dead outside of combat in this game. As soon as you leave combat, everyone is back and 1 HP. Dead outside of combat doesn't exist. So one thing we didn't mention was a menu, a movement buffer. So at the beginning of screens and after cutscenes, you actually don't get any encounters for a little tiny bit. And after menus too. So if you move right, correctly... So you can avoid a lot of encounters. Just because the game doesn't even know, doesn't and even recognize where you are, basically. Yeah, and if you didn't move correctly, you can catch up with just opening a menu at random somewhere, because then yeah, you buy space back because, like, whatever the danger, what you want to call it, doesn't increase in this menu buffer. Which is actually used in this core, I guess, or do you buy so many charm portions now that it doesn't get used anymore? Uh, we have to use it a little tiny bit. We still need yeah, a little bit. But we do buy a lot more charm potions for that. The end. <laughs> I remember I always used to spend so much time in this area getting so confused and casual. And on the run it's like 50 seconds of running or something. Does that matter? Doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, that it was, was close. Mistake, but was fine. I, th <laughs> I thought maybe I had a menu buffer there, but nope. Yeah. Faster in a menu buffer a few more times there than going into the item shop in Lohan in the first visit. Yeah, of course. Why do people speedrun games that are close to 10 hours? Well, I don't see the appeal to running games that are like 30 minutes and you gotta reset the first 10 seconds for 10 hours. <laughs> I don't know, I just prefer longer speedrun to really get into the game. Okay, so on this boss we have like some pretty annoying RNG because the dragon can use uh, status attacks. We never like status attacks because we don't really have any means to defend against it. So if, for example, they uh, use uh, stun on Rose, who's our damage dealer, then it gets really annoying. It usually doesn't happen too much because we have a pretty good strat now with the meteor fall. We actually need only two items to defeat the dragon, and then a third item to defeat the other one as well. This is like the place where we use that meteor fall that we are talking about, that AoE, earth item gonna hit both so we need like one meteor fall and two okay nice this status attack would have already been annoying to poison on rose thankfully he hit lapids so yeah two pellets one meteor fall and we're over here and of course starting with the dragon to shut down the potential status attacks as quickly as possible 
Uh, no, actually, we're gonna kill uh, the Dragoon first because he has longer animation. Oh, really? I see. I thought that the danger office that's was important. My bad, then. Uh, right. He can go either way with it, really. I prefer to kill I guess, the Dragoon too, first. He's like really long animations. Grey has really long animations, so this is fair. Fair to kill him first. It's probably the, like the faster, faster thing. Speak of longer like, animations. And here's the perfect example of his long animations. <laughs> yeah, this kind of thing. Okay, nice. So here's an example of breakpoints on attack items. I want to stop at a perfect before 204. It still does enough to kill him. And Saves a little, a second, second and a half basically, not going above 204. And now let's please not get a stun wow. attack. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Ooh. It just didn't do That's nice. That was pretty good RNG. Oh, and oh, another reason to kill the Dragoon nice. first is because uh, the Dragoon, the Dragon is slower. Oh, Well, that went absolutely perfectly. Yeah, that's pretty pretty sweet. I like longer runs too, but I just really start getting tired after around seven hours. So like Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy, maybe I could somewhat do Final Fantasy VIII, but like not more than eight hours. I would just no, it's so hard. I did it once on emulator with Turbo and man, I felt like I need one week of sleep after that. Eleven hours of this game, it's it's pretty pretty much. Well, I did a 99% run of this game <laughs> about a month ago or so. 30 hours. How long was that? 30 hours in a row. <laughs> no breaks. Did you not, like, make break in between? Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> oh, am I? So I'm kind of used to going for a long time. So you'll notice that everyone has matching uh, clothes color to the Dragoon spirit. <laughs> yeah. Basically the Power Rangers here. I wonder what Dragoon uh, Sean is going to get. Well, it might. It, it could be two things with Shauna's outfit. It could be silver or it could be skin colored. Well, 99% versus 100% is arbitrary. Community decides. So uh, the mod on the board, Death Tome, named it 99% rather than 100%. For the reason that, you know, I we mean, don't Probably the idea was that people ask less because people would get triggered by 100% when it doesn't match what they think. But I think everyone is even more wondering, what is 99% supposed to be? I'm not sure if it really did the job to name it like that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would call it 69% just for the memes. <laughs> because leveling takes a long time. Yeah, whenever you got a problem with uh, this speed run, just blame Death Dome. <laughs> Easy scapegoat.
that just for money? No, Angel Robe is... Just, we're going to equip it on Shauna for a bit. It can actually save the run on Kongle, too. All right, all right, all right. So it's just like for increasing the stats or for like the revive effect? Uh, revive. Ah, the revive. Just in case Shauna dies so on Angel Rope has... Kongle. Yeah. When Shauna dies, uh, the Angel Rope has like a chance to revive her back. Yeah, 40% chance on death. It's actually pretty good. Yep. I've had many runs saved because of that. Yes, Jack of Hearts, I'm super bugged by that. I have no idea why people do that. <laughs> like, any percent makes sense because it's like, um, it doesn't matter what percentage number. It's just like, any percent is like a meme. It's just like, we do as fast as possible. We don't care how much percentage we have. We just finish at any game completion status, right? But then somehow people just felt like, yo, we just put percent behind any sort of category name. It's like stuff like all bosses percent then, which doesn't make sense at all. But yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Just a name. Known percent, what is that? Please explain, Bowie. Okay, here's the scanner guy. So we have to keep doing second option so he gives us the bottle for free. I was thinking at some point that maybe it's faster to buy it, but actually it isn't. Yeah, it's actually the same amount of time to buy it for 500 as it is to get it for free. Yeah, because he's like, he has like a weird animation at the end if you, uh, if you buy it because you can see that he laughs about you. Yeah, it's Whereas actually slower we, to right buy it for 100. It's slower to buy it for 100 and the same to buy it for 500. And well, buying it for more than 500 is maybe a little bit too much money then to save like one second or whatever it is if you could. We probably don't even have the money. Yeah, we don't even have the money for to buy it for 1,000. I right, gotta be careful here not to heal. Yeah, so we need to activate the water once for story progression. We get that life water in the bottle we just bought from the scammer. But, you know, if we activate it a second time, we get everyone healed. And as you remember, we want Rose to solo the XP. And that gets easier when everyone is at low health. Everyone else, so Dart and Levitt. So we don't want Dart and Levitt to get healed up. For Dart, it wouldn't matter much, but for Levitt, it would matter because he's pretty high level too. Still. Since we put XP on him early in the game for Hoax. place probably also has the most lazy designed riddle ever. It's like a number code and they didn't even bother to put RNG in what number it is. It's gonna be always the exact same number. Like caraway code in FF8 just it's always the same thing. Which is good for us because you know we don't have to figure any RNG manipulation or you know actually do the mini game here where you have to collect all the all the papers and read the numbers from it. It's always the same thing. Yeah, the minigame is uh, the cart tells you the numbers at the end, and then the 
statues around the area and tell you the direction of the statues at the end. But they're always exactly the same, so we don't need to look. We don't even need to look. We know exactly which way. It's also so obvious, this number choice somehow. First the one in the middle, then two up, then two down. <laughs> we gotta put those pillars because else the stairs will, uh, you know, they will become a, like, just a slide and keep you push you down again that's what that riddle does there you have to know what to put it, what to point them at now there's safety safe here and now Drake this boss has a little bit of RNG too because when Drake is in red he starts healing and we want to skip that but we can't we can skip the healing reliably if we just kill him the problem with that is that we need to wait for him to defeat the other two party members. And then it can't just overlap that it gets annoying, you know? That you have to wait out and then he gets to heal because he didn't kill the others fast enough. Actually, we have the exact number that he heals at. He heals at 400 HP. So we're going to do exactly 799 damage or so. So he doesn't heal and we oh, just have enough damage to kill him with one more attack with Rose. That's new. That's cool. Yep. You see, I'm, I'm a little bit out of the loop. When I wrote this game, it's like one year ago again, so... There's here and then some stuff that's new for me, too. So Lavis can only defend so you can, once. you can hit over 400 with both. Yeah, really? she hits 420. How much does she hit? Hype. Ah, okay. okay. So it's something hype? that really need the very hype for. Check this. So that's why I only bought three pellets. If if I couldn't reliably skip heal, I would buy four pellets in case you heal. Yeah. 420 memes height. Right, okay. So you need to be careful now with the second one, right? So that yes. doesn't put him in the potential healing thing. <laughs> Alright, so now we gotta do less than uh, 236. Otherwise, he'll heal. Yeah, right. We had to attack with Lapis here. Because, you know, your only other turn is to defend and then he gets protected and heals himself, so it gets harder for uh, Drake to, to kill Lapis. So, need attack and then be more careful with the item, charge it even less to stay in the right range. So again, it's a pretty slow fight, Bomb. since he didn't kill Lavitz very fast. Yeah, I need to wait for all the bomb rolls. It's, I think it's always bad when he just pulls the, the bombs right on the first. Yeah, usually you want him to yeah, like, kill one of them first. Yeah, just, like, just a knife throw or something. But at least you can reliably skip the healing. That's so nice. Cool. And we get more of the same. Next encounter also. We just... Next fight is just doing the right dialogue options. And we just have to hope that the enemy... The boss kills the other two. And we got the rare drop bandit ring. <laughs> useless, but... Yay. That's like, what? 8%? It's not like that. 10%, I think. Something like that. 10%, Basically, it's only used for selling. So Bandit's ring uh, is actually useful. We'll just sell it now. Really? I used what to use it? it 
I used to use it on Hatchel, but I think Giganto rings better at the end. Oh, really? is, that, is there no place in this more this is Nope. Not at all. Otherwise, you have right, to... because it's all the ladies, right? Yeah, and you have to put it on and take it off. Like, you could use it on Dart for a few fights to throw boosters, but other than that... It's going to say lose sense. time so more than Bandit Swing basically just increases speed. But you can only equip it on dudes, and since this route uses the magical damage from female characters only, Rose first, then later Shauna and Miranda, you can't put Bandit Swing on those. So, yeah. Not so useful. Not as useful as it sounds. The equivalent for the female characters is the dancer ring, and that's way later and not worth picking. Yes. Yep, dancer's ring. That's the ring. that's the ring that you that increases speed that you could put on female characters. So we keep attacking because every time he does a counter attack when he gets hit. And also we start with Albert because um so in this fight you can go two routes with the dialogue options. You can either get him or get the boss to do like a mimic of Albert first or of Shana first. And Albert just has a faster attack animation, so he can kill your party members quicker. Because Shana's bow and arrow thing is really, really slow. So we start with Albert, try to get rid of everyone, and then we can just defend and do the correct dialogue options for the rest. This is like a mental test thing. You have to say the right things you know, about honor and protecting, you. you know, the kind of stuff. This Shirley boss just tests if you have the right morals, and then she helps you if you do. But still gives a lot of XP, so also here important that only Rose is alive to snipe all the experience. And now for those last text options, you can pick which you want, it doesn't matter. So at the end she doesn't care anymore what you say. So we just use always the first one because it's faster. Actually, it went pretty well. Albert killed them quickly, I think. That was good, more or less. That one combo on Rose was bad, but the rest was good. Actually, the fastest fight I've ever had was uh, when I attacked Shirley at the start and she used an all attack magic item. Yeah, she has this. Uh Flash, dancing ray, flash hall, or spectral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dancing! Oh, it's a dancing ray, right, right. But what was the name of the, uh, the huge light elemental item? You know, the one that always hits three hundred percent. The spectral flash, or? Spectral Flash. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the slow one, right? Yeah. With the... The discs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> With the beams of light. It's the disco one. Although Dancing Ray is more disco than that. I always found that with running this game, time is going really fast. Like when I compare playing Legend of Dragoon, doing the run, and then it's like two hours, and compare that to FF7, it feels like it goes so fast in Legend of Dragoon, I don't know why. It feels a lot more painful to like do a Midgar and Calm and Zolom. It's It feels like an eternity every time. Maybe just because I did it so many times. 
Like, I always found this run kind of goes quickly. Playing an entire disc one of Legend of Dragoon is like three hours, right? And it kind of goes fast, I feel, compared to other games. Yeah, I feel, I feel the same. Me. Also, he put the weak armor back on Dart for this next segment. Oops. Shoot. That should be fine. Right, right. For Virus, we put it on Lavitz because he's higher level there. And now we got one uh, that one bad leather armor, weakest armor. Now bet on Dart because we have this tournament going on now where Dart is solo. And actually, in that tournament, you always advance even if you die. So the fastest way is to just have Dart keep dying. And so we put the weaker armor on. Yeah, it makes sense. I think the Tournament of Power is also the main reason for the early level strats, right? Like, I think that Dart early is a little faster in the fight. Yes. If yep. you would like Levitz die, but yeah, yeah. You lose all the time then in the tournament when he's the high level one. Yeah, you lose a lot of time in the tournament if he has levels. Like, we're only one level higher than normal, and we're going to lose like a minute because of that. Or 40 seconds. Yeah, makes sense. Mostly because of the bow, the bow fight, dude. Yeah, right. That guy celebrates himself so much. He has a long animation and he takes two hits to kill instead of one. <laughs> Everyone else is just RNG. That was like the one thing I liked about the Dark Road back then. Um, it was still, the Tournament of Power was still slow, of course, because of Lloyd especially, because you have to wait even with those 700 health until Lloyd has brought you down. But the bow and arrow guy would be just two physicals. That was so good. He deserves it. He deserves getting hit like that. Lots of spinning gales to wind item. There's quite a few earth bosses coming up. We even have to carry spinning gales into disc three. The stock of spinning gales is gonna stay for a long time in this run. Lots of earth elemental bosses where wind is uh, the opposing element that exploits their elemental weakness. Yeah, it sucks we have to use so much because of the it's earth guys. Because uh, Spinning Gale is actually like four seconds slower than a uh, Spear Frost, which is the fastest attack item. Wow, it's really that much? Yeah, it's, it's just the initiation. Yeah, right? it's the initiation the of it. Yep. There's a long animation there. Yeah. And you get away with only 14 at this point. That's so low. Yep. That's actually. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Because of Rose Strats in. One extra in case uh, Frugal 2 powers up. kind of funny for some reason that it's like the doctor who tells you hey why don't you go to a random <laughs> fighting tournament <laughs> where you can pointlessly prove that you're the strongest man alive maybe that's like his business plan he wants to recommend this to people so he can then you know put them back together for money i mean it's a good model what is a doctor it's a good business model yeah yeah right <laughs>
I like how everyone is chickening out for different reasons. Levitz is a knight, he has too much honor. Rose doesn't fight because she would be too strong. All I hear from Rose there is, dude, I'm too cool. I'm too good. Yeah, yeah, I feel that way too. <laughs> I buy Levitz's excuse though, at least. A real knight doesn't fight in a dirty pit, right? I don't even think to ask Sean if she wants to f participate. <laughs> like, Sean, you just go cook yeah. or something. <laughs> you go cook or something. Yeah, it's another one of those. No one takes her seriously ever. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, this game with that. I don't know what you even call that. Late 90s mild sexism, maybe. <laughs> Pretty sure if you made a game these days with that kind of text lines, that would get criticized quite a lot. <laughs> Probably when he make it to market. Eat this. Yeah. Eat this. And down. Yep, the fastest way to win the tournament. Never give Dart XP so everyone here is one-shotting him. Because for some reason we always advance. That's actually a big yeah, difference a in the Japanese version. Afterward. In the Japanese version you have to last nine turns against Lloyd or you game over. Really? It's longer? That's interesting. I didn't know. Yeah, you can lose all the other fights, but against Lloyd you have to survive nine turns until his finisher. So that's why in the Japanese version we actually Do let Dart survive on uh, Shirley. Yeah. What what happens if Lloyd defeats you before? Do you game over? Yeah, you game over if you don't survive nine turns. Really? Yep. That's interesting. Man, then Japanese, yeah, that's, that makes sense. Because that's the main time loss, right? When you have strong Dart that uh, he has to defend there. Uh, he, uh, he well, still loses. Well, Fireheart, it is, uh, it is always nine turns until the fight just ends, so you can't defeat Lloyd. And the one way to end the fight is uh, just to, that you survive for ten turns. It would be the same in this version. It's just that in this version, you can also just have Lloyd defeat Dart, and you don't get a game over. It just keeps going. And apparently what BDG just said is, in Japanese version, you can't do that because if you have Dart die to Lloyd, it's just game over. Yep. So the only option that you have to go make it through is surviving those nine turns. Yeah, there's always a story reason why Dart actually wins all these fights. Yeah, apparently everyone's a cheater. No, that guy was uh, had a chronic disease. The first guy cheated. This guy had a chronic disease. Oh, right. Right. You're right. You're right. The second one's like sick. That's like so illness. <laughs> This one's the best, why he loses. <laughs> he just falls down and can't get back up. <laughs> the cheating is just like uh, the first one and Ethel, right? They have like this cheating thing. Yeah, then uh, the next guy cheats, Boing. apparently. I like Rose's dialogue after Ethel though, and she's something. She says something like, "Oh, those those guys were all just like a joke, you know. The next guy, he's something." That's like before you fight. Lo <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I forgot about this. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> 
Jana says there, somehow I don't feel right. Well, I don't feel that's right. <laughs> oh, I don't feel happy. Okay, thanks. <laughs> it's showtime. Yeah, this is the guy where it's really good that we die in one hit. He loves celebrating his attacks. Oh, in two hits. Yeah, because we had a problem early in the run. Dart survived again. Sandora elite, so now he needs two hits. But it's not a big deal. What is this? Ten seconds, maybe? No, yeah, so lost a little bit of like time before that, having to attack instead of defend. Yeah. Right. Maybe ten seconds, twelve seconds, thirty, forty, fifteen, something. Really small. It's not, not a terrible thing. It adds up. What did you say? Those were small fries? <laughs> Is that what you said? <laughs> yep, small fries. <laughs> That's a good way to describe the enemies in this tournament. <laughs> That's so accurate. This game loves the arrow to the knee meme. Levitz also takes an arrow to the meme uh, to the knee earlier. Like after you escape uh, Helena Prison in the demo area. Levitt's taking the big arrow to the knee and you have to carry him. Arrow to the knee. <laughs> this is the unwinnable one. I kind of feel like that it's lore that the only reason why they are able to defeat Lloyd later is that he puts on this heavy armor so he can't dodge every attack anymore. Even with the armor, it still has a high evasion. Doesn't matter much in the English because we're using items, but in the Japanese version, you miss like 20 or 30%. <laughs> no, I mean like that. Uh... In this fight, you know, you can't win against Lloyd because he will dodge 100% of what you do. He will dodge everything you do. Yeah. <laughs> but later he has this big armor on and suddenly he becomes defeatable, you know. <laughs> That's because he's like, he's like level 40 half. right now. <laughs> <laughs> level 40 against level 4 dart. Lloyd. L -l 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 Lloyd. L we just ignore the second L. We just call him Lloyd for, you know. We make life easy here. <laughs> Such a uh, evil sounding name. <laughs> the villain. <laughs> Lloyd. What do you mean by second rate Sephiroth? Lloyd is the class Sephiroth that got a haircut. And he got a sword that it makes sense and is usable. He studied Sephiroth's strats and he was like, Sephiroth didn't make it, I'm gonna improve that stuff. First we cut the hair so we see something and then we get a sword that you can move. And he has a second wing. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, he has two wins. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. This commentary is just me laughing all the time. I'm sorry. I'm having too much fun here. Oh, it's gonna open uh, his own Twitch channel. It's gonna be called Two Winged Angel. Level up. Oh, 
this place is kind of minigame hell. Alright, we didn't get dodged. It's always fun so getting missed. So we continue missed. the recurring meme. Of this run, Dart has to lose everything so we get past faster. Yet there is no other similarity than the uh, the hair color and the black clothing. So yeah, it was just memes. Well, there's so many parallels in this game with Final Fantasy VII. They were heavily influenced by Final Fantasy VII for sure. Burning yeah, hometown. The there's just so much. Yeah, that's also the thing with like the wingly wings, right? They they don't even have wings. They somehow have some weird jetpack machine, some propulsion engine. It kind of is like the Ratchet and Clank jetpack. by the way has like an abundance of character selection menus which is like select your party select your party and there's nothing happening in between that's why we cancel all of them because the first time where it actually matters that we do continue with the party that we selected is I think we get like at least two more switches it's like after you enter the prison right then there's another switch and that's the one where you actually select who you want to use in the fights where they force Levitz into the team more switches are all before, like, yay. Yeah, there's way too many forced character selection screens. Hashel's education methods. He doesn't just go there like, bro, you're out of control. Hatchel like solves all, no, all of his problems enough. with a punch, a swift <laughs> punch to the gut. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's happening more often than that. It also happens to a wall, it happens to a girl, it happens to a lot of things in this game. Hatchel's <laughs> problem solving is the, is the fist punch. I feel it really when Hashel hits the party, what you said earlier, like before Graham, that everyone is so obviously colored in like one theme and matches their element, I find it really hits hard in this screen. Like when Hashel in this purple dress is there too, it's like, oh man. Go, go, Power Rangers. You mighty Morphin Dragoon Rangers. <laughs> I actually read an article, like, pretty much, I don't know, if that was like eight years ago or something, maybe even before that. It might have been like when PS4 was about to be released that apparently there was plans of making some sort of a Legend of Dragoon sequel or something like that, but then nobody wanted to fund it, wanted to, you know, invest money in it, and then it got dropped. But I don't know if that was like fake news. Yeah, that was true. They, that was a long time ago, too. 
They canceled that. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah. But you know what I'm talking about, right? It came up at some point, right? Yep. Sure did. Heck, even I made a Legend of Dragoon 2 in RPG Maker 2003. <laughs> like 15 years ago, man. The good old days. Yeah. So Levitz is forced in this area, but it's not much a problem because we'd use him anyway since he's one of the two that we kept, you know, not getting XP on, so he's easy to get rid of. You could theoretically... Shana would be nice too, but... You know, we actually like the passive XP we get on Shana here. Because it's still a lot of XP. And now we get the Therapy Ring. This is like an optional item that we pick up, which is just helping a lot because it gradually increases health. Yeah, you don't actually need it, but makes it makes some stuff the... safe. It's like yeah, it makes it super safe. Like, I would skip it in a run if I was way behind. Already prepared Shana for later, where we're gonna use her at the end of this one. Got her the cape. Stronger. Uh... Oh, that's something I actually didn't talk about at all yet, right? So in this game, it's kind of funny. So weapons increase the physical attack, obviously, and uh, the, the head items, like helmets, they increase the magic with that. So it's a very important piece of equipment in this game because you know everything we do, or the majority of what we do in our damage, is magic damage from those items. And the magic stat is very depending on, or at least gets a severe boost from helmets, with, which have high magic plus. That's actually why we even went into the store in Lohan, which somehow I just completely ignored, and bought capes there. The cape, one cape for Rose and one for Shana. And basically that's what we have to do more often. We just have to always make sure that we're updated on the best helmet item we can have at the time, so that we have the highest possible magic stat for our main damage dealer. All right, we got a funny little animation here. Different. Yep. Check out uh, Shauna after we talk to her. She's not. She should talk, but she's not going to talk because she's not going to make it to the place she should be. Oh yeah, I, I really. That's that's something I wanted to ask you about. Anyway, I already saw that in your stream. Like, what? How does that work? Do you just have to be faster, or what is? It's a little bit faster. It basically, she just glides to the place she should have been before you talk to her. Oh yeah, right. I say it's a couple seconds. Okay, good. If we get if you get there fast yeah. enough, usually we pick up the chest over there, but we don't need the money anymore, so no reason to pick it up. Isn't that chest is just a satchet? Yeah, just a satchet. What uh, what does satchet have to do with money? Two hundred gold. It sells oh, really? For yep. Interesting. Okay. All right, so. Mild RNG here again with like status attacks. Obviously, we don't want the status attack on Rose ever. Just a damage dealer. Thankfully, I mean he did open with confused breath. Did status attack, but thankfully target Levitz, not Rose. So all fine here. Uh, she has a panic guard, so she can't get confused anyway. I'm so outdated, man. When did you buy the panic? Thing? Hey, Lohan. Same when I, when I bought the capes. Oh, cool. Okay, so that RNG is gone then. Nice. I should take notes while watching you. You can have my notes later if That's you want them. Stuff. Now, hopefully, Lavis does. But yeah, other than that. Depend. 
Yeah, other than that, just more of the same. Wait until everyone status a rose and throw attack items to win. Oof. So yeah, at this point we're losing time. Yeah. Defending with Rose, waiting for him to please get rid of Levitz. That's like the big RNG in this game, and we will see more of that, especially later in the game. Waiting for the boss to be merciful. If only we could target our own party members, it would be so much faster, so much easier. Okay, now it's done. Perfect. Dart will be on the floor for the entire run. Okay, nice. It wasn't that bad. It, it looked worse than it was. It was like two extra turns. Yeah, it's routed pretty well not to lose too much time waiting for characters to die. Unless you get really, really trolled. No, dart, darts, it's way fast, way faster for dart just to die. <laughs> like, you save a lot of time killing dart off. You're gonna lose a lot of time if he survives basically any fight. That would be a good FF Dragoon then. That's true. Legend of Dragoon is the answer to the controversial question which is the best Final Fantasy game? Here's where we use the dancing race to walk back. Way back before, after defeating Firebird. This is the place. Always gotta plan those things ahead in this way. Limited item stocks and you just don't always have, you know, shops that give you what you need. Shops always have like very limited selection. So when we got to a store where we buy something and there's AOE items that work well here, we go for it. There used to be an older strike where we actually buy Thunderbolts in this place, which is like the lightning elemental AoE item, but it's just a little out of the way, you know, so... That's so slow, because you, you get an animation, yeah. <laughs> uh, you get a cutscene trying to buy them. Yeah, Oops. Wasted 1.4 seconds, it feels bad, We were just a little bit more worried back then, um, we were just a little bit more worried back then with the item stock, so we thought it's like, you know, nobody thought of buying Dancing Race when you shot pellets. It's just everything a little bit more tight. But now the route is more optimized, so... Yeah, it's way more optimized for item... Items. Yeah, item, the game. yeah item route, yeah. Starting to be so high level, people start actually missing on her. Uh, I don't think level has anything to do with uh, accuracy. Uh, yeah, evasion doesn't yeah, go well. That's right. It, it only is. It's only like the four, uh, four stats, right? Attack, physical, defense. Magic type, magical defense. Yeah. Yeah, That's evasion. FF7, my FF7. Static. Habits. Kicking in there. <laughs> Only a few but items, even. In that game. That increases. It's all about dodging. One 
44 already now. Whoops. <laughs> well then. Lose a little more time. So now that you have a panic guard on Rose, does it still pay to defeat the the pick enemy with the total vanishing? Because the danger is gone, right, from the AOE. Uh, yeah, we're gonna use the total vanishing on the bird because he has longer animation. Ah, uh, okay. And we only have one left right now. So if Darter Lavis gets a turn, they'll be. Killing the bird with the tall vanishing. Right. Rodriguez! Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this boss fight has like frugal and two weep enemies. The small enemies are susceptible to that total vanishing that we talked about earlier. That's an item that we picked up two of. We already used one. And the second one, we want to use it here. It can instantly kill enemies that are not counting as boss enemies. And the enemies that are next to frugal don't count as boss enemies and they are susceptible to total vanishing. And yeah, we used to defeat uh, the small one because it has a Confuse. But apparently now we have uh, protection from Confuse. So it's better to defeat the other one just because it has really long animation. That birdie. Also, Levitz doesn't necessarily have to die here because Levitz always counts as uh, not getting XP. For reasons. For upcoming reasons. <laughs> So really, you just need Dart to get, just need Dart to fall, and then we get max XP on those. Go back! Attack! Okay, got the power up, so we need one extra attack. Power up halving the damage. He has 1,000 health. We do a little over 500, so we could kill into items. But when he does power up, we need three items. Dart still alive, so isn't much problem. We, could, we wouldn't have been allowed to kill here anyway yet. The start's still standing. So hopefully someone nice. targets start now. Nice. Very good. Alright, we're good. We can finish with the next turn from Rose with Spinning Gale. That went actually pretty well, I would say. I've seen worse. Yeah, pretty decent. Alright, cutscene hype. Didn't even hype. charge up the last one.
Love it. All right, Sean, I just transformed into Dragoon and heal Lavitz, please. Sean, you got one job. You got a healing Dragoon. Just use it. It's fine. Shauna, what are you doing? Just standing there. You have the technology. Just heal him. Oh yeah, you're right. My bad. It's cutscene. They can't transform unless it was written in. Feels bad, man. It would have been sad if, uh, you know, they didn't instantly re replace Lavitz with another character with the exact same stats and equipment and the move sets. Now the real reason Shauna didn't revive Lavitz is because she was jealous. Shauna was super jelly of Lavitz's and Dart's relationship. She needed Lavitz out of the way so she could have Dart for herself. So Albert's ex explaining that he he hired Lloyd to advise him, which we saw in Bale earlier. And he ended up figuring out he had the moon gem. Oh, we had a part here where we had to talk to all our characters. Actually, it was recently discovered we don't have to actually talk to Albert now. We can skip Albert. glaring weakness, weakness except Dart. I would say Dart's weakness is his balanced nature. He has no good stats, but he has all mediocre stats. This game on PS3 store? Yes. Yes, it is, I think. We're actually getting to one of the most uh, execution heavy parts of the run. The Black Castle has a bunch of uh, enemies on screen we gotta skip. 
there's a ladder entrance guard skip that we have to do that's I've never got no one's ever actually gotten in this in an actual run before you have to line up a few pixels and then try to dodge some guards it's kind of like a Final Fantasy 9 guards except way harder because <laughs> unlike Final Fantasy 9 the guards are fat as fast as dart this is the screen right here that's the screen where it's the hardest guard skip And we've got to dodge them and we got to line up some pixels and dodge them up the ladder to the right. But it's way harder than FF9, Final Fantasy 9 because uh, the guards are as fast as Dart and you can't debate them. They don't miss you if they run, they don't run past you and miss you. Well, right now we're like 20 minutes ahead of estimate so far. Unless something really bad happens. The estimate could have been lower, but a lot of bad things can happen, so I needed some cushion just in case. I believe this is actually the first time this game has been run in a marathon completely. I believe this one has been ran in a marathon before, but not the whole game. So yeah, this game definitely deserves some love. It is a pretty demanding run though. The length and the execution and the RNG. It doesn't help that the <laughs> most execution and RNG is at the very end as well. Whoops. That sucks. Oh, well, I can make up for that. So we got one less spinning gale, but we can use a spear frost later instead. Alright, some text options here. Three questions to join the uh, resistance party here. more moral judging your morals Dang, I wish Lasagna was here to tell me. I mean, actually, I might have it in my notes. So yeah, we, we've been rerouting the game a lot. Me and a, a dude named Lasagna. Mm. <laughs> of course, we took the base route from uh, Death Tome and Mies Baker. We made a lot of changes, opt a lot of optimizations in the last few months. Went 24, yeah, sweet. 
All right, this is actually the a lot of execution coming up right here. A bunch of guards that are on screen that we have to dodge. Two of them being pretty tough. So yeah, I'm gonna need to focus here for a minute. Yeah, Lazani's is a Twitch name, but me and him have been rerouting the game recently. We're pretty sure it's as routed as possible until uh, someone figures out some more skips, more glitches we need. We need someone to pour over the code and figure some skips out for us. <clears throat> anyway, I gotta focus these. The first four here in this next room are pretty easy to skip. We can dodge them, but the next one is some pretty precise pixel alignment and movement. Oh yeah, the guard dodges. Oof, I messed up. Second cycle, oh well. All right, here we go. This is the hardest one right here. So first we line up on this pixel on the left and then move over very precisely. That's pretty much the only no. place in the run where you have some sort of skip thing. This is not intended that, I guess, that you can dodge those. Not intended. Ah, it was close. It's so tough though. The, the movement over yeah, is very, very precise. Really But we get another one. So. Yeah, there's another guard. There's right another after skip. we have another skip guard. Let me get some more uh, execution. There's a trash mini game. There's only actually four cycles or four uh, configurations that they can drop in. What is the execution about the trash can minigame? I mean, you just hold down right and hope for the best or not? No, you gotta... There's only four configurations that they fall in. So I'm gonna wait for the first one to fall to see what the configuration is. And then from there I can avoid all, all oh, okay. the, the rest of them. All right. So basically, there's four configurations of the trash fallen. Uh, one of them, the middle is safe, and the other one, the bottom is safe. Or two of them, the bottom safe, and two of them, the middle safe. So based on the first one, I can figure out okay. if it's top, middle or bottom. But if it's bottom, I gotta wait for the second one to figure out if I have to go around the first one from the top or the bottom. Oh, okay, yeah. And if I'm lucky, the the rate at which they fall is RNG, so the configurations are there's only four of them, but then the rate that they fall in is RNG. So hopefully we get lucky and they don't fall too fast, and we can make it all the way the first cycle. Across the platform and trash is falling from the sky and you need to make it through without getting it. Dang. He he dropped him uh, early too. <clears throat> he could have went back and looked. No, I gotta wait. Yeah, so second cycle not that bad. All right. Although with the new strats, the first cycle is pretty consistent as well. Second cycle is basically guaranteed. Yeah, so when you're standing on the platform when he just flushes with the key, then uh, you're falling down in a different screen and you know you have to get screen transitions and climb up a ladder and lose quite more time than what we did by just waiting 
a little bit. Uh, this guard is not skippable. We tried so many things to skip this guard up here. The next guards on the bottom, though, however, are skippable. Hopefully we can get it. Yeah, it would be also interesting if that was skippable. I mean, this is like... The floor up there is as big as the guy is. There's no way to pass. <laughs> I need Rose here, definitely. The dog is a little bit stronger. Only Rose can do this one. Level 13 Janna, level 18 Rose. Rose still with a strong level advantage because just needed her until here. But now it starts to like shift that Stana, Shana stat uh, progress just starts to kick off a lot. So we start to like get XP on Shana eventually. Yeah, and we're actually going to start. Damage dealer and replace Rose. Yeah, we're actually going to start uh, funneling with uh, Shana now instead of Rose. We'll still use Rose in uh, the Dole fight. Yeah. I guess Kongol, uh, Dart, Levitz, Shana, right? And Shana solo. Yeah, we're using Shana for Alba rather Kongle. than Levitz. Yeah. And Rose at least with the passive XP. All right. Here's a. This one's a little bit easier of a skip than the entrance one, but. So pretty difficult. So we had to bait them to the right and then go around them. They don't actually see you at a certain at the top wall. Ugh. I'm an idiot. I messed up. Oh well. 40 seconds, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I get them in practice easily, but as soon as I get to a live run, I mess up easily all the time. <laughs> now those are kind of tough. I try to be two of those skips are really not that easy. I mean, I guess the first one is hard for the second one. Yeah, that, one, that, that one's actually way easier. I get it like 90% of the time to practice. <laughs> Fortunately, on a real run, I can't get it. Oh, it's only like 40 seconds. Another new thing to the route, we, we're actually going to shop here. Because the Spear Foss you could buy here save a lot of time in their animation. Like I said earlier, Spear Foss is the fastest animation. And we need a Charm Potion so we can skip the menu in Felt's. Felt one. Oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? At the start of this two is like a super small shop where we would basically only buy like a handful of charm potions, and yeah, no yep. need for that. So actually, buying the fourteen spear uh, yeah. saves the, the time plus the, that the menu took. And because it's these guys are. The and it's also the spare is here stronger here, right? Yeah, and they're weak against uh, because they're ice. weak too. Ice, yeah. So it kills a little faster here too. Yeah, it makes sense. That's a shame. I like Dark Mist. Yeah, no more Dark Mist in the. In the, in the run. <laughs> but it's like uh, over a second slower, so that's for more than 14 seconds. Thing. Right. Plus charging here eventually. Like Rose should be able to keep it without any charge on Spear yep. against these guys. If she gets a turn. <laughs> if she gets a turn. But Chana also would need more charge. Hey Pika Pika, that's a familiar name from Legend of Dragoon. Hello man. 
Pika Pika introduced the uh, Amazing Charm minigame Hell for the low hand game hall. I always love that. It's still minigame hell to me forever. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> hey, Kato. Alright, we'll meet a character we saw in the very opening cutscene. The Great Commander. He's actually a pretty good dude. Yeah, he's like the good guy who questions his uh, side a little bit. Yeah, if you, if you come back later in disc uh, two or three or four, he's uh, the mayor of the town without his armor. That's cool. I didn't know. I never did that. Yeah, I, I didn't even know it was. I didn't know it was him until someone told me. Alright, this scene, you need to use D-pad. Do not use analog here. Otherwise, that elevator will give you all kinds of trouble. Uh, that was the great commander from the opening cutscene. You know, when they took Sean away and attacked Celis? It was like, great command. I never really liked analog in this game anyway. Great commander. The only place this where I do it is when it really makes it that you can use one charm potion less. As for example, before Drake. But there's only very few screens. In most screens, D-pad is the same and he moves the same fast too. I just feel like I have more control over his movement with D-pad. Moving like, in this type of game with analog, it feels kind of sketchy. I only yeah. do it when I really have to, to skip like a menu buffer or so. Safety save, because this boss can kill us. Yeah, Congo has really high physical attack, and Shana, that's her biggest weakness, her physical defense. And we need to like solo win with Shana now, because from here we want to start building up Shana, and when he focuses on her, he has very strong physical damage, he can kill her, and then it gets dangerous, because Dart and Levitt or Albert uh, are not very, very good here. He can't finish Congo. But I think it's still right on the way, I think it works. Especially because you have a therapy. I think it's even rare to die here without it. It should be fine. So we can also help a little bit with the suiciding here with Dart and Albert because it's like in the first fight in the Popes. When you take Kongo and you don't finish the addition, he counter hits. That helps quite a bit with dying. Oof. Alright, well, uh, hopefully Angel Robe works. That's a big one. I should have defended nice. with Dart. I should have defended with Dart there. I got greedy. Bruh. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. This game over. That's fine. Oh, he does two in a row. Okay. Okay. That's what he meant. Yeah, I have a little bit of play, okay. I, I'm gonna refresh. <laughs> well, I was lucky. I mean, it, it's, it can still work. You know, you need all... She's really fast and you need only three items. It missed! We can still game over here. Nope. All right, we should leave. be fine. Should be, unless he gets two turns yeah. in a row. Nice. How do you miss someone pinned to wall? That's an excellent question that I do not have the answer to. She got three turns in a row. Okay, that makes up for that. We accidentally used a spinning gale re uh, earlier. Or sold the spinning gale, so oh, okay. we used a uh, spear frost there instead. Nice. 
fights. So now we have the optimal leveling situation for final boss of this one, Dole. We start to build up XP on Shana, just right now when her stats start to really explode. But we still have a lot of use for Rose because of her level advantage, and since she wasn't in the party, she still got a lot of XP. She still got half the XP. So we have both Rose and Shana really strong now. And creates a situation where we can, if we get good RNG, get a very fast fight here. If you remember, if you played this game, Dole is a really long boss who goes in a shield protection phase like Magneto in the middle, and it takes really long, it's possible to defeat him before that. If you take, you know, you need like a little bit of luck with the RNG that you get enough turns in. But we do theoretically have enough character strength now to achieve that. Yeah, so, so let's hope for the best here. So he, we kill him in six hits. He heals after he's in hel uh, half health. So our first three hits, we're going to do just barely enough not to push him to not heal, uh, use a shield. He uses a shield for a couple turns and wastes like two minutes. So hopefully we'll get three turns after we hit him down to less, slightly less than half life. And be able to skip that whole phase. So it's two phases. First phase 600 health, so two sets of 300-ish items. Then second phase has 1800 health, so two phases of sets of 900. And after 900 is what he just talked about when he goes in the bubble. So we gotta do just under 900 and then just over 900 and hopefully kill him before he does the bubble hit. Because the bubble hit is really long. He's there for three turns and goes super slow and It takes minutes to defeat him before that. So let's hope we get that. It's about an 18% chance to get it though. Basically need perfect turn order to get it. Alright, so now we want specific damage not to hit him over half health. And hopefully we get so perfect turn order. Just under 900 within the next item. Nice, and he kills Dart. That's very good. And this is also like his fastest animation that he has at the moment. Everything else he does is like really long. It might be that he has one even faster. He has two very long animations. One is basically a Thunderbolt, and the other is like a custom animation that takes I don't even know how long. Trying to keep him below the 900 damage. Hope then that he gets three turns in a row. Still a fast one. Still hasn't used the slow stuff yet. So far, so good. Yeah, it looks nice so far. Okay. Now it'd be nice if he gets a turn. All right. Then we get three. Yep. We want three turns in a row here. I kind of feel it. Yeah, it's looking good, actually. I kind of feel it, actually. I'm feeling it, too. This is I looking, kind of feel it. <laughs> looking really good. I feel it. <laughs> because Shana only had one turn. She should get two turns. And Rose should get one. It would be weird, actually, if Shana doesn't get two turns. This looks like a bubble skip right here. Come on. Shana. Go again, go again. Right again, Shana. Go, go. Alright. There we go. Wow. Oh! <laughs> I messed it up. Holy moly, we got it. Yes. What I messed it up. Do? What did you do? No! I defended. <laughs> no. <laughs> we had it. We had it. <laughs> <laughs> Rip run. <laughs> it's a waste. <laughs> it's a waste. Oh, I guess you guys get to see more animations here. Man, that would have been like the perfect fight, too.
Go into the pen. <laughs> also that would have been the perfect fight. single of his slow animations until the bubble skip. That would have been an insane fight. Yeah, that, that would have been the perfect fight. <laughs> wow. You know what? This is why I used to go over the left, you know, with selecting items. Because if you hit too early, then you hit on the escape, which you can't, you know, and you can't accidentally defend. Like from the text and when you click left, you get also two objects. Happens. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> oh man, that's good. That's good stuff, boys. <laughs> we got the 18% chance, two-minute time save. Runner messes it up. <laughs> yeah, it's true. At least we get the full XP on Shana then. Yeah, we don't need any backups. But it's still super worth it. It's, yeah, it's, it's not that useful now. Yeah. It'd be so worth it to skip this. Oh, Rose is still alive, too. It's a waste. Yeah, Rose being still alive is not very good right now. Uh, that's really annoying. 16 left, that's really annoying. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, at, least, at least we're still in second place. Okay. <laughs> this is still a second place speedrun time. So many times in this fight. Yeah, time is still actually not bad at all. But could have been crazy. Yeah, I remember when uh, 306 used to be a good disc one time. Yep. Game has progress. Oh man, that was funny. All right. That was like, can we get the skip? Yeah, we get the skip. No, we don't get the skip. <laughs> oh well. I'm right back. I'm going to grab food quickly. This, the end of this one here is actually pretty RNG and execution heavy. And then we get to disc two and three, and they're all just cutscenes. You know, the game has uh, really good pacing, I say, for disc one and four, and really bad pacing for disc three, two and three. There's just too much cutscenes and story for two and three, I think. So right after Dolch has to change their heart and tells them where Lloyd goes, Albert says the adventure's over. What you talk about, Albert? Three more discs to go, boy. Alright, have a good one, dude. Alright, we're all Power Rangers again.
Green Ranger still a cool one? I wouldn't say so because uh, Albert's kind of a nerd. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> book nerd. <laughs> All right, now we're done with the rose for the rest of the game. Switch Albert back in so he can die every fight. Actually, we'll use Rose one more time in a forced in her forced character fight in this four. Well, Lavitz can't really differ anymore since he's always gone. to those bad men. So yeah, this one was all about the Serdian Civil War. And this too is all about uh, this place, Timoroa. Basically every disc has a dragon you have to fight. And uh, a dragon you have to fight. A castle you gotta protect. What was the other thing? There's something else. Oh, a, moon, a divine moon object. So the first one, uh, Albert had the divine, uh, the divine uh, moon gem, which was an ancient wingly relic passed down the royal family for the last 10,000 years, apparently. Seems like a long time to, for stuff like that to be around consistently. Uh, more text option here. Pretty good tunes. Make sure I hit the second option here. And we're back to first options. Got stuck in the last boss. Yeah, it can be pretty tough. Uh, especially since the game has a bad habit of freezing if you use Dragoon magic. Occasionally. On certain fights, if you use Dragoon magic, after the fight of the game, we'll just freeze. So you either have to get through the fight without using Dragoon magic, or kill the bosses in a certain order. Luckily, we don't use the Dragoon magic because it's slower than regular items. All right, I'm gonna take a break actually here too. I enjoy the cutscene. This is a good one. In astronomy, a moon that never sets cannot exist. It cannot exist? That's right. Stars travel the sky by catching the winds of time. But this moon isn't affected by time. It never moves day or night. That's why it's called the moon that never sets. After counting 108 years, when the moon that never sets glows red, a moon child descends upon the earth to fill the world with holy bliss. A poem of yore telling the fate given by the moon. However, what we really get is the spawning of destruction and fear, that is, the black monster. Black monster. Thank you. 
Why a demon, not a blessing? What does it mean? The mystery has yet to be resolved. Black monster cannot exist. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Make sure I choose the second option there. Otherwise, you waste a lot of time. Yeah, these area areas are pretty annoying actually because you gotta go through them like 17 times back and forth back and forth back and forth you even have to come back here and just forward and backtrack all right same as every other fight we want darn and lava to die and especially on this fight we do not want to attack Mappy with the physical at all. Otherwise, he will uh, counter it by turning invisible. And then, what, the only way he turns back from invisible is uh, insta killing one of your characters. Yep. We can't defend here, so we need to attack. Otherwise, we'll take more than one hit. Yep. Yes. Pretty bad RNG they're attacking. 
China. That's why we're attacking the bandits instead. I couldn't defend it there because he would have died anyway. Alright, that's it. Yeah, it's, it's very important not to attack Matthew with the physical attack. Of course, Dark getting back up from the dead and stealing the glory. doesn't die is a problem so <laughs> we want dark to die in every single boss fight so random encounters don't give barely any experience and they're not worth killing bosses give a lot of experience so they're, that's all the experience you need is from bosses yeah we actually need dark to die in every fight otherwise we'll have the rattle start being uh, We'll start getting way less experience on the characters that need the experience. Namely, Shauna and Hatchel. Yeah, so every single boss fight we need Dart to die. We got a lot, a lot of uh, story here. The team gets uh, mistook for bandits because they have dirty clothes, and bandits are a problem in this town or this area, which we just ran into them. So of course we know that they stole Dart's dragoon. I'm not sure if that was like forced because of uh, an imbalancing for the mechanics because Dart is forcing your party all the time so he gets kind of overpowered casually especially with his Dragoon level since you get his Dragoon first basically and he's always forced to be in the party so he should have a higher Dragoon level than everyone else naturally so I think removing his Dragoon there is kind of a balancing act It also gives us a reason to take care of the bandits for these guys. Oh, and we see Lloyd who we're chasing. He also doesn't like the bandits, apparently. Rose could have went into Dragoon and cornered him. Well, that's the thing. Equally, there's only like three times they actually turned Dragoon. Or four times. And those are all cutscenes. <laughs> There's a lot of problems they could solve by just turning dragooning and flying, or whatever. They just don't do it though. That'd be too easy. And yeah, Shauna is overpowered with her magic defense, her magic attack, and her speed. Which are basically the most important stats in the game. Especially magic attack. Shauna has just the highest magic attack by far of any character. So that's why we use her in the speedrun. 
give her all the experience. Yeah, every game needs some good plot holes. Just to keep, uh, keep you asking questions. Who believes a rose that war isn't in human nature? I mean, come on. Even the cutscenes know Dragoon forms are terrible, yeah. yeah. Dragoon forms just take way too much time and don't do anything. Yeah, Sean, I could have just shot him in the back. <laughs> Alright, now we meet our favorite character with the best theme song in the game. Come on, man. Congo is just a terrible, terrible, terrible character. <laughs> It'd be cool if Congo had the same stats as he had when we fought him, but... Of course, as soon as Congo joins the party, he's the weakest... He gets severely downgraded. Make sure you choose a second option here to save like 40, 30 seconds, 30, 40 seconds. Yeah, Kongo is the weakest character. The only fight that Kongo is actually useful on, really, is uh, the super boss, Magician Faust. Because speed is not important on that fight, basically. Because of the mechanics in it. But even then, he, he would need a, a lot of <laughs> magic defense from a 10k helmet. Yeah, and the only... Kongo's only good addition is his final edition. That's not that good until you max it. Eight non final editions that have better multiplier than Kongo's, yeah. Well, the thing is, Kongo's multipliers is, is low, but his base attack is high, so it kind of evens out.
Yeah, objectively, Kongo is the weakest character overall. At least Congo lives better than Lavin's burn. Burn! Uh, I better look at this menu actually in my notes. <laughs> I haven't looked at my notes yet. I better look at them. Let's see. Okay. mistakes. <clears throat> when you use Lavis over Kong, then you find the game, yeah. Now that 10 speed on Albert actually makes a huge difference. Here's another second option being faster. A few seconds. Second option's a few seconds faster there. Another thing that's faster is going around uh, faster here. I made him stop though, so it was slightly slower. Albert's strong, but Hatchel is the strongest physical uh, melee character. Because of his speed. Oh yeah, Royal, Royal Castle is such a good theme. Such a good song. Uh, Albert has 40 speed. Yeah, so Dart has 50 speed. Albert and Lavis have 40 speed. Kongle has 30 speed. Maru has 70 speed. And Shauna has 65 speed. Hatchel has 60, 60 speed. And Rose has 55 speed. These aren't affected, but those aren't affected by levels only items. And there's only a few items that give speed. Uh, there's rings that give 20, boots that give 10 and 20. Two separate boots. Yeah, Maru has 110 speed with uh, the, the dancer's ring and dancer's shoes. But the five less speed on uh, Shauna is more than made up for by the like almost it's like almost double the magic attack stat. It's ridiculous, especially by the end. By the end of the run, it's just not even close. How much more magic attack Shauna and Miranda have? Is Bayonet Ring ever utilized? No. We just sell it. We could use it on a few fights, but then we had to put it on and then take it off, and that just adds more menus for 
potentially no time save at all. Because most of the time it's going to actually lose time having the banner ring equipped. Since it can only be equipped to male characters, and the only male characters we really use generally are Dart and Albert who are just there to die. So the less turns they have is actually faster. Instead of speed, we use uh, <clears throat> attack or damage stats instead. Like a magical ring on Miranda, which gives more magical attack, and a giganto ring on Hatchel at the end. Because the final boss party, we're going to be using uh, Hatchel and Miranda. But uh, Giganto Ring on Hatchel gives him defense as well. And the defense is actually pretty helpful. princess over here. The only one eating. I do have a good one. Yeah, that was way better than Albert. <clears throat> Why is there a cup sideways just chilling? Uh, probably because she dropped it. And didn't feel like picking it up. Helpful to skip all the transitions. Yeah, we tried to. So we actually spent a lot of time trying to get the, the final fight in the game to be faster because that is a very long fight. A very long RNG intense fight. <clears throat> yeah, the final fight in the game could be anywhere from 18 to 25 minutes, depending on RNG. And there's a lot of RNG in that fight. <laughs> So we tried to uh, route it to be able to kill him in second his second phase. If you kill him in a, before his final phase, it'll just skip all the way to the very end of the fight and it'll be over. And it'll avoid a lot of uh, long transition animations. Literally minutes of, of transition animations. But the problem with that is to be able to get a consistent final fight you would need to lose a bunch of time everywhere else. So basically you're losing 20 minutes to save 10 minutes, so it's not worth it. So we just take the long RNG fight at the end to have everything else being fast, a lot faster. Uh, this town is named Feltz. F E L T Z. <clears throat> we come back here multiple times. I think five times in the game. Four times forced for story, then once at the end for menu. Because it's the fastest place. Which is kind of silly. We try to wrap that out too, but it's still the fastest. 
even with all the screen transitions. Lindblum, yeah, kind of. Alright, we're gonna get to a pretty interesting dungeon here. <clears throat> After this, this area. We actually don't need any charm potions at all because of the way it works. We barely have enough room to make it through there without a charm potion. We could technically use some strats here to only use one charm potion, but it's not worth the setup in the execution. We'll just go ahead and use two charm potions here, it's fine. What's up, you guys going? All right, the value of corrupted gravity. So the way this th place works is there's a bunch of platforms you gotta travel on, and when you're on the platforms, they actually go to a specific point in the encounter step count, basically. So just think of the, think of the the step count is like a number like five thousand. So at five thousand, you get an encounter, right? And every step gives you whatever 10, 15 points points to that counter. So the way this place works is every time you ride a rock, it goes to 4,000. So no matter where you are in the step count, it goes to 4,000. So if you're above 4,000, it goes back down to 4,000. If you're below 4,000, it goes up to 4,000. So even though we're going to be red for more than half of this area, we don't need to use a single charm potion as long as our movement ends is good. Uh, yeah, uh, left and down movement are more. So it's actually more like 40 if you're going down or left. And 15 if you're going up or right. Which actually the lower number is the broken number. So you'll see I'm yellow here. After I ride this, I'm gonna be red. But like we explained earlier, there's menu. There's a thing called the movement buffer. So every single time I ride one of these rocks afterwards for a few seconds, there's no encounter increase. So when I ride it, it goes to a certain number, like 4,000 out of 5,000. And then after I get off, it doesn't go up. So as long as I have good movement after I jump off, there's no chance of getting an encounter at all. This area right, this uh, this rock right here is actually the only place we could get an encounter. But we're gonna menu that I'm coming back, so we won't get an encounter. Some pretty important items in this area. Speed up, which can be used in every single battle from here on out, which doubles our agility on one character for three turns. And Talisman, which avoids uh, insta-kill. Uh, uh, no Night Shield. So I menu there to actually get a menu buffer, otherwise I would have gotten a counter on that rock. Yeah, then Talisman, which avoids insta-kill, which this next boss does insta-kill. Which is why we put it on Shauna, our da damage dealer. And the character we want to survive. Shh. 
Alright, so you'll see we got through that whole map with the red. <laughs> we can't get encounters up here unless you really, really try to get an encounter. Or you fail but miserably. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting way this place works with the encounters. We will need a charm potion coming back at the end because of uh, down movement at the end and there's no rocks to move with, move on. Favorite PSX games? Heck yeah. Go ahead and save just in case. RNG fight. Again, we need Dart and Albert to die. And this boss is pretty weird because he could just sit there and do nothing for several turns in a row. And it's pretty annoying. That's a good start. This is a kill Dart. We'll go ahead and use the speed up. Little fields, the exit is really good. Alright, we're gonna shoot for a specific number. Oh, yeah, nice. 420 height. Just for the memes. The good old memes. Meow, 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 meow. 420 hype. Two. Next attack kills, and we'll defend. I was can uh, dark ticket. <laughs> Albert can defend once. All right, he's taking no turns again. Like I said, he could just sit there and do nothing, like he's doing right now. Thank you. Now, that wasn't that bad of a fight, actually. Well, even casually, Shauna is pretty overpowered if you use her correctly. Ah, I missed it. Feels bad, man. Feels bad, man. Okay, so Shauna has the second highest speed, and she's only lower than the highest speed by five. She has the highest magic attack stat, which applies to items and Dragoon magic. And Dragoon Magic, and her final uh, Dragoon Magic is super overpowered. It deals tons of damage to every monster and heals every character to full. So if you have a magical ha hat that uh, doubles your HP or uh, MP, and a ma mage ring that heals your magic every turn, she can basically just spam 
her ultimate magic, healing everyone and killing everything, every fight. Yeah, she doesn't have a combo, but that's actually a good thing for her SP growth. Because once she gets to level 5, a single bow attack gives her two Dragoon levels. <laughs> so yeah, Shauna's pretty ridiculously overpowered. Casually, speedrun. Especially if you, uh, experience Funnel. So another segment where we have to talk to all our characters one by one and get their feel for the situation. Yes, Miranda and Sean are exactly the same stat-wise. done with the talisman for now <clears throat> we'll use it again in disc 4 so we'll uh, switch around put it on Maru so we don't sell it accidentally we need it for one more boss later in disc 4 the wingly executioners This screen right here is where uh, analog stick matters a lot. With D-pad, you'll always get an encounter leaving right here. With analog stick, no encounter. Unless you mess up, of course. All right, we come here to Get our Dragoon Spear back from the bandits and figure out what the deal, was, the deal is with the princess who's acting weird. Some sort of ties with the bandits. Yo, yo, how did Virus 2 go? Whoops, uh, not that bad. He stood around for a little bit, not doing anything, but he killed Darton and Albert pretty quick. Yeah, some pretty good sound effects. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Black rain. Did you buy that in Let? Yep, Felts. Alright, right, yeah. No more downburst stress. Downburst? We sold that a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we used to just fail Blizzard that. there. <laughs> but then we got rid of that for uh, more Spear Frost.
Oh yeah, Rose's Dragoon Magic is pretty funny. Especially the uncensored Japanese version of uh, Demon's Gate. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they were thinking with that stuff. <laughs> I know exactly what they, they were simping hard. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, here, Hatchel is uh, solving all his problems again with the fist. Punching oh, yep. it. Hatchel does his thing. The scene is so weird because he's like punching, but it doesn't even break. It's like the mechanism that is normally supposed to open the door is just activating from punching it. You should have that crush the stone. And yeah, he went SSJ for no reason. <laughs> he could do that more often. And then he pretends to be hurt afterwards. For I don't know why would he even want to go up there early. I mean, did, did he think they're not going to follow him or something? I don't know. Even since probably demon because it's like his student, and he wanted to see first what's going on. Maybe he thought he could tell reason into him before everyone beats him up or something. Please, he just wanted to beat him up first. We know Hatchel. True. It's the only thing he does. <laughs> He's doing the dart here. Getting all the credit. Oh, just the color of the thing that drips down is red instead of black. I think Maru's and Hatchel's addition animations are the best. I like Kongo's the most. Especially the last one, because the last one doesn't have a counter, so you don't get trolled by Faust. Oh yeah. Easy 9,000 damage. Yeah. Alright, this fight we just want Dark to die. Since Hatchel's forced and we're gonna use Hatchel for the end. Wow, perfect! Yup. I think just like getting rid of Hashel here is also like really hard because due to the fact that in this one he always got him passive XP because he sacrificed Dart and Albert. Just he's really high level here, so and he has a lot a, of time until he would die. And he has a natural physical uh, evasion, and these guys only use physical. Yeah, I think he has like ten percent physical evasion. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I trust you on that. But he definitely is. He, does, he dies very... Uh, yeah, not very much in this fight. You need to wait for so many rounds. And it's like... It's like two shot? Is it 900? You already... It's crazy.
<laughs> it's big from FF7. Just like 20 years older, I guess. And with a sneaky mustache. That was a pretty good fight. That fight usually trolls me and they never target Dart. Yeah, it's always the most troll ones when you're not like soloing. Because you always have that one in three chance only, right? If they hit the other one and he falls, then it turns into 50 50 and gets easier. So you always need that one hit, one in three chance. Shana's magic stat like so just explodes so quickly in these levels. End of this one she was still at like what, level 13, 14. Rose still slightly stronger and now hitting 1000 already after two more boss fights. And it, it goes on like that, it gets more and more. We see way higher numbers. Yeah, it really helps that we use uh, Shana so broken. The elemental weaknesses. Plus, make Shauna being overpowered. Yeah. Yeah. If you compare to like what additions could do, additions at this point you won't get higher than like a 2.4 multiplier. Whereas an attack item already has four times damage. Then with elemental weakness, six times damage. And also, most enemies have more physical damage than uh, defense. Then magical defense at this point in the game. Plus, Shana also has a ridiculously high magic stat and you just do almost like 10 times what you could do with additions, or maybe even more than that at this point. Yeah, it's pretty silly. In the Japanese version, this fight takes like 10 minutes because you have to kill him with additions. Yeah, they also have a lot more HP in the JP, right? Yeah. All the bosses. <laughs> yeah, a lot more HP. So you do less damage than they have. They do more damage. <laughs> and they have more life. It's actually interesting, because normally they do it the other way around. Normally games get, like, harder, or not when they make European releases or international releases. But they kind of nerf the game a lot after the Japanese version. Well, this was Sony's first attempt at a JRPG. And they got a lot of feedback saying it was too hard yeah. in Japanese. So they nerfed it down pretty heavily for the English release. They kind of actually did a similar thing in FF7, though. Like, the first FF7 Japanese version, not the international one, but the original one, is... I mean, it's not that much more difficult, but it just has some differences that are... You could call them nerfs. Like, the first FF7 has way higher encounter rates. You get different fights. A lot more fights. And some AIs are different. Mortar Ball is harder. Uh, I think that's almost about it already with the changes. It's not that much different, but at least it is something where they decided to nerf some aspects of the game, make it easier for casuals. But it didn't have the optional super bosses yet. Emerald and Ruby weapon. And Diamond weapon fight also didn't exist. Actually, I think the PAL version of Legend of Dragoon has a lot of dubbed versions with uh, correct language. There's also a uh, German text and uh, language voice acting in German version. And I th think there are more. Potentially an Italian one exists too. Uh, yeah, there is a Japanese 80%. It's like three hours slow, uh, slower than this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Melbourne has like 48,000 here or 42,000. Even though the and text is like, has 60. the text in the Japanese is way faster, but <laughs> it doesn't matter because everything else is way slower.
Well, if the text is faster, that means Japanese might one day become a thing. Because maybe we find some sort of a glitch to get around fights. Uh, throughout the whole run, the dialogue difference is probably like half an hour at least, or so. That's crazy. In Final Fantasy VII, I know that Japanese text makes like 8, 9, 10 minutes difference, something like that. Half an hour would be wild. But this game's also way longer, so it kind of fits actually. Yeah, just the way the text loads too. Like in this version, it loads character by character. In the Japanese version, it loads like several characters at once. That scene is very much easier with the analog. With a D-pad, you'll almost always get an encounter on that screen. Yeah, I heard the Spanish version of this game was pretty messed up. <clears throat> Yeah, so again, when you ride these uh, platforms here, they go to, let's say, let's say encounters at 5,000 points of movement. When you ride the, when you ride the platform here, it, go, it shoots up or down to 4,000. So if you're above 4,000, you'll go down to 4,000. And if you're way below 4,000, you'll shoot up to 4,000. So yeah, going I can up, make you the don't entire need... place with like only one charm potion. You don't need any charm potions or going up. On the yeah, you don't need any charm potions going up. Going back down though, we need one at the yeah, end. Yeah, going up. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. It's like after this passage, you should need one, right? Yeah. When you right go back here. to like right now. No, this is only a dungeon yeah, there's quite like a few this. places. Really? Yeah, I don't think... I mean, isn't everything where you use a platform like that? Uh, I've I think, never like, seen... the teleporter is also uh, in, like... Yeah, but when you ride the teleporter, it, it doesn't shoot up to a specific number or down to a specific number. Like, if you go on the emulator and look at the RAM value for the encounters, it shoots, it shoots down or up to the 4,000 number. And five thousand is the encounter. Yeah, but isn't that any? Isn't that always when you activate something that teleports you? No, I don't think so. I think it's just those uh, those platforms that you ride there. I've never noticed anywhere else. Well, the things uh, before Grand Jewel, for example. Like before you go into one of those green things, you always have like uh, you would get an encounter right right before. Or we're like after two steps, but if you take the teleporter, you have a few extra steps. Oh well, yeah, that's that's separate. That's so a main. That's a buffer. Shoes. Yeah, you also get a menu buffer there. Can you take there. the dancer's shoes for free? Oops. Yeah, there's several mechanics. The the buffer after is everywhere, but <laughs> moving to the moving to a oh yeah uh, specific yeah. value. It's just like a buffer, okay. Yeah, the, the moving to the specific value in the encounter uh, threshold or whatever the hell it is called. It's really weird. I've only noticed it there. Like if you're if you're 4,500 and you get on a platform, it'll move back down to 4,000. I've never noticed anything reducing your encounter rate.
Here's another example of optimized routing. We skip this menu. Don't need to go into the shop here. I think DT's old notes had like three shops and felts. We cut that down to one. Yeah, well, it used to be probably uh, though for healing stuff and, you know, then not having the therapy ring. At least that's what I used to do. So, it's kind of like also a result of picking the therapy ring early, which costs time too. All right, now we get to show off this optimal mi optimal mini game. Hopefully, <laughs> the fastest game, way to do it. They love those hide and seek mini games in these. Yeah, there's so many mini games in this game. This first movement here is the hardest. After this, after this air spot, it's easy. The, guard, the guards don't actually yeah, see you. Pretty, pretty mild. The guards don't see you as long as you're in a door and the door is open. So you could be like right next to them and they won't see you unless the door is closed. Definitely easier than the cats of skips. This one is like free. Oh yeah, this is free. I haven't messed it up in a long time. Except that first, the first movement there is the hardest because you only have like a second of extra movement before they turn around. Upcoming boss lean is probably one of the hardest ones uh, that you encounter in casual Aphrodol. Just has a lot of very strong attacks that hit the entire party. Strong magic. Especially if you were focusing on Dart in casual a lot. Uh, since he's weak to ice, he gets double damage from her stuff, or 50% more damage rather. And, you know, gets really hard. Even in the speedrun, she can be dangerous at times, but mostly because of her physical damage then, because we need the magic character of Shana, and she has very low physical defense. So he gets hit really hard. She has a lot of range in her damage. She has like also weak physical attacks. That one ha attack that really hits hard, that boomerang full screen thing, that's like 200 or something. Or maybe even more on Shana. Shana does have actually pretty good uh, HP growth though, for like a female character in this game. Most of the female, I think she has the highest from the girls. It helps a lot too. Meru, for example, who would be an alternative for like a magical character, has way less HP than Shana, and therefore dies quicker, although she has a little bit better defensive stats. Shana's kind of a tank, too, with that high health. Yeah, compared to Rose and Meru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, now we get to see... To the dudes. We get to see Dark I think she falling might down. also have higher HP growth than Hatchel. Nah, Hatchel has a little more, I think. So if you pay attention to Dark's character model here, you'll see him falling down as usual. Dart, get off the ground. Again, real quick here. Cheeky. Yeah, you're right. 
slightly more. They're pretty similar. But Herschel has more indeed. You're right, you're right. But definitely way more than Rose and uh, Meru, which is pretty useful. Okay, here we go. Let's just hope she doesn't focus Shana all too much. We're gonna do a little bit less magical damage also from here. Like, we were able to hit over 900 before already. And from here, bosses start to have less... Um, physical defense than magical defense, so the numbers get a little lower again. But it still pays to use magic over physical because magic is just so much stronger. So they, we do like, what is it here? 700-ish, 6-700 probably with Shauna here, with burnouts. Still. And she has quite a, quite a few, uh, quite high health at this point too, uh, for a boss. She's like 3,400, so... This fight can take a bit, if you get bad luck. Yeah, it's pretty consistent nowadays. Since we heal everyone to four before. So we'll get a turn for speed up with someone else besides Shana. Basically, the worst thing that could happen is Albert not dying. Yeah, I was about to say then. That could like bite back, right? <laughs> when it goes too well and it just doesn't kill the other ones. But yeah, it makes quite a bit of a difference when Shana doesn't have to speed up herself and someone else can do it. That's pretty neat. that on her back, her jetpack wings. Okay. Yeah, 643. The enemies used to have like 100 magic defense at this point, she has like 160, so we're hitting a little less now. It's supposed to be like a really hard fight. And certainly is. 
without like speed strats and the super buffed up Shana. Yeah, without these burnouts, it would take forever. <laughs> yeah. That's why we kept these burnouts from the very beginning of the run. Exactly. Bought those in the very first drop just at the start and then kept them because there's no other place until here where we could buy burnouts. It's all planned for this fight because she's weak to fire. And here is like really important to have an item to exploit her magical weakness. Looks pretty good so far. She hasn't done any of her slow animations yet. Like Fatal Blizzard, for Speak example. of the Devil. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Oof, wrong target, too. Uh, yeah, we have a few more turns. Be fun. This would have been nice in Albert now. For the end, you have like a translate or something, like five burnouts and one yep. translate, or because she's like a little more than five times six forty. Ooh. Ooh. Indeed. Uh, world records ten twenty two. I had to say something, didn't I? <laughs> Not to kill him at least. Yeah. But it was still a good fight even with that. One extra round. Unless she gets like a double turn now, which I hope not. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Could be worse. By the way, does the territory lose time when you get a turn? When you get that little heal, does that give a delay? What's that? I was wondering that. I was always wondering if the therapy ring loses time whenever you get a turn. Because of the healing. Yeah, therapy ring loses time. I think it's like one second every heal. It's pretty significant though, though with how many turns you take with Shana. Yep. It's a little bit harder to pick it up. But well, at least we're safe here. It yeah, it's a very, very safe though. Without the therapy ring, it's possible, but not safe at all. Especially on this fight. And the Albert's Moon fight. Yeah, Albert's Moon fight and this fight are the most fights I want the therapy ring for. Oh yeah, we're playing on PlayStation 2 because it's the fastest. A 77k model PS2. Because fastest speed for this game doesn't actually work on a 90k PS2. I think it only works on a 77. Yeah, really to find it on that. There's like well, many games that have that. It's like, it's like I don't know. It's like a blacklist in the. BIOS of the 90Ks or something that just blacklists some games to not have fastest. Oh, this track's called The Royal Castle.
and another ride through the valley of repetition. Oh yeah, the Barons, that's the name. Yeah, the Barons, They're like the seventh place that we time. cross like 20 times. <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, it's a very good game. She needs to play it. Tell her, tell her I told her to play it. I mean, Why do you have the Moon Serenade? Because I haven't sold it yet. It dropped from Virage 2, and we never went to a menu. We sell it in a... Uh, right, so it's just not worth it. Fuego, yeah. Okay. Like, because usually you just want to try to get everything out of the way, right? So that you can always mash just when you go menu and pick jump push, that you don't have, like, items that are useless. Yeah, it doesn't, so doesn't matter sure that much. It's slower to use the Moon Serenade and the Health Potion than it is to just L2R2 down, generally. Yeah, that makes sense, because Arch 2 is like not very long ago, not many menus. I think we've only used like four, three or four Charm Potions. It'd be nice if the game allowed you to like skip drops, like some FF games let you do. Then you wouldn't have to pick up that useless stuff. I do that in Final Fantasy VII in some places, so that it doesn't convolute the equipment menus with like useless armlets. Oh yeah, lower, lower time. Speak with everyone to everyone. It's like a round robin dialogue. Yeah, and the real problem is this this song loops every 26 seconds or some, something. <laughs> Gets kind of uh, annoying. The real problem is that the screen is shaking. <laughs> That's the real problem. <laughs> this always makes me dizzy, this place. Oh, I have yeah. to look somewhere else. The worst is when you uh, go into it in the emulator and you want to fast forward to get through this part. <laughs> That's the real torture. And the screen is going like shh, shh, super fast. Up. <laughs> the emulator also kind of dies here, at least PSX Fin. It's like a weird place when Meru is on the bed and you have to wait like three minutes even in fast forward until the dialogue continues. It's super weird and she like, the mod like glitches over the screen. Not sure hmm. what's going on there. It is like bow time on FF7, except no evil alien super boss in the basement of the ship. Yeah, that's just Congo. <laughs> Congo chilling in the machine room. Is there any difference in which option you pick when Meru talks to Dart? Uh, the second option is uh, one text box faster. Ah. Any if you hold down after or before. Oh, fuck! Whoops. <laughs> If you hold down and then start turboing X, it'll automatically go down to the second option. At least with my turbo button, my turbo controller. Which one are you using? Is that Kiwami? Uh, Hori Pad 2. Oh, my, okay. my only complaint with it is uh, 
the turbo button and the analog button are right next to each other. So I end up turning off analog sometimes. Yeah, I heard like from some people that Kiwami they have trouble with the D-pad because it's kind of weird. It's like soft and it's like one button D-pad, you know. Yeah, I have the same problem and with this one actually too. That like. Oh, okay, it's the same. Yeah. And like theoretically on the frames, like the turbo frequencies fit better, but apparently it doesn't make a difference because you can just use the 20 hertz and it usually does the same job on the worry. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to kick out dart. Although, in the speedrun, I probably wouldn't because he dies so easy. Most of the time. Maybe we'll switch in like Congo for <laughs> Melbu from, and that's about it. Yeah, that would actually be super nice. Or Albert, even. Depends who hits harder, right? Probably the better DPS would be pursued. It's just like two hits. Well, we'd probably, probably still level. use Albert to die, so he, he wouldn't hit harder. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it is the purpose of really routing this game. The actual purpose of routing this game is finding a way to route on Congo for the loads. Yeah, we already did that once for Lloyd. We put him in because he's guaranteed to die, but he's also guaranteed to have some turns. To throw some boosters. Because he has so much life. Ah, because he has enough health to survive like the Doom at the start. Yep, he, can, he survives the first dome and he dies on the second dome. Every yeah. time. Yeah, that's, that's optimal. Speedrun chats are weird. Yeah, it's just this game's experience distribution. We talked about it a few times. I'm going to mention it again quickly. It's just very weird XP distribution. When only one character wins alive, he gets three times the XP that you normally get. And pe people outside of the battle get 50% more than they normally get. It's kind of weird. So we try to focus XP on our strongest damage dealer. And then, well, the two dead ones don't get XP, but they don't matter. They're not supposed to, because then they die fast. And everyone else gets super buff. Funniest place like when they didn't want to put Kongo's 3D model in the screen for whatever reason. And then he they just draw they just draw him into the pre-render background as a sprite. And Kongo looks like just the 2D sprite. Like in the hotel. Yeah, it's like some uh, the game can't handle that many character models on the screen at one. I think the moving background parts count as models or something like that too. Yeah, it's on the ship too, right? And at the start of this three, Congo's also just like 2D sprite. <laughs> yeah. Drawn into the screen. I think that the water in the background counts as a model. A moving model, and they can only handle like seven models at once. Yeah, PlayStation 1 didn't have all that much memory. Imagine the PlayStation One had two megabytes uh, memory only. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the people that coded these games were so good at it. You have to code so tight and so optimized that this works out. Except for all the bugs. I mean, I guess it's not as bad as Final Fantasy yeah, sure. VII, but <laughs> at least for Maybe now, we just didn't find them yet. Yeah, we need some people. We need some people on that, man. Find me some skips. 
I asked some people that are good at it, but no one's interested in this game. They're like, find it yourself, bro. I don't get why they're not, find why they're interested. Yourself. Why are they interested in Final Fantasy VII, then? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't say. I think this game is really awesome. And kind of underrated, too. I mean, I actually hate the word underrated. It's actually a dumb criticism. But in this case, I kind of want to use it because really so many... Not even like among fans, but like uh, like critics from, I don't know, magazines or so. Like everyone was giving this game shit and I never understood why. This game is really good. So now I just hold down here. Hold down and hold turbo. Automatically goes to second option. Which is slightly faster. I hope you don't risk that strat on Psych Bond later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it only works Just on that one. Down, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't work on every text option for some reason. I don't know why it works on this one. Yeah. Alright, we're about done with the ship. At least this ship. Yeah, finally. Now we get more minigame hell. This is the actual minigame hell. This part, every time you make a mistake, is like one minute. Yeah, another execution heavy area. <clears throat> Alright, break yeah, so time. Into the, the ghost ship. Enjoy the Hollywood yeah, cutscene. There's like a lot of. Uh, yeah. Right, first, let's join, enjoy the FMV first. Kind of a Pirates of the Caribbean vibe here. Davy Jones. Right here we are. So we have everywhere those blue flames flying around, and if you run into them, you trigger a fight. So you need to be very cautious with your movement here. Make sure you dodge around all of them. It's kind of a difficult part. Two special screens. Chest, no, that's completely out of the way, you know. Oh yeah, <laughs> the special chest with the war god on it, ultimate war god. No, that takes forever. About thirty minutes on average, if you have practice. And it, and but there's not even anything useful in it. We're not even using additions, and if you were, then we would execute them. 
Yeah, I would just hit them. I'll just hit it. The workout is just like a laziness amulet. Yeah. It's nice for the Japanese where additions are way harder to hit. Why are they harder to hit? I thought it's just circle instead of X. No, it's, like you have like half the time. Window? You have half the time for every input. Interesting. They really nerfed every aspect of the game. Yeah. They? <laughs> when they made the international releases. <laughs> And we also have a potential very, very rare rare drop here with the magical eye. Oh yeah. Probably not even that useful because we get jewel crown anyway for the next fight. It's useful for a few minutes. Yeah. Saves a couple seconds. But yeah, there's only two screens with uh, a bunch of encounters on them that you got to be careful about downstairs in the room we were just in yeah of course uh, FMVs in this kind of RNG, uh, RPGs like those movie cutscenes they're always just video files PlayStation 1 can't even render anything close to that Even the backgrounds in this game are just photos, basically. Pre-rendered backgrounds. They rendered like the 3D art beforehand and then they made a screenshot of it and then put that as a picture. And what you see, what is actually 3D rendered in real time by the PS1 is like the models. And they look, you know, accordingly. <laughs> Better safe than sorry there. <laughs> I could have made it a little bit earlier, but whatever. Yep. It is why they look so cool. It is also why the PlayStation 1 was ahead of its time a little bit. Because, like, for this type of game, you couldn't really do that on a cartridge, you know? Because uh, back in the day, for this, for photos, you just need, um, you don't need processing power, you just need space for file sizes, you know? That's why, like, for example, N64 games were mostly, mostly just like uh, real-time rendered 3D games, 3D graphics. And the stuff with like nicely looking pre-rendered background stuff or really nice FMVs, that was because the PlayStation had the CD, the compact disc, which had 700 megabyte and at the time was a lot of space for file sizes. So they could put like nice photos and videos in their games and nice tracks. So it's like, you know, strength on the PlayStation 1 was lesser the processing power, but more the compact disc, the, the file sizes it could use. That's why we have such a pretty ghost chip here. And a couple forced encounters. Hopefully we can skip the rest after these. Yeah, this is like a semi, like, it's not really a boss, it's just like a rather unique enemy. It's just four of those Magician Bogey guys. And they're a little harder to beat, but still not a real boss. They would still, for example, die to Total Vanishing. Which we're gonna see right here. The easiest way to get rid of that, dude. What the heck, my turbo wasn't even on! No, you that sucks. The skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. It's like my turbo was on, but it wasn't. What is the backup? Now? You have to translate it before we get chopped again, right? No, we got an extra. We got a couple extras. Translates. Okay. Oh no. Yes. We'll just mess around here. Fine, totally fine. 
Bad luck. Wow, okay. That's not fine. Did she just arrow herself for 240? She can't even deal that much damage to enemies with the bone arrow. <laughs> well then. Oh no. Oh, that's not a speedrun strat. I'm just messing around now. <laughs> we might game over here at this rate. <clears throat> nah, as soon as Hatchel gets up, we're fine. There you go. As soon as Hatchel gets up, we win. And he has a turn. Thank you. Yeah, we have a bunch of extra translites. That's weird though. My turbo wasn't on. But still turboed. That was like a minute oh. lost. How's Dark low level? Because we kill him every boss fight. It's actually a lot faster if Dark dies. Yeah, we this game gives more XP if you win alone in a boss fight. And boss fight is the most significant XP. We don't use additions really. We use mostly magic and Shauna is the highest magic. So Shauna is our damage dealer. And so we try to get all the XP on Shauna. So we try to make sure that Shauna is the only one who survives boss battles. And therefore Dart is so low level because we always let him die to keep boosting Shauna's level higher and higher so she's so OP like she's not. And kills everything with like two or three attack items. That's the fastest way through the game, pretty much. Shouldn't mess up this time. <laughs> yep. So here we gotta be a little bit careful with how high we charge the percent because these guys start using those confuse attacks we saw in the last fight after they drop below half health. So the first dancing where we probably wanna stay below that, and then the second one we gonna go above. So that when someone gets a turn he doesn't use confuse. So you see, less than 400 and next we do more and then that's GG. And now the attacks are just physical and so not confuse status. Hashal is just here coincidentally because there's a forced fight. There's a forced boss fight before where we need to have Hashal alive. So we have him here too. It's like. He's not here to die or to do anything. He's just here because it happens. Well, he can use a dancing ray and if he has to on skeletons. You're right, he can at least kill the skeletons. Right, 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 right. In the fights before. Right. That's correct. Well, Hashal, because... The, okay, so earlier when we were in the Giganto home, when we fight that Garrick dudes, the game forces us to use Hashal. And it's not worth it to kill him off, meaning that he gets a lot of XP too. And he also got a lot of XP in this one because we kept killing off Dart and Albert. So Hashal is just having a, a pretty high level now. And therefore he can help, like, BB uh, just said. Um, and we are going to use him for the final boss. He can help with skeletons. All right, here's yeah, the hard part. Too. His physical damage is good. Okay, this is the hardest part in the ship. Skip coming up. Or tragedy. <laughs> and I got one time. Nice, nice, nice. The cycle was like, it looked a little easier though. There was a big gap. Sometimes it's closer. Yeah, the other movements are in G. There's a few openings that you can get. It's hard to time it, usually. Also, it always is different on emulator than it is on PS2. So it's pretty hard to practice it. You have to practice it on console, actually. And probably when you practice on console, it's still not the same as in a run, because you use like a memory card safe rather than running into it. You probably have to do like four hours playing every time to practice it. Yay. Oh, 
this one looks there it is wow at least we got Not some bad. skip that was really nice well i practice that ghost ship. i do practice I mean, that on that <laughs> i mean console Perfect ghost ship movement, not fights. Unfortunately, you know. Yeah, I messed up. Bogey was. <laughs> <laughs> I messed up still, but at least I didn't mess up that bad. Yeah. All right, time for a boss. I gotta make sure I switch in Albert. Because now we don't need Ashel's help anymore. Now we just want, again, to solo all the XP on Shana. Oh my god. <laughs> you forgot to pick up the key. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have to do two more dodges. You can show us our dodging skill. <laughs> two more. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Okay. On point with the dodges. Just everything else is. <laughs> I did it twice here. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Okay, we're only gonna remember from the ghost ship perfect dodges and ghost. That's all we're gonna remember. Perfect dodges twice. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I, I went for the risky first cycle there on the second first dodge. I barely made it too. <laughs> yeah, that was like that was like rage. That was that was really rage field dodging. That was like <laughs> I'm just gonna go for it. Okay, so you get one quest left on the uh, box. Uh, it's like in this fight you only win if everyone is dead at the same time and the, the guys around the main guy in the middle they keep reviving or like getting back up at, after a while so first we get the boss down to a point where we can beat him with an AoE and then we beat everyone with the AoE but we have to wait now until Albert and Dart get defeated again the XP manipulation and then Shana will finish it off with the dancing ray wow that was a really good fight that was... Yeah, Only one extra turn and... Right in. Perfect. Dancing Ray and that's the boss fight. Yeah, Shana is a beast. Shana is making it. Really. We just need our magic and do the items. Like, look at this. Boss fight and two items dead. That's why we solo all the XP on her. She's the actual OP character. Oh man, this run is silly. I can't believe I messed up the shield skip. <laughs> and then I messed up the... Didn't pick up the key. Who doesn't pick up the key, man? That's like a new one at least, not picking the key. And then getting both, do both dodges twice in a row. <laughs> yeah, that's also new. <laughs> wow. I'm glad I practiced that. But we get a really nice cutscene now. 
Really right. nice cutscene. Yep, enjoy the cutscene, everyone. After the cutscene. Cutscene after cutscene. <laughs> yeah, the cutscene after cutscene. This is like a boring cutscene and then it's a really cool cutscene. With a really cool early 2000s PlayStation 1 voice acting. That's how they sound to me. Wait, did it get skipped? Or is it after this text? I always thought it's first before this cave scene. Oh no, it's right now. My bad. Like because on PlayStation 2 that sometimes happens. When the laser jumps a little bit, sometimes cutscenes just don't play. Especially the opening cutscene, I saw that quite a bit, quite a few times. Ah oh yeah, it's right now. Okay. Alright then gonna be quiet, enjoy. It's gone. Yeah, really good gut team. Some of the voice acting though. I kind of like Melibu Fromm as voice actor. <laughs> He's trying, man. He's going all in. Inferior human. Yeah. <laughs> Monster? 
This dog is the MVP. Hey, Shiner, thanks for Ray, dude. Yeah, I don't think Dart wants his stepmom that much. <laughs> Especially not a 12,000 year old one. <laughs> is there actually any explanation why Rose is like immortal? I mean, she's a dragoon. That's all, right? Is every dragoon like that? Can they uh, the Wingleys gave her a choker. They want to. The uh, Charlie Frama gave her a choker that stopped her time or something. Ah, oh, okay. They right. explained it at I the didn't beginning just really for Noticed that part of the lore. Wingleys did it. Why did I even ask? That's always the answer to anything in this game that is weird. Like, if there's something that makes no sense, the answer is always like, wingly magic. <laughs> it's like nano machines in Metal Gear Solid 4. Is it really 11,000 years though? That's what they say, but how do you, <laughs> can you measure you know 11,000 the... 11, years? <laughs> do you know what the real problem with Rose is? The real problem with Rose, 11,000 years, and she still hasn't mastered her final edition. I mean, really. She had all the time. <laughs> She still has only whip smack after 11,000 years. Well, she probably didn't fight that much. She just hung out for 11,000 years. You know, aside from the occasional genocide. <laughs> that sounds just like her. Alright, check this new world map strat here. No charm potion. Interesting, how does that work? And it's actually faster I thought too. The world map is like on rails for a train. Yeah, but it pushes you. Shit. Uh, I'm just gonna use it. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Alright, I have it, it's fine. I messed up by using analog instead of Okay, so of you just go backwards? Yeah, it pushes you back and, and doesn't no count. entry and then you can... Ah, that's nice. But cool. if you use analog, it moves you without moving you. So you have to use D-pad. I'm just so used to using analog, I used analog. So I use the charm potion. So this is the first place again where we can buy burnouts. Since the first, very first job, so one shop in the beginning for burnouts, then five hours, no fire items. And Which now we're gonna stock back up for burnouts. Which is lucky because the next boss. Mainly you know. Yeah, your turn. It's lucky because the next boss is uh, ice, so. Yep, and there's more, more of those later in this tree with the Windy go. So you're gonna keep some too.
Do you keep for uh, Kraken too? Less yep. Kraken, this four? Yeah, we stock up for everything. Or are you fine with the one that you pick? Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was just not sure anymore if you still need burnouts there, because there's like one on the way that you could pick, right? Uh, yeah, but we can kill him in three items if we get lucky. Two burnouts and psych bomb. Yeah, okay. If we're not lucky, you'll take three burnouts in the psych bomb. Yeah, burnouts are always kind of rare. Whenever you can grab burnouts, you have to stock up for whatever ice item is going to come up for the next hours. Rare goods. Yeah, so we'll keep these burnouts for another three hours. Just like the first ones we got. Usually the game also kind of foreshadows you what elements the next bosses will have because they always sell you pretty much. I mean, most places they sell you right before what element is the element that exploits it. There's just like one troll place and I forgot which one it was. Remember there was like one troll place where the game would immediately like right before a boss sell you the items that the boss is resistant to. I'm just thinking which, where, which one that was. It's, it's gonna come to me later. Mm, I can't think of it. Uh, no, we don't. We kill Wendigo before we even get to the icicle phase. Yeah, it doesn't exploit a weakness, but it's also not a problem. I always thought there was like one place where it's like basically the bad item. Maybe it was just an AoE or something. Or I just remember wrong. In the Japanese version, yeah, the we have to use actually are pretty nice. Satchet on Wendigo's heart to kill him fastest. Because he has so much life and we do so little damage. <laughs> we gotta keep a Satchet until Wendigo for that. But in English, we kill him in like three hits, so... What was it, four? Yeah, it's... It's it's insane how how much like Miranda or Shana's magic stat just explodes more and more. When he goes like ten thousand health, and we beat it in three burnouts basically. <laughs> it's like, yeah. That's why we never use additions. It becomes more clear actually in this three and four, even more obvious than it already is that magic items is the way to go. Yeah, basically the, the only time get more and more ridiculous. Only time we need additions is we can't afford or we can't afford to attack items basically. Like Melbu Frama, we don't have enough room for all the attack items it would take. So we need to use uh, attacks. Well, but I think on Melbu, don't you think that um, Hashu would still be the better secondary than Meru? Just because of the destroyer maze? Or would it be better to keep also doing translates with Meru, if you could? Hmm. I don't know. It's hard to say, actually. <laughs> but yeah, we certainly what you say is the more pressing matter. We couldn't use Meru as the secondary, because we don't have enough items. So we definitely have to use the physical as the secondary damage dealer. And Dart, obviously, as the third character in Malibu, is useless because we sacked him all the game. He's level 3, he can't do anything. He's just dying in the first hit and then we just laying him on the floor, like we do all the run. It feels so satisfying to do that menu link, where you just sell all the useless junk from the menu and clean up nicely. It feels like tidying up your room. Getting all that jank out of the menu. So fire items, because we have ice enemies coming up, or water enemies. And charm potions, because we always have them. 
All right, we have I don't one think less. We wanted to talk to that guy. We have one less extra translate. That's why my menu is messed up. We still have an extra translate. Usually have two. But I like that you talked to the bum. Freaking turbo, man. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I turned turbo off. Oh, it's the jar of death. Well then, there's your random counter for the day. Five hours ago, I said we're not gonna see any random encounters in this run. You said we shouldn't. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> right, you said I, hopefully. That's I was right. hopeful. <laughs> I'm not hopeful anymore. <laughs> It's kind of silly you can have 255 weapons and no, and only 32 regular items. I mean, we all know that like small bottles with potions in it consume a lot more weight and space than swords, axes, and gigantic hammers. So it actually makes perfect sense. I like also that this place always changes which is the first thing you could select, and it's always where you have to go. So you never have to choose like the correct place where to go with that boat. You always just mash, and it's always the correct thing on the first. Except this dialogue, you have to use the third option here in the dialogue. Or Danger's my middle name. Can you seriously? You need to see the monster. I kind of want to play Legend of Dragoon again myself. This too always motivates me to play Legend of Dragoon. This one never, but this too always does. It's like all the cool places. And well, I have to run through this one like 500 million times already. And then Dart's really good at turning this wheel here. Really tell you is moving it hard. <laughs> oh, there's no grinding. You get all the experience you need from the bosses on the way. This game has a very big difference in experience that you get from random fights or boss fights. One of the things that I like a lot about it, you basically always have the same levels. It's a lot more impactful to do the proper XP manipulation on the bosses that we do, where we make sure that one character gets all the XP, rather than it is to like grind. You know, like a, ca a casual player who would play this game would be lower level on Shana than we are and deal less damage, even if he grinded for 10 hours. Because grinding, grinding uh, random fights is just so little XP, whereas bosses and using XP manipulation on bosses is gigantic XP. So it's important that you survive the bosses with the correct characters. Not that you grind. And we got the jewel crown for Shana. So earlier I explained it already. 
In this game, the attack stat gets boosted by weapons and the magic stat gets boosted by head equipment. So what helmet you wear is very important for your magic damage output. And we just picked up the Jewel Crown, which is an equipment that only Shana and Meru can equip. And it gives a very strong magic boost. The highest magic boost you can get from helmets is 50 and Jewel Crown gives 42. So it's very close to the optimal magic plus equipment already. Yeah, there's nothing like that. There's like no interesting drops or so. Nothing that would be really impactful. We buy some stuff. We buy sometimes buy like a better helmet to increase the magic further. Or a piece of armor. Or like a piece of equipment, we're gonna buy magic rings later. Which increases it's an accessory which increases magic by 30. That kind of stuff. So we do like a little bit of detouring, but mostly shopping. Not not Defeating random enemies, we never have to do that. It's not useful. So here we get our rematch with Linus. We kind of escaped the first time we fought her. This time she has company. This fight always was a little weird for me to, to me because Linus is a lot easier to defeat here. She has a lot less health and is less dangerous than the first encounter. Although she is in Dragoon form now, so you, you would you would experience or you would expect it to be stronger now, but she has less health than in the first encounter. She does have the help of the dragon, though. The dragon is very susceptible to magical damage, especially magical fire damage, so you're gonna see some four-digit numbers now. Sweet. So, when the dragon gets the first turn here and does the strongest AoE move, Dart and Albert will immediately fall. Which means we would not be able to get the speed up on Shana from another character. And it makes a lot of a difference if Shana has to use the speed up herself or if someone else does it. So, well, that was like really nice right now that we got to use the speed up. And now, we're gonna have Dart and Albert die. And Shana will solo this. The magical damage. It's gonna be a lot of fire damage. And this is also the first fight where really our very high magical defense plays in. Because if she didn't have such a high magical defense, she would be, you know, it would be hard to solo here with the damage they can deal. But look at the difference in the damage now. Shana, 156, Dart, 974, Albert, 2000. Of course, it's mainly because of the level difference, but it's also the, that Shana has a very high magical defense. And this. And now just burnouts from here. Gushing Magma basically lacks the 50% damage multiplier. So when you use the AoE item, it's going against all the enemies they have the same weakness. But it deals 50% less damage. So now we focus on a single enemy with a stronger item. 836. Wow, that was a really good fight. And Linus has very high magic defense. Yeah, that was perfect. He didn't do that weird water glass bowl attack cube thing a single time, which is the slowest animation. That was one of the best fights I've seen for this one in a pretty long time. GG's. Uh, we'll use Dragoon form once with Hatchel at the very end to uh, initiate a defensive phase on the final boss.
It's a lot, lot safer than not. <laughs> So we kind of have half time, right? Both on the estimate and on the discs. Five, ten hours, both first two discs are kind of done. I mean, there's more dialogue and stuff, but. Yeah, oh, about half time. Half of some, you know, castle celebration party. And probably, oh, we have to go through the barons again. We always have to go through the barons first. Yep, more barons. Well, Dart does use his Divine Dragoon Spirit automatically when you beat Malbu, but we time before that. Like, the moment that Malbu's down, we time. Because it would be kind of silly if it's, it makes a difference if you have Dart and Dragoon already or not. Because it's really not useful to do that. So technically, Dart going into Divine Dragoon is not quite part of the run. The run is timed at that point. We only time until Melbu has zero health. And the extra rare drill crown drop. <laughs> so useful. Not. This boss fight was also Shana's last stand. From here onwards, she just inherits her insane level and stats to Miranda. The next encounter or the next boss fight will be in like quite a bit of time from here. But at that point, Shana will no longer be in the team. Over an hour from now. <laughs> yeah, oh, welcome to plot time. It's really plot time. But yeah, Shana has done her job. It's not just plot time, it's like really, it's just text time. <laughs> There's not even movement to do or anything, it's just like dialogue and dialogue. The start of this 3 and the end of this 2, that passage is like the actual pain of the run. We just skip text. Uh, it's not messed up this time. Why do I keep messing this up, man? <laughs> How did I even mess it up that time? I don't know, I never did that thing. Maybe it's just a theory and it doesn't actually work. Maybe that's the plot twist. <laughs> no, it worked, I've done it many times in a row. I must have started... no? Hmm. Must be Turbo. I don't blame Turbo. There is no inconsistency in movement though. Either it works or not. You just have to figure out what the difference is. Yeah, I must have made some sort of mistake. Like you yeah, you literally just hold down there to get to the other point.
my room is kind of starting to boil right now. We have super high temperatures here. And I have the attic room. So I hope I'm going to be alive after the next five hours. Maybe I have to jump and take a cold shower in between or something. <laughs> it's like really warm here. Just with charm potions. We skip random encounters just by keep resetting the danger to zero. You know, the arrow above Dart's head starts blue, then yellow after some movement, then red, and then you get a fight, right? If you take a charm potion, it gets it goes back to blue. And and well, since there. as a runner you have good and consistent movement, you know exactly where the places are where you would get a fight, and you just do the charm potion right before. So we know exactly how many charm potions we need and when we have to use them to never get an encounter. Yeah, on the world map, it presses, it pushes, if you push no enter, it pushes you away from the place without adding to your encounter the right. So in that place on the world map between Fueno and the cave there, you can skip a charm potion. It's actually faster than using the charm potion, except if you mess it up all three times like I did. <laughs> <laughs> But it's definitely 100% consistent as long as you don't mess it up. Yeah, normally in that place, if you see like runs that didn't do that trick before, the fight would be like on the very last step. You know, you can make almost the distance there just by running. And then you would need the charm potion like just at the very end. Or you get an encounter like just before the town. And apparently, what he was trying to do was like that little push, get that last step in. Someone didn't work. Gonna check it out later. The first time I messed up, for sure, because I used analog. <laughs> the second time I had turbo on, so I messed up. <laughs> the third time, I'm not sure what I did wrong. Third time, not sure. Actual next fight from here is Grand Jewel, right? So we have like probably like 80 minutes of nothing. Yeah, it's about an hour <laughs> of nothing. <laughs> it's back. probably like the perfect time to order pizza or something. <laughs> yeah, take a nap, order pizza, take a shower. Ton, tons of plot and exposition though. Yeah, disc three was all the where it is all the plot comes out. Yo, Kios, what's up, man? Hello, hello. 
another legend of Dragoon Runner entering the chat. Kios, how's it going, dude? What's up, legend? Great pace, uh, something like that. <laughs> Great pace for how bad this run's going. <laughs> All right, Dart and Shauna finally get together. Typical. This game is so cheesy in some parts. <laughs> Very cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so obvious they're gonna pull it off a second time. Like, it's so obvious. It ain't easy being cheesy. <laughs> yeah. The music is great. It just needs to be the track should be more long. That's all. They loops loop too fast. But else they're cool. I like this screen a lot, from the tower, and you have that background with the ocean and the coast, like really far away. This kind of looks good. The guys who designed the pre-rendered backgrounds and the screens and, like, you know, made it like mix with the 3D models and the flames and dust and that stuff. It just looks so good for PS1 era. Also this one, all the light just shines into the room, it just looks so good. If you compare it to like Final Fantasy games of that time, definitely technically looks a lot better. Which doesn't necessarily mean it's like the better game, but the technical quality for it, it did what the PS1 was able to do, you know. So we have returned the Moon Dagger. The mission of this two is completed, hunting down Linus, regaining the Moon Artifact. And now it's the big party place here in the castle. Party time! I don't actually know the English word. What is it that called? Wait. What's what called? Is it called ball? Really? No way. Uh, balls for like yes, yeah. formal dance ball. Is really a word for that? That's interesting. Cool. I would never was really on a ball like, like the old-fashioned way, like in the movies with those middle medieval-looking dresses and people dancing classic dance. Yep. Second option is faster. Oh, I have to note that down. I didn't know. I'm starting to talk about random stuff rather than the game right now. 
because nothing's happening. A lot of nothing's happening for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> the coggle smacking wood. That's something that is happening. I just hope I don't fall asleep during a cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been five hours, you can't fall asleep yet. You still have another five to go from this game. We're just getting started here, right? Yeah, it's fine after we get past a certain point in this three. Yeah. I always felt like that. Um, so this one, time flies. Like the first three hours feel like one hour 30. Then this too, the start is kind of a K-ish. But now, those five hour mark here, like from five to seven hours, the game is just getting... Uh, <laughs> the run is really, really hard. You start to feel the time. Yeah, five to seven hour marks like the grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where it really gets in the muscles and in the nerves. Yeah, this screen, the classic talk to everyone place. Talk to everyone so that the story advances. Look at them dancing. I know, right? Like the ones dancing are just 2D sprites, it's not even 3D models. Better than the dance scene in Final Fantasy VIII? I'm not sure about that one. I'm not sure about that one. It is less cringe, I give you that, which is probably a plus. And Kongol is the best looking guy here, 100%. I think the only piece of music in this game that I'm not really a fan of is this one. Especially because it also obviously plays every single time Dart and Sean have some sort of a love moment or whatever. This cheesy bell ringing thing, it's... Uh... Could have, could have been better. That's this two for us. Okay, Ryan, it is three. Let's go. Ah, Kongo, I don't know, man. In, of course, in the run, he's not useful because, you know, no one who isn't Shana is useful, really, for the most part, because magic. But in casual, he does have some use, actually. Because... You can be lazy with Congo. I actually like Congo in casual when I was playing like, I'm just gonna like try to defeat Faust and not want to grind too much. Congo reaches his like final edition very quickly. What is LC? I don't know what LC is, but Congo is pretty good. Congo is easily just uh, doing 9,000 on. Uh, on Faust, the optional super boss. You can kill him three hits if you... Uh... No, you don't need to let him cast, that's not true. If you get, if you play casual and you get the XP on Kongo, he's the easiest character to crush Faust with. 
he reaches his final edition faster than anyone else, only he because he only has three editions. And he does like 9,000 damage per edition then. So he's like the easiest way to defeat Faust actually in casual. And that's a big plus. His yeah. biggest weakness is the speed, but you can counter it with bandits and stuff. Yeah, Faust is the only fight he's really the best at. Yeah, he's the, it's the only fight. Where, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Faust is the fight where he's the best at. Because Faust has like ridiculous low physical defense. And speed doesn't matter since he most of his turns are counters. Yeah. Yeah, because he has 30 speed only, but if you get bandit swing and bandit shoes, he has 70 speed. And then he's not that slow anymore. Well, because Shana's just better at it. We just choose Shana over Meru. Meru was being used in the past in the run, but we just... Um, Yeah, just switch to Shana because she's just better at it. And we have to kind of focus the XP on one of them. Yeah, that's the thing, Dragnar. That's exactly what it is with Kongol. Kongol is not good in like normal casual play. You have to know about the XP mana. You have to try and get all the experience on Kongo from the start, and then he can be good. <laughs> you have to also all then grab Bone Crush immediately, just farm up Bone Crush to maximum uses, and then he's gonna be fun. But yeah, obviously not useful for speedrun, because you don't have the time. But he does have some muscle. You need the Bandit Swing though too. Okay, so here in the run right now, still like lower time going to the mayor of the village. And then going our way to Deningrad, the big town in this place, this tree. Overlevered Dart has been tried before, at, even at the run, because Dart is the... He gets the Divine Dragoon Spirit from Malbu Frama, right? So, it could have been like useful to have Dart super high level, because then you have three damage dealers and you have the Divine Dragoon, but it was just really... doesn't worth it, because first, the time save in Malbu Frama isn't really even consistent, because when Malbu Frama switches face, you get out, kicked out of the special phase, which buffs his damage. And secondly, Dart just loses all the time on the way to Melbu. Melbu's not everything, you know. Shana's just so much faster on like all the way through the game on your way to Melbu Frama. That it's just really uh It's just not worth to try anything else really. There's no way anything is faster other than Shana on Miranda route. Kongo doesn't get his fight last edition late, that's the thing. Kongo gets it after, like, right after Linus, actually. He has only three. He starts level 19, you win one boss fight with him, then he has, highest, he has the second edition. Then you can level up the first two and you have the third one. The point with Kongo is just that he has only three editions, so you can be lazy with grinding up editions. If you want to get the final edition for a hash you have to farm up five editions with Kongo, it's only three. That's the only point. You can't just skip some edition grinding. And he doesn't have a counter. So, in, Mal in Faust, for example, it can be annoying with the counter on the additions. But yeah. Yeah, Hatchel's counters are really hard, too. Hex Hammer and Omni Sweep counters. 
Oh boy. Good luck hitting that. Addition doesn't depend on turns. Addition depends on level. You unlock additions by level. Yeah, Maru's final perky step is really hard, dude. But it's yeah. super overpowered. <laughs> if you have everything on her, final edition maxed. Definitely super powered. Yeah, th sure, the, fir the final one, but that's, that's only 160 then, you know. Every other character you ne would need to load like four to 500. Because you have five editions where you have to complete Age of ED. With Kongo, you only have to do two, you know. So it's a little easier. You know, the real lazy way is getting the ultimate war god on Hatchel or Maru. <laughs> they need to go to sleep and but then mash. you're missing out on one set of equipment. Have turbo, <laughs> turbo on and mash. Actually, Rose is interesting too if you like to, uh, if you don't mind grinding up additions, because she gets her uh, the hard blade, which is like the one before the final edition. She gets on a rather low level. You can have it already on Dole theoretically if you get ex more XP on her. And then the, her demon stance is like up to 500% damage if you grind up that one. But you know, it takes a lot of time to grind up the additions. It can be interesting also to like focus on rows if you want to play casual and though you don't mind farming up some additions. I'm not sleeping yet, RNG. Although I might fall asleep on one of these cutscenes at this rate. <laughs> well, I mean, most additions are pretty easy. Except Hatchel and Maru. Well, that's the yeah. problem. I, I already... also find Rose's final one is not hard. I'm already drinking energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I think Moonstrike is also annoying. Moonstrike has like annoying counter in one place. One of the counters in Moonstrike is annoying. Not sure if it's an early or late one. Oh yeah, you, you cannot use Congo with definitely with normal speed. You need to use Banish Ring. Then his speed goes from 30 to 50 and Rose has 55, then they're the same pretty much in speed. 
And he has way higher attack stat than most other characters. He's really not as bad as most people think. The attack stat is something that matters a lot. He has way more physical damage than most other characters. But you have to know how to use him. You have to get him speed equipment and you have to focus XP. Let's be real, every character is easy to beat the game with. <laughs> yeah, Especially you can't solo English. everyone, pretty much. Especially in English. English. I, think, I think with Dart and with Hash, it'll probably be like, I don't know. Close to the next best things you could do after Shana. Dart because of Dragoon and Hashel because of Destroyer Maze. And everyone else this would be kind of weird. You could beat the game with using no Most items at all. the worst character. You could beat the English version with no items at all. The divine tree yeah, the tree for sure. Of life. All life comes from this divine tree. Yeah, English version is way easier. Anyway, enjoy the cutscene. In the beginning, nothingness filled the world. Then the creator saw yeah, the voice actors for these cuts are just for good. From the sky. His followers created the world. In the end, Soa sowed a seed on the earth. The seed soon grew to be a great tree. The great tree bore 108 fruits, and various life forms arose from the ripened fruits. Thus, 108 forms of life were created to fill the world. Divine tree completed its role, but the story says it is still protected by the signet of Soa. Yeah, you should have less time to hit the input correctly. The signet of Soa. Someone said they wanted mashing art. Yeah, that's mashing ASMR. <laughs> Does it even work with the uh, turbo controller? I know the Kiwami has like buttons that you really can't mash with properly. They're like yeah, super, so super stiff buttons. But you say you have a Hori, right? So that's maybe yeah. a little bit different. It's not as good as my PS1 controller for sure. It's not that bad. Time for the library. You can lose a lot of time messing up mashing here.
You don't have to speed run the library? Speed run in the library. <laughs> we really want to speed run the library. Uh, Shauna's the hardest part. Is leaving her without talking to her again. Well, I'm not mad. See, the way the text works is you have to hold the button for it to be fastest. So I'm really holding it with one... I'm holding it with one thumb and mashing the other thumb. Yeah, it's like the text only gets speed up while you hold the button or it gets speed up the most while you hold the button. But at the end of every line, it doesn't advance if you didn't if you don't press. So, you need to kind of like switch between holding, pressing, holding, pressing, holding, pressing for text to make it optimal. Yeah, and this and this controller isn't the best for mashing manually. Like if I plugged in my PS1 controller, it'd be way better. And I haven't mashed in a speed run for a while in a while. I mean I haven't done a legit percent run in a month. Been getting lazy with the uh, turbo. <laughs> there were seven dragoon warriors in the legend of the dragon campaign. Dragoons reputed to be the incarnation of dragons. With dragons at their side, the Dragoons fought boldly. However, in the age when the legend was reality, the Winglies dominated all, even the gods. The gods answered to dictator Melbu Fama's prayers and granted him ultimate power. But the power was abused. The earth of Saint Imperial Gloriano was scorched by the god's fire and became ashen. The anger and sadness of the people was fuel for the Dragoon's cause. Then at last they freed the gods. Without the god's power, the Winglies perished, and our age, the human age, began. Thereafter, the gods floated in the sky. For 11,000 years, they have been looking over the world as the moon that never sets. Okay, I think we're like half through the lore part. Now we have some more castle dialogue and then we get to play again. Yeah, wake me up when there's something to do. Don't play only lore. Yeah, if I was a side boss, of course. We're just talking casual stuff, you know. The gods. An evil plane in speedrun, you just use Shana. That's it. Shana is the only way to go in the speedrun. The story bosses are all like, just sets. you beat them with magic. That's it. And Shana is the best at it. Never sets, glows red every 108 years. It is a sign that a herald will be sent to Earth. The herald is known to us as the Moonchild. The 
legend says the moon child revives the gods on Earth and purifies the world. The black monster abhors, hates, and despises it, and kills the moon child. This sad karma is endless. This god stays forever in the sky, and the world is a never-ending chaos. This is what a librarian would sound like if he was a heavy smoker. Yeah, every adventurer who comes into town, this guy has to explain the whole story to him. <laughs> I kind of feel like the voice actors they got for those cutscenes with those drawn stuff, like Minister Noish and the Librarian. I feel like the voice actors are like were like professionals, and the voice actors that did the additions and the rest of the stuff were like the people that coded the game, and just like grabbed. I don't know, some sort of potato mic and it's just like Wakino <laughs> Yeah probably <laughs> It's such a difference Double Slash Summon summon four gods Wow you're good at Hashel actually that was pretty good Five ring shattering. Hexhammer! I'm sorry. Take that, to... Hexhammer! Blazing <laughs> <laughs> Dynamo! Madness. Hero! The, the hero, the, the start, the first word of the hero, like, he messes up the H in a weird way when he says Madness Hero. He's like, Madness Hero! <laughs> like, his voice cracks or something. Turkey step! <laughs> and they just left it like that. <laughs> Put it in the game like that, it was fine, it was good enough. Now we're not gonna take the two <laughs> seconds it takes to record that, let's use it. Ship it. Yeah. It could also have been like they just took some sort of a recording device and just went on the streets to random guy was like, can you say Madness Hero really loud? And just like click record that. Yay. He's to the Japanese. Sunshine no watchers! Alright. Taggedy! You know Taggedy? in Japanese is Harpoon. Yeah, Harpoon. In Japanese, like, Hadoko! Harpoon! Hagapoon! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, most of them are just the English with a Japanese accent or something. <laughs> yeah. Whoops, back! Whip smack. Uh, the final boss fight is like anywhere from 18 to 25 minutes. <laughs> Did you just say anywhere from 8, eight to 45 minutes? 18 to 40, uh, not 45, 25. Oh, oh 18. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's kind of true. Something goes bad, it can be really slow. Die! 
Moin, moin. Yeah, in the FMV, some of the voice lines are crazy bad. Also, in the battle, some of the bosses say stuff, and it also has really, really weird quality. Lloyd's voice lines are always super funny in battle. Lloyd is better in German, though, I have to say. Lloyd's voice lines are much funnier in German. Too long, Jam. Yeah, Bone Crush is my favorite move, man. No counters. 9,000 damage on Faust. I love it. I love it. Bone Crush, Bone Crush, Bone Crush, Faust dead. Nothing makes me happier. Oh, man, we forgot Albert. Albert has the best. Spinning cane. Rod Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Get the wind in. <laughs> Blossom Storm. Levitt's voice acting when he says Gust of Wind is pretty odd, too. Oh, the Japanese is Spiro Bite. I like that better. Spiro Bite. All oh, right, the dragoon thing. Yeah, divine dragoon cannon. That voice acting. That is, that's the only one from the editions or in battle acting that I actually like. Like, not mean like because it's funny. I actually like it when he says divine dragoon cannon. That's just good. That's like, yes. <laughs> Two minute long animation, but whatever. so good all right we got like yeah 15 minutes until we get to do something <laughs> still awake until we actually play the game yeah we, we kept you awake with like voice acting and discussing who's the better character that's the best way to stay awake in like this downtime this screen to stew <laughs> That's also one thing, though, I noticed in Final Fantasy VII back in the day. I was at some point playing it on emulator with turbo also, and I fell asleep so much faster. Like, when you mash, you always stay at it. You, you stay more focused. It's harder to keep yourself awake and focused when you use turbo, because you can't just put the controller there and be like, okay, mash for me. Mash for me. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. No. Sleep. Tell Malbu. 
All right, I'll see myself out. Yeah, certainly. Uh, BDD's Hashel was very good. Gotta say that. I've only heard it 10 billion times. <laughs> Man, I got like three physical copies of Legend of Dragoon and like six PS2s. That's your secret to your world record, right? You cluster the PlayStation 2 so they load faster. Because that makes sense, right? Yeah, I got a super computer PS2. <laughs> <laughs> the more PS2s, the faster it is. <laughs> It's logical, it's only logical. <laughs> yeah, if you just buy all the discs, no one can beat your time. Exactly. <clears throat> I got two English and one Japanese disc set. One Japanese console and <laughs> five English console. I think one of them doesn't work though. But they're all different. I got like a 90k, 75k, 77k, 70k. I have a 30k too, but it's broken. It broke. Alright, see a pandas. Sacrifice enough goats, yep. Yeah, I don't see them ever remaking this. It'd be cool if they did, but I don't, I don't see it happening. Yeah, I mean, I'll take like a Steam port. Yeah, yeah we get a little tiny bit of gameplay and then more cutscene dialogue. Bahamut, yeah, basically.
This game isn't old and it came out yesterday. No oh, wait. 20 years ago yesterday, I guess. Wait, 21 years ago. It's hard not to think of like 2000 as like a couple years ago. Alright, now we f figured out <laughs> one of our party members has a secret. I wonder who it could be. Hmm. Oh man, we're almost there. Almost there. Time to get the best character. Here is Wonder Woman. <laughs> The final Wonder Woman. Yep, the real Wonder Woman. I mean, technically Miranda and Shanna are the same stats, right? But the thing is just, you get Miranda right after you got that big chunk XP from Linus 2, and when you get Magical Ring, and when you get Dancer's Shoes. So basically the first time you use Miranda, it's like such a difference to having Shanna before, you know? Yeah, it's a huge power upgrade. You get power up too. <laughs> yeah, and the power up, right, right, right. Power up too. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah magical ring. She's still just destroying shoes. Grand Jewel. The super upgrade. Yeah. Yeah, Shana and Miranda are basically the same character set. They share the same spot, and you know, Shana is until the end of this too, and then from here on, it's Miranda who just inherits what Shana was. I actually kind of like that about the game. I don't know. I know that a lot of people didn't like it. Like, they introduced new characters that were basically just the same character, but actually, I, I kind of found it okay. Yeah, Because then you don't have this thing that you have to, like, readjust everything. You know, you still keep the stats, but you still have a new character and, like, some new animations and new costume design. I liked, actually, that they switched that like that. There that D-pad goes again. Making me look bad. <laughs> D-pad lights going right when I push it down. All right, we got gameplay now, boys. Yay! Gameplay, movement, charm potions, boss battles, mini games with dodges. Give me more of it. Actually, the next mini game is the most goofy one. Like, it's not hard, but I, I don't get that. I just don't get that screen with those jumping armadillos. I just don't understand it. But, like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Supposed to be? Yep, Levitz and Albert are the same. Yeah, yeah. Like, on the stat-wise uh, topic. 
Albert inherits the level and the stats from uh, Levitz. It's just a face swap and some different animations. And the additions are different, yeah. You care for Levitz, wow. I don't know, um, I think Albert is not the worst character, actually. He's, a, he's written a little bit obvious. He's like some super strong, super cheesy character trait. But there's a little more to him. I don't think he's that bad. So now we go in the Wingly Forest. Which Meru obviously isn't allowed to show to anyone, so we're running into some drama here. Actually, I would. Actually, I would just call it the drama forest. We have some shopping to do here as well. So in this forest we can buy Magical Ring, which is an important item. Increases magic by 30, and magic, since it's our main damage, is very important to buff it as much as we can. Defense. He just has bad magic defense. Which is probably what you mean. Because that's what you notice that he just takes high damage numbers. But on physical damage he's super good. Then... Depends on the enemy. Here's the magical ring shopping. Now we go into the forbidden city. Cadessa. We've seen Cadessa once before in that cutscene after the ghost ship. Right, right. And here's one of the two triggered brothers. By the way, Rose is roasting that guy super hard in the text. Yeah, the brothers, I don't know what's with those wingly brothers, but they're super salty all the time. It's because their baby sister followed Maru out of the village and got killed by a human. So they kind of blame all humans. Especially the younger one. Makes sense. I think you have to play this game again at some point slowly and actually read stuff. Sub 10? Uh, my sum of S is almost sub 10. Like less than a minute. need a, another skip to get sub 10. Yeah, 
Septon sounds really hard, man. There's surely time to make up, but 20 minutes. I don't know, man. I think we need something new for that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, sub 10, 15 is, well, shouldn't be that hard. Yeah, sub 10 with Game Genie. Even with perfect RNG, I don't think sub 10 is possible. Hundred percent run, yeah, it's ninety nine percent. Basically hundred percent. Just without levels. By hardware man if he means like opening the tray so it can't read the disc. <laughs> That's like the best strat. Does not like break your sh that stuff. That might actually even give sub ten. Uh, it sounds like a way to uh, make it mess up your disc in PS2. You might also be able to hit sub 10 just with uh, Retro Arch because you can put 14 times load disc on Beetle Core. It saves, has much faster loads than PS2. Why is it just 99%? Because uh, the mod who <laughs> named it named it 99% instead of 100%. Because he wanted to avoid that people constantly talk about the, what the definition of the category is. And that works so well. Because everyone wants to know why 99%. <laughs> it causes a lot more trouble than just making a 100% definition that people disagree with. <laughs> because everyone wants to know why 99 What is the mean? Oh yeah, Turbo messes up loading in this game a lot. After after some battles, if you leave Turbo on during the screen transitions, the game won't load the visuals. Everything will be loaded except you can't see it until you get in a battle or... I think it's just a oh, battle or a world map. The Forbidden Land. This place has, like, a different victory theme. I always found that funny for some reason. And I think it only plays here. No, it's every Wingly. Every Wingly city has the same battle music. Oh. All four of them that you visit. This one, Aguilis. Ah, right, yeah, yeah, true. Zinnabatos and so Mayfield. That victory theme is the best. Okay, here, a little bit of detouring. Because this chest is very important, this is the dancer's shoes, increasing the speed stat of female characters by 20. And making Miranda even more ridiculous. Making her even more Wonder Woman. Speed just giving you more returns. And plus 20 is quite a bit, because she normally has 65 speed. Increase that by 20 to 85. Do the maths. It's quite a high increment. Yeah, we're doing the Mr. Fantastic on that chest. I also always notice that. You can activate that chest from really far away. Yeah, you just telekinesis. <laughs> Give me better shoes. Miranda wants new shoes.
Yep, I agree. It does have something of the Temple of the Ancients. It also fits that the boss fight is supposed to be difficult. Probably in casual is, kinda. As you know here with... Every boss fight is... I mean, most of the fights were kinda free with those speed strats, but... When you have Miranda, it's even more free. She's really just one-shot monster. also holds the next repeat item, so if you remember in the Valley of Corrupted Gravity we picked up the speed up, which for three turns increase, uh, doubles the speed of a character. And in this place we find the power up, which increases someone's physical and magical strength by 50% and physical and magical defense by 50% for three turns. And also repeat item meaning it can be used every, every fight. You use it, then it gets used for the fight, but then it gets added back to the inventory after the fight after this kind of questionable minigame. So this minigame at least is kind of simple. You basically just have to not stand still. For as long as you're moving, those things kind of don't hit you. So just, you have to know where you get stuck. Basically just when you, you know you try to move, you get stuck on a corner, then you get hit. But other than that, just really go from one point to the next. And also the screen is not hostile when you leave. When you come back here, the screen becomes hostile. As in, like, it can trigger random encounters over movement. But the first time doesn't, so we don't need a charm portion there. Now we draw all the way up. There's the power-up. Very important. Repeat item. Yeah, we're gonna want that for every single boss, basically, from here on out. Theoretically a hard fight, but yeah, with Wonder Woman. Three gales and lights out. Just need to hope that the enemy, you know, kills the other two party members in time. Yeah, it's a lot, a it lot like annoying a, if it doesn't. the Band of Drake fight now. He heals at 900 yeah. HP. So we want to do damage not that too much with the first two items, and then the third item kills.
right. Power up Miranda. Yeah, speed up not even really needed. She's so strong here. You want to get it, hopefully the other characters to die. We'll be using the rest of the spinning gales we had saved from Lohan. There actually are some places where you uh, really even don't need, need to speed up anymore, just to power up, because Miranda is just so strong. The bigger problem is just not that she gets enough turns to kill the enemy, but that, like, the enemy kills the other party members before, you know, you have to start wasting turns by defending with her, <laughs> wasting up the power up. So not doing speed up means that hopefully there's a higher chance that we just get the others to die while we're still powered up. Miranda is just too OP for the game. <laughs> 67 damage. <laughs> yeah, her magical defense also crazy on this level. Yeah, and that slides out. And that's that fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's crazy Wonder Woman is just too OP man yeah there's no better out until we find some major skip Again, charm potions are routed exactly at exactly enough until the next menu. Yep. I always find the movement on the mountain sketchy. Especially on the way back. It has some weird corners where it just suddenly increases super fast. You need to be careful. Like the Divine Dragon Mountain thing. Yeah, when, especially when you're going down or left, you wanna. As soon as you get red, you wanna use Charm Potion. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's really just direction, right? It's the same. Like down left, it's the same in the. Uh, in the water area, in Agilis, when you go back, like when you have to do down left in the corners, it just shoots up. Quickly. Yep. Yeah, it's because up and right are broken. They reduce, uh, they don't give as much counters as intended. Hmm. Good to know. And this cutscene is, of course, really cool. It will absolutely never get old. To see a dragon destroy stuff.
Divine Dragon Cannon. Wah! I don't know, it looks like Sean is dead to me. I mean, you see that cannon? Jeez. We're too late. The city's destroyed. But hey, we're fighting a stone. That was so important. Okay. Gotta stock up some spark nets. Or just charm potions, you don't need sp Oh yeah, two. Yeah, it's just for the dragon, right? Actually, no, Divine I didn't dragon. them. It's just a joke, man. Hmm? I got trans light left, I forgot. <laughs> you debated me. Oh, you actually didn't need them, I right? I'm sorry, it's my fault. I was just trying to commentate what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, remember you bought Spark Nets, you didn't need them. I remember accidentally using all my <laughs> translate and not having any Spark Net. That's fine, we got plenty of charm potions anyway. Yeah, we, we did need to shop for charm potions, that's for sure. We just didn't need to buy more Spark Nets. Yeah, the Divine Dragon is kind of a... He's, he's actually G-baited. Because he acts like all powerful and stuff, but you go there and he dies in two Spartanets and not even power up. Just two Spartanets. Plain. Yeah, he's. No buffs. <laughs> it's free. He's such a joke. He's the worst enemy in the game. He's like the easiest to defeat boss in the entire run. No no jokes. Yeah, well, to be fair, we have the Dragon Block staff, so kind of cheating. And like, if you fight him in uh, Mayfield, he's way harder. I don't care. From here, it's not the Divine Dragoon, it's the G-Baited Dragoon. Would you rather the dragon fight Dragon? Get out! I mean, I'd rather have a much harder and complicated dragon fight and around one less, one hour less of dialogue in this three. <laughs> That's how I see it. That's true. Yeah, it is kind of funny that the divine dragon's all, everyone's all scared of her for hours. And then right after we fight a random monster in the ice place, it's way harder. <laughs> <laughs> It's really like that. <laughs> a random monster. It's really, it's like the most random monster in this game. It's like just, yo, well, you need another boss here. Just create something. Just use a Wendigo. Everyone has a Wendigo. But don't call it Wendigo, call it Windigo with an I. And then it's super unique and cool. Do you know how much this enemy has messed me up? Like, every game that I talk about, which has a Wendigo, like FF10, everyone is always like, it's spelled with an E. Dude, it's spelled with an E, not with an I. Yeah, they just had to be different. I have to say, though... Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, Windigo is the fight where I celebrate this route the most. Because of how much it changed. Like, I remember in the older routes, you know, this, like, attacking him for 10 rounds, waiting for the wings to open up, throwing the satchet, like, holy moly. I love that this fight just turned into three burnouts and lights out. Nah, it's, it's four just... burnouts. 
that's so good. It feels so satisfying every time. Yeah, Satchel does 10 damage. Saying one shot all the special yeah. monsters that have 4 HP and do Yeah, and you can treat like the heart of Wendigo or Wendigo. You can treat it like a special part. It's like normally if you try to defeat him over this opening up, you can always only deal one damage to the heart. So you normally would have to open it up three times, hit the heart for one, he closes. But with a Satchit, it's like a shortcut to that. And it does still hits 10 damage. So yeah. Satchit is like an item that normally is useless, but then it has some special uses where low damage numbers are good when it's guaranteed. And Satchit puts like that Django thing asleep. The thing in this one in the uh, Helena prison. But also no use for that anymore now that you got the panic guard. So that Rose can't get confused anymore. Yeah, it takes forever to put him to sleep. It's like a 30 second cutscene. Yeah, and also picking the chest and everything, it was actually an awful strat. Yep. I somehow didn't notice ever when I routed that stuff that panic guard exists. I didn't even know that it's there. <laughs> And especially that it's in the same shop that you visit anyway. Like, it's the cape shop, you said, right? Where you buy the, the, the cape for yeah. Drake and so on, right? It's also where the pinning card is. I think you could buy one in Bale, too. Ah, uh, okay. I think. Oh, yeah, that's what you actually said, right? You also had that... Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's just what happens with speed games, you know? Someone starts routing like stuff and then people look after it later and more eyes always see more stuff and then you see things that are bad or mistakes or oversights and then you improve it further and further and further. And remove all the bad things. And hopefully don't make a bunch of mistakes along the way. Yeah, true. And potentially you do and someone else picks it up and then sees them and improves it further. Well, yeah, the round has actually improved and changed more than I actually took notice of. I thought this is more or less the old Wonder Woman route, but this is very different in a lot of places. It, everything is just like the idea is the same, but it's a little bit more tight, more consistent, a little less shopping, less menus. Like it's a bit more direct through the game. I like it actually. Yep. I'm pretty happy that I come here today. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of good stuff and taking closer attention. Like when I watch your stream, I'm mostly just memeing and expecting I know everything. Now I'm looking closer. Yeah, that's the problem is people think they know everything. <laughs> I'm the same way until Lasagna was like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> oh. I'm just following DT's notes. <laughs> we should give DT some positive credit at some point, too. We're acting like he's such a bad person. <laughs> I mean, well, he is, but... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Death Dome, he started running this game for any of us and set the ground stone for a Legend of Dragoon Run. Yep. And he's also a funny guy. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, this is another really important chest Dragon Helmet. This is so good. So, this item does not only give the match some possible magic boost that a helmet can give, which is 50 plus. It also increases your maximum health by 50% and it can be equipped by anyone. So it's like the, probably like the ultimate helmet in this game.
Yeah, it's definitely OP. But we don't need it yet. I mean, I could put it on. Usually I wait till the next turn potion menu. Which is after the fight. But since we have to save anyway. Might as well put it on here. Since we're yeah, saving anyway. Like, Yeah, it's true. The magic boost, thanks to the jewel crown, is not even actually that high. You get like eight more magic. And this boss is kind of bad, so... Yeah, you still kill him with the two. Yeah, yeah. Still kill him too, yeah, you can bone crush Faust especially with that. Faust, the optional boss being like the worst in magical defense for some reason. And physical. Only has 50. But more characters can do that. Against uh, Faust, a lot of characters can do 10 or 10 minus 1, you know. I saw one video, on, wound attack. one video on YouTube of a dude doing 8k with a Omni sweep on Melby Farmer and killing him in phase 1. That'd be fun to route in. Yeah. <laughs> That's... Yeah. I mean, Melba with 200 defense, still 8,000. Yeah. Yeah. I take it. <laughs> yeah, Melba has a ton of physical defense. Yeah, Melba has super high stats. 200 physical and 250 magical defense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure most people's first party was Kongol and Albert. At least mine was. Back in the day. 17 years ago, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Maximum HP. Yup. My bad. Is he the only one though? I mean with Dragon Helmet and the HP plus ring from Stardust, I think more characters should be able to hit it. You get to like double your max HP or not? I never really cared. I don't know. Okay, that's nice. The swipe. And now just two Spartan Nets, so it's going to slide together. And that's it. You said earlier in this one that Spartan Nets has the fa uh, I mean that Spear of Frost has the fastest animation. It doesn't seem like Translite has like any delay to it It like immediately goes to the first thing. Yeah, Translite's the second I want to argue it's even faster than... No, it's uh, it's uh, 11 Where seconds. Where does it lose time? In the very beginning. It's like the, the ending? Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, it's just the beginning animation that's different on all the attack items. It only goes from like 10 seconds on a Spear Frost to 14 seconds on a Spinning Gale, so it's not that big of a difference. Yeah, Trans Lights and Sparknet are like 11 seconds, so they're not that much slower than a Spear Frost. That's another reason why we bring Trans Light to the moon. Because it's faster to go to Felts and get Trans Light instead of going to Fueno and get Burnouts. Because Burnouts are like 13 seconds each.
That's not the only reason, though. You need trans lights for Zekwell because of darkness. Dragon shield. Well, we're rich. Actually, I'm gonna put that on. Since you don't have a night shield for Rose, I'll put it on Rose. We don't need any extra money in this route at all. Like, we don't pick up anything. And we already got like an extra 500 gold. I forgot to put the jewel crown on Maru too. Shoot. And that's another repeat item. This time, speed down. That's like a debuff. Even more impactful, actually, than the buffs. Pretty well hidden behind that rock. There's like four of those repeat items. I mean, there's more of them, but like, you know, the stat-based ones. Power up, power down, speed up, speed down. It can be used once in a battle and then... ...respawns to be used for the next one. Yeah, there's ten repeat items in the game. Yeah, yeah, it's just mean, I just only focus on the one that you... Yeah, you know, <laughs> the good ones. Most, I mean. Now we're using the speed run. Well, Psy Bomb Axe is also a repeat item, but it's just like a damage bomb, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, Psy Bomb. There's five good ones. Five good ones on the rest is memes, yeah. <laughs> well, Magic Six Stone is pretty nice for a 100% run, or 99% run. Over the course Why? of 20 it's hours. Just, it's just weep enemies. Also. Yeah, minor enemies skipping their turns for three turns. Okay, what is that used for in 100%? Uh, against all the enemies, basically. <laughs> basically, Dart maxes out his additions really early. So you throw a Magic Six down with him and grind everyone else's additions out. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. How would you find all the Stardust? Well, after looking at the guide and doing all the runs, I would have every single Stardust position memorized. So for me, it's just muscle memory. But yeah. <laughs> Basically, need a guide or going around mashing everything. Thanks for good luck. Yeah, this is flashback again. That speed down might even be uh, missable, right? Or can you go back to the volcano? Might be that the way is blocked later, right? If you want to go back there. What's what's missable? Could be a missable. The speed down. No. You can come back. You can go back at any point? Yeah, you can come back here at any time. But yeah, then it's just the power up. Uh, Kadesa, you can't go back to Kadesa. Or can you? Can you go on the Wingy Town and tell them to teleport you back in that place? I don't I don't think so. Like later on, uh, just cool. go I back. think you can actually. Really? I'm pretty sure. Damn, I don't even know this game, man. <laughs> I know you can go back to Wingly Forest. I don't know if you can go back to the Kaz Kadesa. Maybe not. I never, I never missed it. It would actually <laughs> surprise me. It doesn't feel like. You could have done that, Kios. You can do it at any time. Come here, grab a mic, join us. I was going like Sunday night. I was in uh, Black Death Dooms. Uh, Death. Oh my God, he he can never hear that I said that. Black Death Dooms stream. 
<laughs> and he was like, hey, I'm going to run on Wednesday. Do you want to uh, do commentary? He was like, why not? Come on. He said, you guys all said no. Right? <laughs> come on, Kios. Come here. Grab the mic. Do it. Ah, the people where you work at, they will, they will be fine with that. You're just gonna randomly talk about dragoons and stuff. Just tell them that you're crazy. They probably think that anyway, so... It's all fine. <laughs> I like that. That's bold, Kios. That's bold. Alright, so we actually just defeated the Divine Dragon. And Lloyd just stole the Divine Dragoon Spirit and left with it. So we kind of got scammed here. And we're still on the pursuit to follow Lloyd. And he's also our next enemy. And yeah, what we talked about earlier, so down and down left movements just give a lot more danger increments, so we have to be really careful here, use a lot of charm potions on the way back. You can see while well, he's doing down left how fast the arrow turns red. I think that last one works with just a menu buffer and not the charm potion, but better safe than sorry here. Yeah, I have tons of extra ones and it's a marathon, so. Yeah. Just use it. <laughs> yeah, but technically I shouldn't even need a menu buffer there or use a charm potion, but I had really bad movement. This is like a completely random scene, but I love it. If it's the one that I'm thinking of that it is. There are a few scenes in this weird screen. Yeah, it is, I think. This should be the one where Lloyd blows up one of the salty, annoying brothers. I just like it because it's such a weird way of defeating someone. Now he's trying to get his revenge on humans here. Another wing lead. Yeah, Lloyd but like stops the way him. that Lloyd, it's just so funny how he how he destroys. No, he so stabs weird. him, and then we got his self destruct. So he's like Lloyd putting stabs the sword him. in, and then he just detonates. Like, whoo! yeah, he says, <laughs> I'm, but I'm taking <laughs> you with me, and self destructs. So that was actually the dude that attacked. All oh, did. I never understood that. Yeah, all Lloyd did I was stab felt him. it was like he's like an air balloon and. Lloyd sticks the needle in and it's just like, pew! <laughs> yeah, he's self destructed. It's the young tilted guy. Kind of like Kamari in uh, Final Fantasy 10. Mario can actually crit that. He can crit at blowing up himself. I kind of find that funny. Do you even need to use a overdrive at that point?
What do you mean? Oh shoot, one second. <laughs> like self-destruct is an overdrive. Uh, I mean the... Uh, do you the know they have 10 run a little bit? The Aeon. Well, you use overdrive only in like one uh, in one fight, like in this sin spawn fight. You, yeah, you self struck with Himari. And oh, you mean if he crits, if you still need Vela for? Yeah. You still do actually, so it's kind of not that great. But you only need one instead of two overdrives. That's not that bad. Yeah, it's one less energy blast if he crits. Anyway, Lloyd saves Wink again. If you remember, he saved uh, Wink in the beginning of this too, from the bandits. Now he saved her again from the Wingly. Yeah, Sacred Sister Wink. Good name. <laughs> Wink. They all have kind of like. Except Miranda. Overextended names. Miranda, Luann. I mean, when. It, okay, so. <laughs> what was the other one? <laughs> when a name consists of like five or six words, there's already something wrong, right? The Legend of Wink. Wink to the past. Seti, that's it. Miranda is like kind of crazy anyway. She punches like a random guard for not stopping Lloyd when everyone knows Lloyd is so OP. And that guy's like a random knight. Like what does she even expect? Uh, Miranda's kind of like Hatchel. She just likes punching things. Yeah, it's like her, uh, the way she expresses herself. Couple Seven more hours. How do you feel, BDD? Do you start feeling the time in your bones? No, I'm waking up now. Oh, I was okay. about to fall asleep. Because I, I like, I, you know, I was taking a little of a break, like at the start of this too. But you have to go all the way. <laughs> yep, going all the way. Yay. More gameplay. Yeah, only two bosses left in this disc. <laughs> then we get to the real mini game hell in disc four. Oh yes, we do. Which one do you consider to be more hell? Xenobatos or the desert? Xenobatos. Desert's free. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, desert is free, but it's still just annoying. I don't like this, this stuff that drags you in. I just don't like it principally. Well, that's why you gotta avoid it. <laughs> Make you feel uneasy. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not hard to do, go around it. I have to use an extra charm potion there because I didn't move at the very beginning. Shoot. 
and we don't have an extra healing fog anymore. Hope we didn't need that. Ah, uh, it's fine. It's yeah, we'll just have to play Lloyd. You need safe. that stuff with. You need that stuff with Ungar out. You don't need that stuff with Miranda, man. It's really just in case we miss our final bow shot on Lloyd. But we can use the extra translite we have. Bit slower, but... What do you mean I miss? Huh? What do you mean by miss on Lloyd? Uh, I thought only the physicals can miss on Lloyd. Yeah. And the final hit's a bow hit, because the way the fight works. Ah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I always, uh, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. I mean, if you have a translite, it's probably just almost the same to just use an uncharged item for a guaranteed hit. But yeah. yeah, it's like five seconds slower. You can but... be fine with four. Yeah. But it's free. Old potential. <laughs> Okay, so they, they would theoretically be allowed to talk about this boss and how he functions if this run was like three years ago. But right now it's just another example of Wonder Woman doing her thing and throwing items and putting lights out quickly. Only problem is really just when the enemy decides to not kill Darden Albert. Because we obviously still need to pursue the same strat, keep up. Getting Soul XP on Miranda. Wow. Nice target, bruh. Yeah, probably a fight where we have to lose a little bit, waiting for the enemy to decide to hit us. Everyone's still alive. Hopefully that's a Fatal Blizzard. Nah, it's single target. He has also Fatal Blizzard, which is the AoE and would hit both. Like everyone. So he actually has counter so Now we gotta wait out. Yep. So now he's gonna counter. Um, what? Hmm. Now he's gonna counter on Dark. Worth attacking. Or not. <laughs> yeah, fight going pretty bad. That's like the RNG in the run. Yes. All the time. You always need to get lucky that the enemy takes care of your party members. Unfortunately not possible to attack yourself in this game. Yeah, I wish we could attack ourselves. Oh no. Are we getting one of sort of those things? Sometimes in the emulator when you test the fight, it just for 10 minutes you text like only one guy. <laughs> I hope we're not running into that kind of thing. Right? I'm confused. There it is. Just Fatal Blizzard, bro. Fatal Blizzard. Oh, this works too. Very well. Yeah, that was a little unfortunate. Yep, that was slow. Can happen in some places in the run. But it's definitely worth it. Every yeah. time. As soon as you stop doing this and be like, hey, I just want to kill him now, you mess up everything. She is lower level, so every single fight you lose time because she's low level. And it becomes more annoying to get rid of the other party members. Also, the passive members that you need later on the moon get less passive XP. Like, everything gets destroyed. You have to keep this straight. Always. If it takes time, you have to just... Yeah, you have to accept the time loss, and but always keep on the same route or everything is messed up. Congo time. The best character, Kappa. <laughs> 
So we mentioned earlier the reason why we put on Congo here is just because we want someone to help with the buffs slash debuffs. And we could use people, you know, that survive, and we could use people that die easily. Congo just fits right in the middle. Because Congo will survive the first opener dome that Lloyd likes to use, which is a powerful attack. So he can always throw an item. But when you defeat it, Lloyd, Lloyd does that move again. Guaranteed. And the second time he does it, will definitely kill Congo. So Congo will not be in the way with his high HP. But his high HP will help that he's definitely getting a turn. So that we can use him to help with the buff slash debuff throwing. Because if you don't have someone like that, and Lloyd opens with his magic and you don't get a turn, Miranda has to do everything alone. You know, speed down, power up, she has to do everything by herself, and then you lose time, obviously. So close. <laughs> you said I could join. Here I am. Good hey! Chaos! Chaos! What's up, dude? Hello! What's up, man? Yeah, I just had to get permission. I mean, I... Oh. Right, right. Bigger party. I like it. Now you guys got little names. Yay. Little tiny <laughs> names. It's all good. All right. So something we hinted at but didn't quite explain perfectly. So, Lloyd, this fight does not end when you kill him. Okay, so when you reduce this guy's health to zero, he still is alive. And he will just die from any hit. Doesn't matter what it is. He just The game just waits for another attack on him so that he finally dies, right? And um, you, you get an indicator, though, because he has like a very courageous characteristic attack that we're going to see very soon. He uses this one at the start. It's like a super big magic attack. And when he reduces health to zero, he does, uses it a second time. This move. This exact thing that you see right now. He does this move again when he's dead. And after he does that, you know, okay, he has zero HP now. I just need to touch him. And then the fight is over. So we're going to use spark nets, the debuffs, and then spark nets to get his HP down. And then we just touch him with the bow. And that's it. I wasn't Welcome paying attention. Back. That's not good. <laughs> Rut row. Oh no. Should be fine. Freaking turbo yeah, man. Thankfully, thankfully Lloyd, uh, only a, a few things can go wrong, but nothing too tremendously awful. It's just a question of some of the longer attacks just losing time. The problem is I use my extra healing item already. Alright, good. And I wasted a power-up turn.
Uh, the other one's about the same without turbo. If you can mash. We get a cheeky pursuit. Pursuit! For you guys. Sweet, and that killed him. Nice. So we don't need an extra attack item. I was worried there. <laughs> yeah, good luck on that end. So now he's dead. He has zero HP left. So any damage will kill him now. I, I always enjoyed the difficulty of this fight, like in the story, but like the ending, like the afterwards when you have the discussion with Lloyd, he's just kind of like gives you the guy brush three wood thing of like, oh, here's all these items. get is if Dart was aiming for Lloyd here. Okay, if Dart is aiming for Lloyd, why does this not cut Wink in half? Does she push him back? Because he reacts in the last moment. He pushes him a little bit, yeah, and also I think Yeah, he, she pushes him. That's that's he clearly pushed him. Dart doesn't react at all. Dart is a goof. He just co completely sliced. <laughs> she pushed him, yeah. Like, seriously, you would expect that Dart just, like, breaks a little bit when he sees that it's her suddenly in the middle, but he just completely executes his punch. He doesn't care, man. And <laughs> He's just like, let's go. Blinded by revenge. Mm -hmm. You can't stop Volcano! Boom! This punch is it, man. By the way, he's getting another one of those. There's more where that came from. Dart just leaves his sword. Eh, we don't need that anymore. I mean, it doesn't deal any damage anyway. <laughs> he doesn't really need it. I wonder what a double slash... We have only double slash equipped still. I wonder what a double slash at this point will deal with him. With the current enemies, him still being level 4. I'm probably what like 14. One, two, three. 14 or so. 17. Yeah, something around. Something not so great. I think less, actually. He's still the same level as against Sandora Elite, or not? And against Sandora Elite, he doesn't hit that. 
he hits 10 against Centaur Elite with double slash. And Centaur Elite has only 80 defense. No, he's level 3 then. He's like level 6 now. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know. Yeah, some, yeah, right, some of those like weep, weep fights, you know, where you have multiple guards. It's leveling up a little bit, right? I don't think monsters necessarily have more defense right now. Yeah, that's true. Like random enemies, like with those creative names like Red or Mammoth <laughs> or Mantis or just really the most obvious thing that whatever it's supposed to be. Actually, I think we don't need more shopping in this three right now. I think we have everything already stocked up. Yeah, we're shopping until uh, Wingly City. Being a Discord. We're gonna shop. Actually, we're going to buy. Go shopping shoes in Wingly City. Yep. Lots of new shoes for everyone. Yeah, Gotta look pretty. People. And we'll hold on to another one. Kind of like the cape earlier. Since Maru is not in the party, can't put him on her. In the menu. <laughs> Yeah, they're magical greaves, not technically shoes. I need a charm potion here. Because I messed up. He's too early though. Way too early. Well, grief and shoes are the same part in this game. You have, for example, banded shoes. There's a lot of items called something shoes, dancers. Yeah, and dancer yeah. shoes, bandage shoes, leather shoes. Magical grease goes on the foot part. And yeah, it's like the only place where we just buy stuff for everyone because it just increases speed. And it's just useful always. On the moon, like everyone has like a single fight, unique fight for them where they fight alone. And we get another punch here. Come on, Dart. Don't keep me waiting. <laughs> Thank you, you got me to laugh, my bento. I can't tell you why. Probably didn't need that charm potion, whatever. Hey, you didn't even go with snowboarding. Hey, we could win snowboarding. Wonderful dancer. Sh Dancer ring, I mean. That's not worth it because we need the magic ring even more. Yeah, magical ring's way better. Yeah. Especially because the power up and power down stuff. I 
and just with like how fast, how few attacks we need to kill enemies. I feel like even if we could grab Dancer Ring on the way, I think we would still favor Magic Ring. Because Miranda already has 85 speed. Relatively speaking, the speed increment wouldn't be all that much, but the damage difference would make a difference with how many turns we need to kill stuff. I'm gonna sleep well after this run. <laughs> it's 7 a.m. here. We have 4 p.m. for me too, like Central Europe. We have 4 p.m. Actually, the time was kind of comfortable for me. We started at 8.40 a.m., so basically when I woke up, Normal time for me to wake up. This place is kind of a bait, I found always, because it looks like there's a super big boss battle upcoming and there's just nothing. The disc just ends and there's nothing. Getting debated here. What do you mean there's a mega plot dump? All the twists, all the twists. It's like M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan over oh, here. Oh yeah. <laughs> What does Jafar do to Shana here? And why does he do it? <laughs> Kaiser Diaz. Someone just said that Emperor Diaz robe and stuff looks like Jafar and make me really laugh because it kind of fits. And then Lloyd, Lloyd is somewhat, he kind of loses, uh, I don't know, he loses what he had in this one. In this one he was superior, right? No one could touch him. And now he just gets wrecked by everyone. Dart destroys him. Emperor Diaz destroys him. Disc 4 gets destroyed again by Melbu Frama. Uh, he becomes sort of a noob at the end. It's been a while. Lloyd forget everything. He, Lloyd forgot that he can fight and that he can be better. Rose. Dart. Father? It's Sean Penn. <gasps> oh, 
Oh, it cannot be! Whoops! <laughs> So, uh, yeah, about, uh, visuals. <laughs> We're not gonna get any. <laughs> uh... <laughs> but, did the game just crash? No, it's, it's, it's going. Classic PS2 soft lock? No, it's going. It's just you can't see it. <laughs> we'll okay. get to the end of the disc in a few minutes here. <laughs> huh. Well, I was hoping this wouldn't happen. Nah, it, it's going. It's going. You just can't see it. You'll, you'll hear the music change in a minute here. So, uh, Zeke... <laughs> Zeke is explaining... <laughs> nah, it, it'll load. Everything right now. <laughs> yeah, he's explaining everything. <laughs> There's some stuff that's happening right now. See, the music's changing. Yeah, it's just, it's loading, it's just not showing it. This is what happens when you leave Turbo on. After cutscenes and battles. You, you guys, you guys catch all this plot here? <laughs> so Ziggy is explaining the uh, Will is uh, Soa here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Does this go back to normal at some point? Yeah, at the end of the disc. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, everything's loading, it's just not showing it. <laughs> Long yeah, Rose was Black Monster. Emperor Diaz is kinda oh no, we don't know that yet, right? He's like no, he right just, now acting to be Zeke. No, he just he just told us that Emperor Diaz is now Zeke. Dart's father, which is yeah. Rose's lover from the yeah. Dragon Campaign, and Rose is the dragoon, the black dragon from the Dragon Campaign, and also the black monster, and also Shauna is the moon child. And that Shauna is the uh, moon child. <laughs> and always that crazy music in it. <laughs> yeah. Which is so effective. <laughs> this is a zoomed in shot of the black monster. <laughs> Right, and then, uh, this is a zoomed in shot of Rose that's a uh, Demon's Gate attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I wanted to drop one in that direction. <laughs> Blindfold chat run, All right. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so what is that kind of thing even I didn't even know about that like I know that the game has some problems with the disc sometimes but I didn't know that sometimes it just goes black but yeah, still plays and just I've, the picture doesn't work what is that thing I've only had the problem when I was mashing after battle or after a cutscene that's really interesting <laughs> yeah. We we're just censoring the spoiled content there. So now no one's sm no one's spoiled anymore. <laughs> we should all, however mention at this point that Legend of Dragoon likes to just really soft lock when you do it on PS2 and just go you know run over but at, at least is, this wasn't an example of it this was just some sort of a black screen yeah we're lucky that maybe that we was... should save again at some point yeah we were lucky that the <laughs> that that was the only one because that can happen in other places and it's way yeah. harder to deal with if you have to actually do other things than just mash dialogue
Alright, time for some uh, fun here. Yeah. Just gotta not get trolled, not run to the enemies, not run into the void and get dragged into the sand. And we need to pick up one item here. So there's another of those repeat items we talked about here. There's the power up, uh, sorry, the power down. So the opposite of the power up, pretty much in the debuff version that you can throw on the enemy. Halves the strength, halves the defense. And yeah, we get, need to pick up that and then other than that, just continue from here. I mean, it doesn't quite have the defense. It's not perfectly accurate. It does basically the same that as the power up does, and it adds up to a two times multiplier when you stack power up and power down. What it does have is the damage that they deal themselves. That's the chest. Power down. Shh. Quite a detour, Oops. but absolutely worth it. More than worth it. Oh, well, that's not a big deal. Yeah, not a big deal. We fell down the sand. Just, yeah. yeah well, if I do that later, it'll be a big deal. Seconds, if anything. Yeah. Right here, it's like barely nothing. He would have needed to go through two screens anyway. It's maybe it's twenty seconds. I don't know. Maybe not even, but it's not the big deal. <laughs> now they're cool with the Rose being a black monster because she had to do it. Otherwise, the world would have ended 10,000 years ago. And we're done. Easy game. Back to plot. Plotting and shopping shoes. Yep.
I'm not even the com I'm not even the streamer. I'm just the commentator that has no clue what's going on. If I talk to you, that's you. You you can't be proud of that at all. <laughs> Alright, more plot dump. Plot dump, yeah. This time, hopefully, no black screen. Why can't aim like? <laughs> Why isn't everything like this one in this game? This one flies by so fast, and then like the rest is so much text, 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 and like one boss in the middle and text, text, text. <laughs> but yeah, this is theoretically. Oh my god. I'm, I'm, I'm getting so paranoid now over loading screens. Every, every time it's like a little black on my side, I'm like, oh no, we did it again. <laughs> yeah, plot wise, this place is really important, actually. You learn like everything about the story, pretty much, that is really important. And that explains all the questions. About like the moon artifacts, seeing and Rose, the moon that never sets, and things like that. You really learn stuff here. If you read it. No need to read, just... Just mash. Just mash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you read, what we won't. It's important to choose the right option here. Otherwise, you get some repeat text. I need her to explain everything. Now that we're on explaining stuff, explain me why there are only 108 fruits on that tree. Because 108 is a pretty famous holy number. No, I mean, like, do they only count really highly developed species on the tree? Like, this world has normal weed. It has, like, insects and butterflies and everything. Now, who knows what like, they... Yeah, there are millions of species. Like, what the hell is 108 species? You know, it, that's not all that much, you know? It doesn't quite work. Yeah, only the cool species. Yeah, only the cool species. Okay, and the other one, the bad ones, the normal ones, normal animals, where do they come from? They come from the store. <laughs> only people who watch anime with subtitles can read this. It's true, I can read it. Maybe the writers didn't think too hard. Let's go with that. Honestly, I like Red's answer the most because that's most obviously the correct one. Yep. It reminds you of German lessons, or basically in your language would be just like the language lessons, literature or whatever in school. You're reading like a really pointless text and then you had to do the job for the guy who wrote the pointless text and you had to interpret all the smart stuff into that text, you know? <laughs> and actually my answer was always like, what do you think, why did he write it in that way? And my answer was like, because he's stupid, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's all he can do, you know? Yeah, like that's, that's my answer to, the, to that. He didn't think when he wrote it, you know? Why do I have to do the job now for him and tell what's so smart about it? What if it isn't that smart, you know? <laughs> you have a two speedrunner. Who runs that game, man?
Yeah, I ran that game until I got sick of it. Same as in every other game. Now I'm running this game till I get sick of it. How are you not get sick of this game in all honesty? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Isn't speedrunning the fastest way to hate a game? Yep. If this was my Discord, I would pin this message to the channel, you know. Isn't speedrunning the fastest way to hate the game? <laughs> That's the pinned message for me. Yeah, I got like 800 hours on my split timer. <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of a... How am I not burnt out yet? So I was, I was wondering, uh, is this like the party place in the Wingley Town? Like with the lights and stuff? Is this like the pub or... Yeah, it looks like something it. Something like that. It's like, okay. So this was like a Miranda Heschel date here, that we crashed. One thousand five hundred hour mark is generally where I start to burn out. To be honest, okay, Kios, I burn out after the first seven hours of actually running a game. <laughs> I love routing and researching, but I hate the actual running. I hate it so much. It's so annoying. Depends on the game. For me, the I run, love the routing and the research. The, the science, that's the good part. And how, how often you play the game, too. If you do it every day... It depends. Yeah. It's going to burn out way faster. It depends also on like who else is running because when I route a lot in the game and I see it helps and then someone does a really good time, it feels satisfying too. So I don't have to do it myself. But if no one does a good time, then I feel like I should maybe run at some point. But still I never do. I should run FF7 at some point, really. It's so overdue. But I just... I can't get motivated right now. Okay, so we just... What we talked about. We just bought the Magical Griefs. Important item. Because it's just like a... It doesn't really consume a slot because we have something completely useless in all of like the foot slots. And it increased the speed by 10. So everyone is now faster that we bought this stuff. And that's really useful. Because later in the game, every character has their showtime. There is a fight, a solo fight, for every single character, especially, uh, I mean, except for Dart and Rose, they fight together. But other than that, everyone has like a solo fight where they have to, you know, do stuff. And those solo fights, it's important that we have that extra speed. And also in Melbu Frama, it's important for the characters that are there that we have the extra speed there too. For Miranda, she already has the dancer sh uh, shoes, which give her the extra speed, which is even better, which is plus 20. But for Hashel, which is the other damage dealer, we don't have something like that. So it's really, since Mulberry Frama is such a big fight with such a big time swing, it's very important that Hashel has that extra speed there. So that magical grease dropping there is really important and does a lot of time save, a lot of good. They also give uh, five magical evasions. Yeah. Which actually helps. Especially for Hatchel. Yeah, misses on Melbu Frama on... I guess also on Melbu, right? Use a lot yep. of magic, like when Miranda misses misses something, or like when magic misses on Miranda, it's probably also pretty good, right? Oh, yeah. Although, oh, she has a dance, never mind me. It's just... Yeah. No, she has natural magical evasion, though. 
Yeah, he also needs a thread. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few bad magical uh, sound effects in the game. Turn into our most favorite place, though, the Barrens. More backtracking. We haven't been there in so long. Find a skip to go through that door behind the stone in this too, and play disc four. <laughs> Do it. Where did Kios go anyway? I don't know. Where do you go? Work? Come on. Who needs to work? Yeah, you can play 11 hours of your day the same video game. That's way more important. Exactly. Just don't pay the bills. <laughs> that's that's a secret. You have to play some Grand Theft Auto. You learn this. You learn the strats, man. Well, water is only important if relations between you and people you interact with cannot be done over a video or a microphone. The final trip to Barrens. Yes, the final backtracking. But they were really proud of their disc 2 design. They sent us to this place like six times actually. You know, I mean those winglies have super strong warp magic, right? Why don't they just warp us right into the castle? Uh, we need the exercise. Some... Someone just try to make it a little longer. Eagles do fly to Mordor. Just after the evil there is gone, because then it's just a fucking place. Now really, the evil, the evil stuff never bothered me because it makes sense, you know. After they destroyed the ring, Mordor is just a 
it's just a free place. It's just a meadow, you know. So it makes sense perfectly. The eagles only go there after everything is already solved. You know, there exists such a thing as archers and catapults and a tower with a Sauron eye. You can't just fly there. But when all of that stuff is gone, easy. So easy. Doors are open. Yeah, that's the skip we need. We need to get to those doors and just to that. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing right now. Like that's what we need this thing here. <laughs> First time we go to this too, we have to pass right through here. And technically, you can if you can hack dart through the wall. <laughs> Unfortunately, the game is like so disc based. I think on this two, does this does that door even exist on this two? I don't think so. I think it's just a wall. Yeah, it's like it's a different place. Yeah, it just like okay. So we're visit visiting uh, Hashel's home place, which has been hinted at several Grandpa times. Grandpa Hashel, that village in the in the ocean. And from here, I feel that like, the game goes a little bit FF8 style. Like, as how FF8 is one made a lot of sense, and then this 2, 3, and 4 were becoming super goofy. The game becomes super goofy from here. Suddenly, everything is weird, mean creatures, robots, and I don't know. It's like some Japanese crazy writer took over here and turned it into some crazy anime plot. Like, remember this one was like a medieval war plot, you know? And now everything is kind of weird. Because you know what I mean. This one has some sort of a appeal to, like, reality. A small one. Much like FF8 Disc 1 has. And then it becomes goofy. Like, Legend of Dragoon Disc 1 does not hint at all, like, this magical city Achilles with those robots and stuff. It, it doesn't hint at all that it becomes like this. It really doesn't hint at all like this. Yeah, this is right before the Undersea Lab. We go right to the undersea lab. The undersea lab is for me the point where the game really becomes super goofy. And feels weird. With like how this one was. With the war between, you know, two countries and or, you know, armies was so different. Sea Lab 2021, anyone? By the way, hey Matsuki, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Nice to see you, my friend. Thank you. 
Oh, wait, it's not a C lab, it's a stick. And we also do some Moses strats here, too. Because it's kind of cool, you know? Matsuki, why didn't you play this game? This game is really awesome. It's really a great game. And the speedrun is super cool too. If there's a quit option, you choose the quit option. No means no, is what you wanted to say with that, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't need any more text. Just quit. Yeah, I'm also starting... I feel like a little bit delirious at the moment. Eight hours of this dialogue, but I'm still kind of alive. I try to. Yeah, I'm getting pretty tired. <laughs> uh, it's not fine. We got two more hours to yeah. go. Oh my god. Someone in chat just sold this game. This place actually looks like Destiny Islands with Kingdom Hearts 2. Which is the goofiest part of everything. Kios, you have to take over. Do something. I'm just talking random stuff right now. Every, everyone's wondering if I'm crazy. You have to, you have to help me out here. I don't think anyone's <laughs> wondering. <laughs> I'm just dropping words so someone says something for 11 hours. You're looking at it. <laughs> Your folks are insane. By the way, I'm going to give some expert commentary now on the upcoming boss fight. Something that you haven't heard at all yet. So, the last eight hours was not only the beginning, right? So now we just talk, really. So the next boss fight is going to be Miranda using magic <laughs> while we wait for the boss to kill the other two party members. No which way. Which is a completely new thing. And, and an interesting new strat that you haven't seen at all in this run yet. It's like a new strat that we apply here. And yeah, it's crazy. It's a new thing. There's no way we use magic. Here's when the run start. Go ahead. Yo, Kios, hello. I I have lost runs to Kraken refusing to kill my other party members before. Yeah, you have to stick to the plan, man. You can't get greedy. You have to wait out. I almost just want to say screw it and bring Hatchel in instead of Albert and just wait for Dark to die instead. But then we're still waiting for Dart to die, so it doesn't really matter. Are there any particular advantages to that? Uh, Just besides right. higher Hatchel level, maybe, for final, final uh, no, Hatchel, disc? Hatchel have the same experience. It's Miranda just losing experience. Yeah. It's the same experience. Like, passive members still get half health, like half XP. So when Hatch is in the party, it's half XP when he's passive, and Miranda solos is also half XP. Yeah, and everyone I would mainly gets... just see that over if you play the chances over multiple turns, I would say the chance actually even uh, get worse that you get so that you get what you want. 
because when you have multiple turns and one party member can die, you play 50-50. But if you like play to, you know, have one of three killed, you honestly wait for one and three chance to happen. You're gonna like the Imago strats we got now. That fight we do bring Hatchel in. And Dark can survive too. The encounter rate in this area is so wonky too. I'm not sure what it is, but certain screens you just advance so quickly on the caution meter. It seems to be the direction mostly. Yeah, it's down and like left. The same screen that we just advanced through, uh, when you go forward, like we just did, it was mostly an up upright movement. It goes slow, but when you go backwards, it's down, down, left, and some reason down, left is just increasing like mad. You do get Kongol Spirit for free too, just to get it late. You get Kongol Spirit when you defeat his brother in the moon thing. Indora. Opt. Exactly. With the funny armor. I think you get his axe as well from that fight. Yep. Yes, the best weapon in, in for Kongo. Yep. Indora's axe, 88 attack. The only funny thing about it is you do get it from the scammer. Like the scammer who tries to sell you the bottle for like 1000 gold. It's funny that he's had actually asked for the spirit. Alright, time for the dialogue option hill. You don't mess up, man. <laughs> I, legitimately, I still always save at this point. It's one of those things like I I I didn't save once and messed it up, and I was like, you know what? I get it's it's worth taking the extra couple of seconds to save. I mean, I'll you save. just have to hold, press, and hold down, and wait until you can confirm that it's down, and then press, and that's it. It's actually you just have to not mash and die you have to pay okay, attention so what we're talking about right now guys yeah you explain it so we get the strongest attack item in the game from this mini game mini game courage test here it's a repeatable item that you use in every single fight and attacks every enemy so we definitely need to Choose every single dialogue option correctly. Otherwise, we don't have the strongest item. And it's basically a rip run because we need it. So every character. I it's also non elemental damage, if I recall. So it pretty much works on everything. It's not. It's not. No, 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 no. It's not non elemental. It has, it has an element to it. It has the divine element. It can yeah. get buffed by Dart's Divine Dragoon. Yeah, case. that's non elemental. So it has an element. They're both element, non elemental. The divine element. Is non well, non-elemental means it can't get buffed. There exists non-elemental too in this game. No, it's non-elemental. But they're like three... What they call it, I guess. No. Because when you use Divine Dragoon phase, the special phase, Divine Dragoon Cannon, Divine Dragoon Ball, and Psych Bomb Axe get buffed. But Attack Ball, which is like... Or, no, not Attack What is the name of that non-elemental attack item? There is a non-elemental one. It doesn't get buffed. Uh, no, there isn't. Psychedelic bomb is the non-elemental, and it does get buffed. Yeah, just a name for the element. All 
All right, second option. <laughs> Yeah, you're right, you're right, actually. You're right, you're right, you're right. I've actually messed this up enough <laughs> that I have the animations memorized. <laughs> the timing and the animations memorized, so I'd never mess it up. Unless, of course, I don't pay attention. Well, there is Detonate Rock. That's the thing I was thinking of. That's the super weak item you have in this one, which is non elemental. And that doesn't get buffed by the special phase, so there is a difference between not being fire, ice, thunder, etc. And between like the Psych Pump X and the Divine Attacks. Detonate Rock is the item that makes the difference. What's the item? Detonate Rock. Is that not elemental? I thought that was physical. Yeah. That's like a super, super bad item you can get in this one. It deals almost no damage. But it doesn't, like, profit from uh, divine stuff. Yeah, because I think it's a physical attack, not non-elemental. Uh, physical is not really an element, it's like a type of damage. Yeah, that's that's correct. So, like, does that like work over the physical defense of enemies? I think so. Rather than the magical defense. Ah, okay. Yeah, then that explains it. Well, then Dart's Divine Dragoon is the non-elemental buffing phase. Yeah. Which is also funny. <laughs> But I prefer Divine, it sounds cooler. Yeah, there's eight elements. Six that oppose each other. And then two non-opposing elements. Thunder and non-elemental. Plus physical damage. Alright, last second option here. Yeah. So in order to get like the super overpowered Psypo Max, always need to check the correct option. It's second option for every game except for the one with Dart. Dart needs to be the first one. The Psypo has not only just super high damage, I mean, it's not just a repeat item that hits everyone, it's also increased damage. So normal items 1.5 times damage, and Psypo Max has 4 times damage. So given that we already deal super overpowered magic damage all the time with Miranda. Makes it even more ridiculous with the Psy Bomb Axe. To the point where bosses really just get destroyed by the Psy Bomb Axe alone. Almost. Like, we could theoretically destroy the Super Virage at the end in this 4 with the Psy Bomb Axe. It's just the 9999 damage limit that stops us from doing so. Of course, Rose doesn't have an option because she already has enough courage to... I don't know, I can't think of any. <laughs> she has enough courage not to need to answer Rose these. is always too cool for everything. Yep. No tournament of power, no nothing. She never plays along. If she would play along, the Psy Bomb Axe would deal more damage. Give it the old 4.5 boost. 
and no damage limit. Give me the 20k on super virant. Oh man, no damage limit would be pretty cool. Although I think that's the only boss that would actually help. Yeah, will be only for Super Pirate. Unless you increase the damage more, then it could be helpful for one Seek 2 to destroy his 12,000. Now, final boss has super high magic defense. On final boss, you don't deal that much damage. He has 250 magic defense. Most enemies that we fight have like 100 to 200. Do you know by how what Psypump X reaches on Melboframa with power up and power down like 6-5 or something? It's 6k. Would be my estimate. Yeah, 6,000, yeah. Is what I expected around there. So, this is one of those boss fights that have, in my opinion, one of the biggest RNG swings in like everything. So, he can idle basically four minutes and just don't do anything. And then obviously you have also so much RNG in the targets. It can be a so fast fight, it can be a fight where you kill him in three items, he just kills, start and all right, easy peasy. But it can go in very many different ways. He can just not attack Dardo Albert, he can just not do anything at all. He can also just do randomly super fast turns suddenly. That for some reason your buffs, debuffs doesn't, you know, just run so faster. This enemy makes no sense, bottom line. Just need to pray it works out. It's not like dangerous, but there's like there's such a big swing in how fast this fight can go. So let's hope for a fast one. Since the biggest thing in this fight is really most of the time that just they're not enough turns fast enough to defeat Darden Albert, we're also not gonna bother with the speed stuff. Just like power up, power down, and beat him. Hit him hard. Hope that he does. So you see, right? Power down, right? Power up on Miranda, and then just hope for the best. Very Get nice. The tax Very nice. nice. One guy down. He attacks Dart now with GG's. That's the best Kraken fight ever. Wow. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. 100% perfect RNG. This fight can lose minutes. This was absolutely perfect. Yep, can't go any better there. Dude, why does that never happen on like real runs, you know? <laughs> yeah.
you know, like PB attempt. Super crazy pace. No marathon, not to the boot. That was literally the best possible luck. Get after. This is actually pretty good though, still. Especially with this now. Like, also generally speaking, it's actually still pretty good pace. Still second place. Where the heck am I going? So I see you put on our final editions there. Gust of Wind Dance Hex Hammer. Yeah, 77k PS2. Fast disk speed saves like 40 minutes. And I'm pretty sure PS1s even crash even more. The game loves making us backtrack. Backtracking again. Out of the dungeon. After all our well... Well-placed strats failed. We tried to stop Zeke from destroying the signet, still destroyed it. So that's what we're doing, is trying to stop the God of Destruction from being born by stopping Zeke from destroying the signals that protect the moon. The moon is the flesh of the God of Destruction and Shauna is the soul of the uh, moon child. What am I doing? Pat must loot all the chests, yeah. Whee! It's slow picking up the chests, man. Rally ho! That uh, Chrono Trigger speedrun is pretty tough, man. Dart Rose Maru. Uh, we did use Rose for the most of this one. And we only use Rose for in one fight, and that's her fourth moon fight that she has to be soloing. No one uses Miranda? Well, no one doesn't know how to play the game. <laughs> Miranda is the strongest character in the game because of her magic attack, magic defense, and speed all put together. Alright, time for this minigame hell. 
Basically, we need to go around changing laws in a broken law city. <laughs> really great. Tons of fun, just what we want to do. The world's about to be destroyed, but we got to go around changing laws. It's great. Uh, Miranda and Sean have the same exact stats, so they're both exactly the same strength. However, the items that become available as soon as you get Miranda make her look way stronger. Because at the same time you get Miranda, you also get a power-up item, dancer shoes, and magical ring. Change the law about 32 inventory spots? Yeah. Uh, Maru has pretty strong magic, yeah, but it's not strong as uh, Miranda. By the end of the game, Miranda has like just... I want to say 30% more in magic attack than Maru. Alright, so I can't get caught at all here. Yeah, that's why we use Rose for this one until Rose starts getting, uh, you know, Shauna starts getting higher level. Then we use both Shauna and Rose for a second, and then we just use Shauna after that. Also because of the way experience works in this game, most of the experience comes from bosses and it uh, adds up to have one character get all the experience, or you can separate by having two characters die. Yeah, it's me to make through all these areas without getting caught to change the laws. <laughs> Yeah, so first we have to change a law to be able to get to the place we need to be. Then we need to change another law after that to get to another place we need to be. <laughs> we have to wait in line here. Perfect. Uh, the final boss we use Hatchel and Miranda. Because Hatchel has a lot of uh, physical damage without much preparation. So now it's faster not to get caught. You, you can get caught and go back to the beginning, but it's faster not to. So I'm gonna make it all the way back again without getting caught. Hopefully. I need to focus here. Every, every law we need to change, we need to go through these three areas, back and forth. We need a, a law to discuss the law of changing law. Yeah. yeah casually, Maru is a really good character. The speedrun, however, not useful anymore. We used to use Maru, but strats have changed. Yeah, there's a bunch of laws that you could change in the actual game, though. You only need to change two to make it through. And there's like several other laws. Some of them are useless. You could change that uh, you don't get caught by the guys and sent to jail. You can skip the law line. You can make it so you can't shop. You can't shop at the item. The item shop. Defaulted that you can. Wow. 
Yeah, it's pretty silly. Yeah, it's faster not not to get caught because there's a big old cutscene if you get caught. It's faster to run all the way back. I wonder how I finish this scene without knowing English. Boop, 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 boop. Probably the same as I finished the Japanese version without knowing Japanese. Maybe not, because I memorized the game in English before that. Yeah, you're right. Give, give Gong a break. Just need to change a lot to get rid of English, yep. Nobody reads the text while speedrunning. Well, I already read it plenty. <laughs> Casually. Growing up. Wait for your turn. Wait for your turn. The text in this game loads pretty slowly, so... You actually can read it. If you try hard enough, anyway. This boss fight this boss fight's pretty interesting. We used to do all this fancy stuff. Bring in Maru in. Now we just leave the party as it is. What's up? How's it going? So Zeke has taken over the the whole apparatus of the judgment system, basically. So the the great judge at this great court sitting in spirit place deems us guilty for trying to survive. <laughs> so we got to fight three wingly executioners. Basically, we're gonna kill them all in one hit, but before that, we need to kill Dart and Albert. The one on the right has a counterattack, so we'll be attacking with Dart and Albert until they're dead to counterattacks. Pretty straightforward. Same as every other fight, we gotta wait for Dart and Albert to die. <laughs> guilty, guilty, guilty. There's a few counterattacks in this fight. First, Miranda will just power up herself. I'd rather not then attack Miranda. Alright, sweet. We didn't have to counterattack at all. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, someone call Phoenix Wright to sort this mess out. Alright, so that's really good RNG. We didn't have to force any counterattacks at all. That kills all three. But the guy on the left has a death counterattack. Which is why we equipped the Talisman back on Miranda for this fight. 
so that she would survive this insta-kill move. Penalty for breaking the law is death. The penalty for disputing the penalty is also death. Yep. And again, we're too late to stop Zeke from destroying the Cygnus Sphere. So that's two out of three seals broken already. So there's only one left in the Death City. Which, that's after we have to change one more law to be able to get to the Death City. Not many additions. We'll have more additions later. In, uh... uh Albert's Moon Fight and the final boss. We'll see some Gust of Wind Dance and Hexhammers. Quite a lot of Hexhammers as well. Uh, the setup so there's a thing called experience funneling so if every character is dead except one the one character that survives gets a hundred percent of the experience instead of 33 percent of the experience of the battle and Miranda has the highest magic attack so if she has the all the experience she gets all the experience and she gets all the good gear that gives her more magic attack Yeah, so you mash to max and have uh, all the experience. Yeah, usually I can outmatch this turbo controller manually. The problem is I'm just used to not using, not not mashing anymore. I used to never not even own a turbo controller. Then I bought a turbo controller like a few months ago. Definitely makes the run more peaceful. I just have a lot of nostalgia for this game, so it's hard to set that aside and judge it. Barely. Faust in this run now.
There is categories that fight Faust, though. Uh, there's Faust percent, but it ends on Faust. You need to go straight to Faust and kill him and the run's over. And there's 99%, which does a lot of other things as well. And there's all bosses, which no one runs at except me. Or has ran except me. I know of, anyway. No, you don't really need legendary cast. Cascade. Whatever that peg is called. Alright, one more. We're almost to the point of no return as well. After this, fans finish changes law, we'll go buy go to our final attack item shop. Then we'll go to the final Wingly City. The point of no return. We're still a little ahead of uh, estimate here. A lot of bad things has happened though. <laughs> a lot of good things too, but I chucked away some of the good things. Got an 18% chance and saved a minute and a half and I ended up losing it because I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Favorite RPG? Uh, probably this one. Uh, yeah, probably this one. I don't know, it's up there with like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI. Alright, we're done changing laws, let's go. We didn't get caught. Chrono Cross? Yeah, I tried to speedrun that. Maybe I'll try again later. At some point. I probably just need to play it casually yeah. again. Welcome back, Chaos. How's it going, dude? Did we, uh, did anyone make the I am the law joke yet? Nope. We already passed it, too. Ooh. Moving too fast. Yeah. We didn't get caught a single time. Feels good. I also enjoy the design of Kaloon. Just, what a very strange way to just give you access back to the entire map. Yeah. Some flying mantity. <laughs> flying manta ray carpet. Oh shoot. Uh yeah, let's go back. Just to be safe. Final restock. Last shot, pretty much. Since they're they're pretty much you can't buy attack items after this if if I recall unless something has changed dramatically since I ran this last. Nope, this is the final attack item shop. This is it. Yep. I think we have, we have one shop left once we're on the moon, and that's pretty much it. Couple of couple of weapons and a couple of items. Yep. I am the law.
Alright, here we go. Almost to the point of no return. Get a cheeky little dungeon. Cheeky little boss. A touching reunion. And some pretty cool cutscenes. And if you're playing casually, some pretty interesting uh, optional boss fights as well. Oh yeah, the Divine Dragon Spirit is probably one of the hardest next to Faust. Uh, depending on the limiters you place on the run, like if you're doing a, some sort of challenge run, the Divine Dragon Spirit can actually be harder than Faust. I think he gains a lot of speed when he's almost dead or something, because he just takes a bunch of turns, like spamming Cannonball and Cannon Beam or whatever. Those attacks hurt too, there's really not much you can do about it. It reminds me of the run I accidentally ran into uh, one of these dragon, dragon spirits. <laughs> lost yep, like, I've done it. Lost like two minutes and I still almost PB'd. Insane pace. weird note about encounters here is after the the dragon spirit rooms the encounter rate refreshes down to zero so like if you came in here red after you leave here it'll be blue again kind of interesting the mini game. Hopefully I don't fall here. We'll go ahead and walk just in case. Too scared to run. So there's an invisible path you can tell by the red shoot. Mess that up. Had a menu buffer a few extra time because of that. Yeah, the movement in some of these rooms is actually also really kind of awkward. Alright, we didn't fall down. Sick. Alright, time for a touching reunion. This is the city of death, so... We can meet our boy again. Live it! He's possessed. Of course we gotta fight him.
It's our friend Lavitz. He's back. So this fight has two phases. One possessed Lavitz. Gotta just wait until he could talk to him. Then he turns around and lets you beat the thing on his back. Urgh. Nice. It's the talk. It's pretty sweet. Ooh, good start. Times like these, it would be wonderful if we could tack our own party. Just get Albert right out of the way there, super quick. Now this fight's not too bad because his second attack is guaranteed to be an AOE, and that's gonna one-shot both Lavitz and Dark no matter what. Yep. Some fights they are lucky that it's it just happens that way. I know some of like the disc three fights and specifically Caterpillar can get a little tricky to deal with. Uh, Caterpillar is actually really good now. The oh, yeah, that's right. You uh, you redid Caterpillar. Someone did. Yeah, lasagna. Putting Hatchel in, letting everyone survive. Yeah, we skip the speeds and let them kill off. Lavitz and Dark. He dies in two attacks, so... Yeah, for the main character of the game, he does a lot of sleeping through these fights, just to wake up right at the end. Now he sure enjoys taking everyone credit. Or Miranda's credit. So this kills Albert, and we can finish the fight in one turn. Then we get a nice touching reunion cutscene. Ooh, nice miss. Yeah, if it didn't miss, it would do like two damage anyway. Yeah, it's minimum. It's like a handful of damage. Very touching. Three-way bro fist. He's polygon. I I cry every time.
Dang it. Point of no return. Say yes. Let's get it. Here we go. Final dungeon time, boys. Yeah, it's a long one. Yeah, it's as a, well. really long. Over. Thankfully, for the most part, it is fairly straightforward. Um, I I haven't had a chance to look over the, the new new route since I dropped it, but I know one of the last sticking points was the Michael fight. Yeah, there's nothing you do about Michael, it's just RNG fest. Just gotta wait for him to do the thing. The final protection on the moon here. Hopefully nothing bad happens. I believe. For one of the very limited times Dart transforms out of combat. When he gets smacked down in a second. He's having a real Final Fantasy X moment. I hate you, Dad. You're gonna cry. You always cry. Yeah, the final dungeon basically consists of every single member of the party having to uh, face their past, I guess, and deal with the uh, you know, d deal with with their issues and traumas on an individual level. So there's a, definitely a, a, the last bit of like kind of plot dump and character development, as well as just a couple of really long and tedious fights. So I, I get a kick out of Kaloon's voice as well, if I remember. It's very goofy sounding.
Still going. Still going hard. I mean, to be fair, over a year ago, a good time was like just barely sub 12 hours. I think Palmer was, was cracking it down into the low, like, low 11s, 11 half, I think. Yeah, that run's been so optimizing and made, made consistent. I would say the only inconsistent thing now is the crashes, potential crashes and loading stuff. That's the big thing, was just making this run consistent because it's just, it's such an investment. You know, you could lose a run seven, eight hours in, you pretty much only get one shot at this game, really, per, per 24 hour sleep-wake cycle. I've been resetting it, Virage, several times. I've had it, uh, Virage 1 or Virage 2? Virage 1. Best dialogue op uh, best dialogue in the game. What a stream! Uh, you have a trying to push him too late to get encounter? Yep. All the time. Cannonball! Yep. Ah, free armor. Yeah, the armor. Sometimes I really do. They're laying on the ground for some reason. We'll go ahead and save. Always worth it in case things go wrong. Yeah, on a marathon. <laughs> oh, the fight should be free at this point. Never know. I'm more scared of the Never game. Never know. More scared of the game freezing. <laughs> than the fight going wrong. <laughs> I didn't need that last one. <laughs> uh, that's called menu buffering. Basically after menus, after cutscenes, and at the beginning of screens, the game doesn't register where Dart is, so you can have some free movement for a second without any Encountered. 
threat increase. It's slow, but effective, especially if you need to hold on to an extra charm potion or you make a small movement mistake that's correctable. I messed up my menu. I've got to switch Hatchel in. Uh-oh. Good thing I saved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Well, hopefully, it, hopefully it just goes easily and correctly. Now, why am I defending? I would have killed him too. You okay, bud? Eh, he's getting a little tired here. I mean, worst case, we can blame anything that goes wrong on Mies because he's not here. Yo, yo. Welcome back, buddy. Welcome. For myself. I welcome myself. I'm back. In time, I gotta bounce in about 10 minutes for another work meeting. Oh, that's good. By the way, uh, I have some machine running here. Is that possible to hear it over the mic? Nope. Okay, perfect. Then I'm just gonna. Like, I had to put on the air conditioner because in my room is like 50 degrees or something. I'm kind of melting here. It's very hot everywhere. <laughs> Oh, we're just in the Caterpillar fight here. Yep. Doing an OG method. Forgot to put hash on, so we're just, you know, doing a retrospective on how we used to do the run. Yeah, remember how bad this fight used to be? I, I specifically remember losing a run that was like 30 minutes up to this fight. What is the benefit of having Hashel here? Just uh... everyone can survive. Oh, okay. Yeah. So otherwise, you have to wait for Albert to get knocked out. Really. I actually. Why does Albert have to get knocked out now? Uh, now Hatchel is going to be missing experience if he doesn't. Ah, oh, okay, I see. Yeah, makes yep. sense. In fact, and that makes the Melly from a fight so much slower. Yes. <laughs> fifty degrees. I was talking centigrade. It's not really fifty degrees centigrade here. I was exaggerating. Wow, perfect. Very nice. Looks good. Shoot. Uh, I wish Lazani was here to count down for me. That's too much. Oh, we're good, we're good. This is why it's a nuisance to not have Hashlin. You basically just have to wait and hope. Well, that was good. Yeah, at least, uh... 
I'll have normal experience now. Perfect. So for Miranda's XP, it doesn't help at all that she gets like twice the experience here. She's still the same level on Melbu anyway, or what? Uh, well, yeah, it only helps on Melbu. And it's not really a big deal at first. She misses, she misses a level. You're gonna lose like okay. five seconds on Melbu, as opposed to saving two minutes on this fight. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We did, did the old way. No big yeah. Deal. Otherwise, with with Albert up, I think Hashel loses like almost a hundred damage per combo, or like exactly. It's a fairly significant portion, especially if you're still using the uh, the critical damage down. Even though I make a bunch of mistakes this run, I can still overcome them all, no problem. <laughs> Although, five seconds time gain on Melu Frama or time loss doesn't exist. It's zero or it's something. Yeah, it's RNG. <laughs> Who knows how much time it saves and loses. Having Miranda, Miranda does like 30 less damage with a trans Oh, it's so little, really. Ah, oh, okay, I see, I see, yeah, okay. And it's probably not even a full attack item, just like a charge or something. I still went pretty well, even though I messed up. Got really lucky with that. Yeah. That's the thing, the queue, you kind of have to balance out this, you know, how many experience you grab, but the closer you get to the end, you have to stop looking only at Malibu and start looking at, like, isn't it easier to just save time in the fight that you have before by just finishing it faster? So it makes sense to just kill Imago, Caterpillar stuff faster. I can see that making a lot of sense, actually. Yep. get to do the menu buffers strats so on disc 4 you know we have only 32 item slots and there are no more shops here for single items you probably just explained that before i came back right but just gonna say it again Correct. so since we have a limited item slot and there are no longer like there's no longer a shop here on the moon to like get um you know the single hit attack items the powerful ones we have to be a little bit careful with how many charm potions we buy and it's just pays to not stock up as many as we could use. So we just use this menu buffer strat, which allows us to keep moving without increasing the danger, the danger further, and can help us to like get to the next area and skip a few charm potions. Obviously, lose a bit of time over using a charm potion, but it's absolutely worth it to buy more translites earlier on. Most of the time, I have like one or two extra at the end anyway. But sometimes I do need the extra translites. So it's worth just having them and many buffing a little bit. Yeah. On a fight that is as huge as Melbu Frama, that dimensions that you play with, you don't want to <laughs> have like no buffers. Just imagine right. how much faster it would be if we had more than 32 item slots and could attack party members. Oh man. Quite an hour, at least. So good. I wonder if you could do sub 10 if that was the case. Probably still no, but it would make a difference. It would optimize the fight a lot. No, I think I think sub 10 would be definitely possible at that point. Yeah, it might actually be true. Yeah, I think I agree.
So these scripted fights that you have on the moon here, where there's a lot of them. You know, every character gets like his unique fight. And they're like kind of odd. It's not just beating the enemy down to zero HP. You just need to wait out for certain phases to occur. And it's kind of random. It's kind of RNG based when it progresses. So you can't really do more than just defending after you brought them to zero health and just hope it doesn't take all too long. There's quite of an RNG swing here too, just hoping that the game script advances and gives you, you know, the next phase or the end of the fight. It becomes a lot worse on the fight of Rose and Dart. That one is like... Yeah, bad. <laughs> Yeah, Rose's fight's pretty ridiculous. But they're good XP. By the way, I forgot if those fights actually award passive XP. Do they? Uh, no. Oh, it's Everyone. Just, yeah, okay. Yeah, everyone's out of the party. So there's like, there's like a 6k extra for everyone, because everyone gets like his single fight, but it doesn't distribute further. Alright, best of luck with the rest of the run. I must bid you all adieu. Thanks for joining in with us, Kios. Yeah, thanks, Not a dude. problem. Glad I could fill in a little bit while you two could get a mental break. Okay, so I noticed you didn't use the shop yet. Do you do it later? Yeah, we do it after uh, Rose's fight. So we have the Endor's Axe. That's 500 gold. Uh, that that makes sense. Okay. That basically makes it so and even if we get no loot at all in the whole run, we still have enough money to buy everything. Right. That's cool. Yeah, that's... That said, like, earlier just now there's no more items like attack items to buy but still there's a lot of good stuff you can buy here especially like weapons and armor and equipment like accessories like the giganto ring that boosts attack further your weapon the destroyer Mary, is the best weapon for Hashel, which gives him a lot of damage boost depending on his hp two percent damage boost on yellow 100 percent damage boost on red hp and the dragoon armors and we want to buy quite a few stuff there quite a few things there, but we don't need to do it immediately when we get there. So, right now we are fine with, fine with what we have, so just a few more of those unique story fights you have here on the moon and then shop later. Well, this Hashel's unique fight. It's a bit spoopy. Yeah, getting some RE8 village in here. So kind of similar to the one with Miranda here in this fight also. You bring her down to zero health 
pretty easily. Then the fight continues until like certain conditions are met. Like those unique fights are kind of like scripted fights where you have to do certain things. Select a lock options or you know attack at the right place. It's like that. In this case, we just will need to defend and wait for her finish after we defeated her. So it's like debuff, speed down, power down. And we're gonna use side bomb axe and then pretty much just defend and you know wait for the dialogue option to pop up that lets us advance and finish the fight. So after this attack she's essentially defeated. Zero health now. Now it's just waiting for the scripts and stuff to finish. Which is basically just defending. And this fight actually depends on uh, Hatchel's turn, so we'll speed him up. So he gets more turns and ends the fight faster. The oh, that's cool. It also makes sense with the speed down then. It, that you threw before the power down. Just try to get in Hatchel turns quickly. We just basically need to advance through Hashel's turns and for the text quickly. Yeah. She does her thing again. Always reduce you to do one health if it hits. And. And that's it. Mine's Eye Awaken is the finishing text choice. Typical Hatchel fashion. Punch the problem <laughs> away. <laughs> Even the old daughter. Doesn't matter. And that flashback with Hashel's daughter and her training partner, that Lisa, I think is the name, was it supposed to be implied that she killed her with that punch when she was raging? Uh, yes, I believe so. Yeah. Straight up murder. back and forth here. Alright, maybe it's manslaughter. I don't know, man. Oh, this is old dragon Michael. 
Next you need fire. Right, we have Congo before. True. It's been a while I reached disc four, you know. <laughs> Congles, although it's like, it really ends just on zero health, right? Just throw the pipe, side bomb and that's it. Yeah, Congles is the best fight. Scripting. Fight. And no script stuff, just... No text, no nothing. Yeah. Duke it out and that's it. So menuing wise in this place, um, you just have to kind of keep swapping the helmet around, right? Like you have that one plus fifty helmet, the dragon armor, the uh, helmet that anyone can wear, and always gotta give it to the guy who just has like his single fight, right? Yeah, I gave it to Albert. After Albert, we'll switch around everything again for the final. Kongle right now does does Kongle not need it here? No, he doesn't need it. He only needs the magic ring. Oh, okay, that's actually cool. Albert's fight, for some reason, has a way higher degree of difficulty than all the other fights. Every character fight is kind of chill. Albert's fight is pretty rough. Especially for us, because we don't focus too much on giving him XP. Remember, like, earlier in the game, we were using him a lot to just, like, Move XP into the uh, other characters. Just lying on the floor, doing nothing. Zero XP for him. But actually, his fight is like the hardest one. And since I messed up and left left him in for Mago, it's gonna be even harder. Yeah, makes sense. Might have to use a healing fog on him. So actually, newest threat apparently is that you have Hashel. Caterpillar fight, which is 30,000 XP, which is a lot of experience. And then Albert would get at least a bit XP there, just from passive XP. But when he's in the fight and used to sacrifice to give XP from Ren and Hashel, then he gets zero. And then this fight gets even harder. Psych bomb. What do you even do in Japanese against Dark Doll? Uh, you use Albert for the whole run, so he's over overpowered. Okay. All right. He has like max because to win dance at that point. It was actually pretty easy. Still takes like seven guys to win dances though. Actually, I'm kind of worried that can even Albert even do it. <laughs> I might have to use an extra attack item. You don't know what level he has right now. No, I'm pretty sure now because we use him in every single fight. I'm pretty sure we needed to switch him out for at least one. So we're gonna have to use an extra attack item and an extra healing item. Uh, it's always doable. Like with he has at least like 18, 19 something in that direction, but when he Never really got XP, he might be still like super low. Something like 13 or so. That would be bad. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Maybe no, we're good, we're good, we're good. random stuff? Or, I don't know. 15. Oh. I forgot we. No, you know, it's totally fine. I forgot we put him in for uh, Lloyd. Or put Congo in for Lloyd. That's, that's all we need. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we've been we changing the route so much lately, I forget. <laughs> I 
I appreciate that, Freitas. Oh, you, there's no problem right now in Albert only being level 15? Yeah, we had to use some extra items, but it's possible. We're not going to game over. I'll still save before, right. though. Actually, save a second waiting there for Rose to run instead of walk. Let's do that just in case. So I was messing up my menu there earlier. <laughs> Don't want to get double lapis here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll get triple lapis. Double grabby grabby. <laughs> This boss can do it too when you don't have the correct setup. Boss has like a strong attack and he can do it twice if your setup is wrong. You die. Happened to me. Yay. We're super Both overpowered. We should we could probably would have been able to do it no problem with without the armor. <laughs> but with the armor, no problem. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, every character gets his next 1,000 XP fight. Rose and Dart have theirs together. For us, also a 12,000 XP fight. And, um, this is one like that's probably the most RNG. You can bring him down easily just with one psych bomb and it's over. You just have to wait for him to let you. You just need to keep defending and waiting for the dialogue option that says, like, hey, he's exploiting his weakness. Here's his weak point. Now you can attack him in. And it take quite a bit until that happens. Just really luck based. And he's gone. And he's back. And he's gone again. <laughs> This is the hurry up and wait fight. This is the animation after which you can't kill him, but only after a certain amount of things have happened. So at the end you're sitting there waiting for this move to happen, and it really can take. Because uh, it's faster, Cloud Hero. And he's back again. And he's gone again. The reason is really just better to to uh, get more XP on Miranda because everything about in this game is about or in this run is about dealing magical damage. Miranda has the highest magic stat so it's a lot faster to just get all the XP on her. This game when someone survives the battle alone they get a lot more XP. They get three times the XP as normal and characters outside of the, of the battle get still 50% more than they would normally get. Kind of a broken XP distribution system in this game. That's why we constantly use those sacrifice everyone and only have one guy survive strats. So it's basically roam through the game super fast with overlevel characters that just, you know Miranda, just defeating all the bosses with like a few attack items. It's the core of the speedrun basically. Yeah, Dart's a waste of experience. 
and basically steal all of his experience and Howard's experience and give it to Miranda and Hatchell. Because if he gets the experience, other people don't get the experience. Actually, it makes perfect sense because yeah, yeah. that <laughs> means does. he has to be the one that dies the easiest. It's the fastest way to have all the experience on Miranda because she's the strongest character. And a part of that is that you need the other character members to be easy to die. So when Dart is always in the battle, then it's important that you never level him up because it starts to lose you time when he uh, levels up because it's hard to get rid of him. Way it's perfect. This fight just doesn't display it because this fight is like a um, it's like a different setup. Normally we don't fight Rose and Dart. Rose is as useless as Dart as Dart is. We're just forced to play with those here. Normally the damage is Miranda. Scroll a little bit back and watch like the boss fights in this tree. You will understand. Miranda is just killing everything in like two items. Dart does not contribute anything, and no other character can do what uh, what Miranda is doing. She needs all the XP for that. Did I ever get to pick up the Night Raid? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anymore. Actually went well. This fight went well. We got to the laser pretty quickly. Yeah, that's pretty good. No troll here from the boss. doing anymore <laughs> doesn't matter as long as we survive it's okay <laughs> yeah I did forget it <laughs> There's an important backup in case a uh, uh, psych bomb misses on Maru's fight. Right. He did keep buffering because that makes the danger not increase, so we don't get an encounter. Normally we use charm potions for those, so that we don't get fights, but we have a limited item stock here on the moon, because we have to buy all the items, the attack items, and the charm potions that we need before we go here, and we can't go back. The chops on the moon don't give us charm potions or attack items anymore, so we have a limited stock of charm potions, therefore sometimes we have to use menu buffers to skip encounters here.
All right, now we're getting to the actual shopping here. So this fort does have those shops with very important stuff, just not like charm potions and attack items. Bought some healing stuff here. And some... Did you already buy the weapons and equipment that I missed that? I had a small buffer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Also bought, like, all the equipment, accessories. Yeah, Clearly, Hash has the best weapon, the most important weapon for him. As those damage multipliers, depending on his health. Strength, buffing, accessory, goon armor, shield off, Melbu from us, high damage to the final boss. With the characters we're using. And a safety safe because Albert's other level because some stuff went wrong. Hopefully this fight works out. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be pretty sketchy, but should be able to pull it off. I mean, I did have it like level um, 19 before, but at level 15, I don't know. I'm going to trust you that this is working. Usually he's level 18. <laughs> well, you don't need any items if he's 18, but since he's 15, we're going to need some items. Yeah. Right. Casey, what up? That's Legend of Dragoon, the best game. Alright. The usual strat, using first speed up, buffs and debuffs. So in this fight, first we have to like uh, defeat like his... Um, he, can, he has like consisting of like two parts right now. We have to defeat the blades first and then we can attack his main body. Back from axe, the repeat item, strong one. To get rid of the swords, then we use the other uh, buffs and debuffs for the final phase of the fight. Hope it actually kills them. Just enough. Yeah, we're totally fine. Then we're good. Yeah, all good. I was panicking too much. My bad. I thought this was going to get really dangerous here because this fight is kind of scary with low levels. Five hundred, moderate, no problems here. Just <laughs> wind dance. Three hundred sixty seven. Wow. Pretty low, but it's gonna be okay. We could theoretically use translate on him, which would help a little bit with the fight. But since we have limited item stock, just need those on Elbuframa more. We just have to like accept the time loss here and go over the additions. Keep using Gust of Wind Dance until he's down. We can't just afford to lose more items here in this place. Free! It's totally free! 
Yeah, it's free. Power down and speed down and power up and speed up, I think everything is free. I was actually scared and bought an extra healing plug. I think I'm gonna go back and sell it <laughs> and buy a angel prayer instead. Approaching the end here. Do you feel like 10 hours right now? Do you feel it's been 10 hours? Uh, it's not that bad right now. It was worse. Yeah, I, I also feel it's not that bad, yeah. I mean, I also took breaks in between, which is, you know, but for you, you had to stay at it. Shinderu. Hmm. So, actually, just four more encounters: Earth fight, Irish, Dar uh, Zeke, and final boss. Three star quickly. Build up. Let's go. More buffers here just to make it to the next scripted event without using a charm potion. Not increasing in the buffers between, though. So. Therapy and Gamaru. I don't know if you need it on the angel fight. It doesn't seem like a dangerous fight. You defeat them and then you defend until it's over. Only if a uh, psych bomb misses. That would be really terrible. Yeah, that's why I saved and bought the basher. Usually in a world record attempt, I wouldn't buy the basher. Or save, of course. That's like really rare. I mean, like, attack item missing, especially psych bomb max. Yeah, this is like the only fight it can miss, besides some random encounters. Okay. Most fights is like guaranteed, right? And then there's like few where there's some sort of evasion, and then yeah, it's not, it's kind of weird on this fight because it doesn't seem like it's evasion because if you put a tiara on her, which has 10% accuracy for magical attacks, it doesn't help. It looks like you miss the same rate without it as with it. So I think More there's something like a else. Thing like in Lloyd fight maybe, where I it's like like random. Oh, you miss. Power up to increase Mary's magic to the point you can defeat with the Psycho Max and for the kill. Be easy. Right. Easy. So it's like other fights we saw here in this four. We already won, but now we just have to go through this text stuff and just, you know, pen, click text options, till it's over. Just survive. Just surviving is easily done by just defending.
really, the guy that made that animation, well, I want what he has for smokes or whatever it is. Crazy elephants and angel attack. It's probably the weirdest attack animation I've ever seen in any game. Like, for real. And we get another one of those. This fight is very much like. Pay close attention to the case. <laughs> Angel army with the triple headed elephant. Yeah, it's the same as in the Heschel fight. Always reduces you to one health to make you scared, but it's not scary at all. You always get turns afterwards. It's not possible that they do that and get a turn after again. You can always just fend to heal up and just keep going. And we got it. Do we see Quote 9 now on Virage? First Quote 9 in the run. Probably the only one. Oh yeah, we do quad nine on Zeke as well. Oh yeah, right. Two times. We got it. Often when you play this game, you might not ever get into a situation where you can actually hit that. Because this game doesn't have those high damage numbers. But it has actually the same damage limit as most of the Final Fantasy games from that era. Caps out as 9,999 damage. And we're actually going to do that right now. 1,000 is the health of the enemy. We could theoretically one-shot it, but the damage limit makes that we need one more touch. Miranda's super overpowered magic stat. Result from having worked on, you know, keeping her experience build up solo. Always making sure that no boss is experienced to other characters. Aiming for Dart and Albert or whoever else we have in the party to fall. And or Shanna gets the, seri the solo experience and she becomes more and more overpowered. Now at the point where she can really just even, this is the last disc, just one shot them theoretically. Or two shot them, if you precise. I pump axe and a bow and that's it. Or attack from another character. If they get a turn. close to the end here. Two simple fights and then the rough fight. So a lot of things in the run come down to the final boss. The final boss is really a gigantic fight with a lot of time swing and also a dangerous fight. Melbourne does a lot of damage, has a lot of health. That fight can range from like 15 minutes to 25 minutes or something depending how much it goes well or bad. So, we're getting to that. Let's fight a simple one. You know, what I just talked about. This is just easy experience. We're gonna see max damage in Legend of Dragoon right now. Power up. To buff Miranda's magic by 50%. Bad luck. A lot of animations. Yeah. Actually, never saw this attack before. Only that thing just just chills and dies. And in this fight, also, we don't have RNG. That it's like um, it's not useful what just happened because. When he dies, he doesn't end another attack anyway, so we always will get all the experience on Miranda anyway. We don't need to wait for all the to fall. So this is just really bad luck at this point. And here is the max damage. Up nine. And GG's.
this is the explosion I'm in, so you always will have the luxury that the game takes out the other party members and fixes the experience manipulation for you. This is an AoE that he always does as a final attack, so kind of unlucky that we got so many animations before, but not a big deal. It's a little time loss. Two more to go. DD, come on. Two more fights. Let's go. Let's go. Stick in there. Let's finish it here. Way below estimate, from what I can, what I can tell. Yeah, nothing seriously bad happened. Yeah, just some small stuff. The highlight was not picking the key. That's my personal highlight of today. <laughs> It would have yeah. been the perfect ghost ship. No, no, it wasn't. The highlight was the bubble. Defending bef to not get bubble skip, that was the best part. Yeah, ripping the 18% <laughs> chance. <laughs> oh, we could have gotten the super early kill and then just defend. Shit. Or wasted. I'm lost. Yes. Overall, the run was actually really, really nice for marathon setting, especially. Just Major mistakes. No pretty cool stuff. No really major bad RNG either. This time is easily this is probably like second place. Only second to your own real good run. So kudos. Second place is last place. First loser. <laughs> second place is first place if first place is already yourself. <laughs> so this fight unfortunately is not as nice as um, Virage fight which easily takes out. Why do we have Hashel here? Because it is nice now. We have to wait for him to do anything. Oh, okay. The auto kills Dart when he attacks him. That's interesting. Yes. Unless he misses. Oh, well. I thought that didn't work <laughs> for a second. Maybe I'm a little bit tired now. You actually want to have Albert here, right? No. No, we switch into Hatchel now, so we have to wait for Albert to die. Okay. But so it doesn't really change anything. experience, actually, right? In yeah, it doesn't change before. anything. Either way, it doesn't matter. And Zeke as well. That's still only one level. Yep. Doesn't change anything. Okay. Well, then. Well, this enemy has 12,000 HP, and we're gonna do the same thing. Cyclone Axe is gonna go for max, and then more attack for the finish. One nine, let's go. Pretty bad luck though with his turns. I agree. Not even frozen jet. And he's a fire dude, you have to use frozen jet. Yeah, the frozen jet takes too long to pick up. Although the night took because too the long. Area we are, yeah, because it's the area we have to buffer, right? So you have, we need to add infinite amounts of buffers. Exactly. You can actually get to that area without any buffers at all if you have perfect movement. Which, of course, I didn't. <laughs> because you forgot it, but <laughs> the movement was actually fine. 
All right, final boss. Man, ten hours. I didn't even have to do anything, and I feel, still feel exhausted. I just had to watch you do stuff. Apparently, it wasn't actually Zeke himself. It, Zeke was assessed by Melbu Frama, the actual villain. Therefore, acted in that in his favor as Emperor Diaz. Yeah, it turns out Lloyd, the main villain, was a cat's paw of Emperor Diaz, or of uh, yeah, Emperor Diaz, who was actually Zeke, who was actually Melbu Frama. Hmm. <laughs> When you say it like that, it kind of sounds dumb. <laughs> Lloyd just keeps losing more of his credibility. So OP in this one. He just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And now he presents us another horrible failure. And he charged at the final boss. <laughs> I actually hated this scene when I first played the game because I was like, yes, we actually get to fight alongside Lloyd. And then we get this. Lloyd getting wrecked again. So the final boss has four phases. The first phase is actually the slowest and has some pretty consistent damages and cycles that we can manipulate to make uh, Hatchel get red HP before we throw our boosters. So we're going to be going pretty slow, it looks like, at the very beginning by just regular attacking with everyone and waiting till Hatchel has a certain amount of HP at a certain time before we throw our speed down, power down, speed up, power up. Exactly. This is like the first fight in quite a while where we actually make use of other party members than just Miranda. In this fight, we can't just be like power down, like debuffs on the enemy, buffs on Miranda and just win because this is like the final boss and has a lot of health and we need Hashel's help as well. And the power down is... Power Down is an item that it does not affect only Miranda's damage, it affects Miranda and Hashel's damage. Because the Power Down is thrown on the enemy and makes the enemy weaker. So we want to wait with the Power Down until Hashel is like, like EDD just said, in uh, red HP. Because then Hashel will deal double damage. So we have to wait for the right moment here to shoot our ammunition. The fight is very long anyway, and we have only like a handful of turns where you can use all the max damage from all our buffs and debuffs on the enemy. We wait for the perfect moment for that. The reason why it's important with Hashel's HP is you can buy his ultimate weapon, which we did earlier in the shop. That weapon has that property. Hashel and yellow HP, which is health health, Hashel will deal 50% more damage. Hashel in quarter HP, which is red health, full damage. So we need to wait for that to happen so that he deals all the damage while the power down is on Melbourne. In the same time, that's also the time where we want to have the power up on Miranda and just go all in on damage and turn down as quickly as possible. Still, even when the fight goes perfect, it's still going to be a really long fight. 15 minutes at least. Probably even 16, 17, 18 plus. It's like one of the longest RPG boss fights, final bosses, speedruns. 
So, let's see how it goes. Most of it is RNG. Let's just pray for the best. Let's go. Alright, this gravity grabber is just, um, to just destroy the tentacles. Need like two of those items to destroy the tentacles. Because they just consume a lot of time and keep doing a lot of attacks. It's a slow animation, but it's the only AoE that we can have right now on the moon. I should already starting to wear Small damage numbers. It's just normal physicals. It all counts, you know. The boss has 40,000 health. 42, I can imagine 000. how long it takes. 42. in US version and 60,000 JP. Thankfully, we're playing US version. Tentacles down. Or just need to wait for Ashel's HP to go down. So we can start going for real damage. Kind of keep our ammunition in check right now. Just wait for the right moment. Go all in. For this attack, we know that Malbu is going into a special phase. It's not going to do something for a while, other than counter-attacking. He always does that at that point. He always does stone. That's why we have bought the deep red fire. Back up. Stone. You see, now we go from 400 to 600. We have at least the 50% on uh, the 50% damage mod on Hashel. After this, hopefully we are in red when it's an AoE. As long as it doesn't miss. Yep. I'm red. We can start playing here. Perfect, here we go. So now we're gonna start going all in. Debuffs, buffs, getting all the damage in. Because now Hashel being in red will do his max damage that he can do. Now's the time. Ha! Ha! 
There it goes. 1200 from Hashel. Now we're playing it. He only, Erzu Guardian, he only does in this encounter, in this fight. Because he has the Destroy Mace, the final weapon. The final weapon has that property. Yellow means 50% more damage, red health means 100% more damage. That sucks. It looks so, however. Yeah, like the dream is over already because this attack is going to kill Hashel. That's pretty unlucky. Oh, I'm wrong. Thought that would kill. Okay. But you can't attack now because now yeah, you will counter it. Need a hopeful that we need a face switch now actually. Yeah, hey, Psypho Max is the right choice. For the max damage with Miranda now. Face switch, so he stops this face. Because now he can't physically attack. You get a counter it, as you see. Kind of annoying. We're wasting precious red HP Hashel turns here. We do get in free turns with Miranda at least. Just powered up. Perfect. All right. Look all that bad, actually. Nice. So we're back to dealing damage. Yeah, it could have been a lot worse. Power down, still in effect. Actually, it's pretty much what we want. Just want to get as many turns as possible while the power down on Melbu is still in effect and gives us all this damage buffs. Took a little long, but do you get the damage in right now? Also the face switch, I guess. Is that like gonna clean up, clear like the power down, or do we get more power down moves? Uh, this counts as one turn. So he had two turns. This is the second turn, so he has one more turn of power down. Okay, so we have more damage. Let's just hope we get like really a lot of turns. So Melbu has an RNG in that he can do nothing. He can sometimes just do absolutely nothing. And we just hope that this happens as many times as possible, that he just chills now and we get all the damage in as long as the power down is still in effect. Don't act, don't act, give us turns, give us turns. This is like a de defining phase of the fight, how well your Melbu's fight is. Depends mainly on how long you can get turns here. Okay, rip. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> that good. But that it could was be a lot nice. worse. You though. can get like five attacks there if you're lucky. Oh. It's kind of unlucky. No, there's no damage variance in this game, like in Final Fantasy games is. In Final Fantasy games, you have this uh, RNG in what damage numbers you get. Here, it isn't. Every damage is 100% calculated. There's no RNG factor in what damage you get. There's also no crits, there are only misses. It can't just be that your attack just completely misses, and that's it. Overall, the fight is still not going that bad. He was already in yellow and ate some more damage after it, so... More than half down, he's like probably like 18, 19k left. If anything, maybe even less than 18k. So we just need to get in constant hex hammers and trans lights and bring him down to zero. Right now, that he doesn't target Hashel when he gets a turn. Hashel is so low on health, and we need him there. 
keep doing the damage. Uh... Yep, okay. From now, yellow. Need to revive him. It's still 50%, so we go from 800 down to 600 now. It's okay. All good, guys. All good. We're good here. Split in two different kinds of phases. This enemy can like switch between day and night and it does different stuff. In day phase it can uh, turns. But usually if the fight goes well you don't ever get to that. Normally we bring him down that's enough that he switches right to the last phase. Hopefully he stays like that too. Like the block turn thing is really annoying. And like block commands. If he blocks item on Miranda then she can't do anything really. Okay, star phase. Out the explosives. And be nice. This can be nice to bring Hexel back in the red. I think he gets more damage. Okay. Approaching water. Water HP is like. When he goes below 11,000. Good execution on the Hex Hammers also. Artist Edition, but you know. You never get to really do it in the run. You have to play 10 hours different stuff. Voice can be a little bit rough too. Okay, Hashlow back in red. If he doesn't die, this can be nice. Now we get max damage from Hashlow again. The trend slide, another 1200, another 800 from Hashlow, another 2k. Should hit red after another Hex Hammer, actually. Okay, face switch. Final face. Here we go. Uh, who wants me to mash translice? <laughs> <laughs> Just win, okay? Just win. <laughs> well, I'm gonna show you that I can do it. I don't need no stupid turbo. And so final phase is the one or you preferably already have him down as much as you want to. As down as much as down as possible because in the final phase Melbu has the strongest attacks. He has some attacks that will do a lot of damage and then you have to, you know, keep healing or reviving and get a little troll here. So also no longer have buffs or debuffs sitting, meaning that no protection, no damage reduction on the on the boss either. He can hit really hard here. So we just hope that he does the idle thing that I talked about earlier. As much as possible. We just want to get lucky to get as many turns. And just win. That's probably still the biggest RNG factor in this fight. Just how many turns you get, how many turns he takes, and how many he skips. Yeah, we tried so hard to be able to skip this phase, but nothing consistent came out of it. At least nothing that's worth it. You save 10 minutes here, but you can lose 20 minutes other places. Okay. This is the serious face. Okay. I would expect after the Hexhammer you should be red. I'm still not red, okay. You can hear him mashing in the mic. He's mashing this one. Oh. The eye number. I missed no the team input there. Item. Hey, there's a good, there's a good one. Okay, this is nice because Hashel has the 
Ogre Elemental Dragoon Armor. Okay, he's right now. 10,000 left only. Let's go. 9.2. Uh, I'll turn on my mic. I missed an input. Finger slipped. Thousand. Come on, 8K. Wow, okay, really go, 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 go. Does he still do lightning on Hashel again? Wow, yeah. That's so lucky. That's so incredibly lucky. <laughs> Two times uses the attack he's immune to over armor. Alright. I missed one still. 6.8. 6.8k. And with the Hex Emirate, 6,000 left. 6,000 HP left. I knew he was going to do that. It's a plume, right? So it's not a big deal. Oh my god, she can't bow herself that hard. Perfect, okay. So we have Pluma and Hashel to, to defend against Confuse so he can heal her. Killing Fog to bring Miranda back to max HP. We keep dealing damage. So Hashel's gonna fall to this attack unless it misses. Which I don't think it really can. So, gotta wait one turn with Miranda to bring him back up. Exactly, Jorky. Faust has this move too. This is fourth move, so Faust, if you pray the fight correctly, doesn't even get to that. But that's a different story. Okay, Hashel's back up. Let's go. 6,000 left. I'm gonna use Dragoon. People ask, are we ever gonna see Dragoon transformation? We do, here it is. The one and only. So what is the deal with that? Again, you can talk. This makes him go to a defensive stance. Ah, uh, okay. So he won't so use he any attack. Two turns from here. Okay. Makes sense. Four six. Now his defensive stance. Yeah, now not gonna act. We hopefully just kill him here now. Be nice if he makes Hashel regular in red. The weeps. Dragoon block face. Four thousand. We even that's actually We don't know when exactly he hit uh the red, maybe it's even lower. But that's two eight maximum. Three less. Right before dying definitely. He's gonna fall in the next turns. Actually back to red. We're going max damage from you. Could be already it. One more trans light. Okay, down burst. We don't have trans lights left. Fine, we still have AoE attack items. 
finish with him in one next one or two attacks. Oh my god. Can only have like a few HP left actually. Yeah, GG's, GG's. Purple. We could have used one more translate in this fight. One more translate would have saved so much time. We're kind of running out of gas at the end there. But yeah, hey, GG's, man. Great job, great job, BDD. Yeah, thanks Excellent for hanging run. out, guys. Thanks for commentating. Thanks Very well done. Chatting. Heck of a run. I woke up, I'm waking, I'm awake. That's the speed run. You just mash. You just mash. Yeah, of course, Dart has to take all the glory at the end. Now we get to check out the ending. Some pretty fun voice acting here. Blah. We get to watch the credits and the movie and stuff. Heck yeah, we're watching the movie. Nice. Grab your popcorn. Ah. <laughs> Dart. Ah, you have grown up. Father? I couldn't do anything for you as a father. 
Please forgive me. But, but, Father, we finally met. This isn't fair. Dart, I'm so glad I met you. I think Digimon World. Ten thirty five is still actually not that bad. Be crazy good actually for a marathon, I would say. Yeah, I mean it was Pretty decent, <laughs> except all the stuff that I messed out, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Level Fighter had some troll parts. We kind of were running out of gas at the end, which was a little unfortunate. Yeah, I shouldn't have used that translate in phase one. I should have attacked or defended. That makes sense. Yeah, it's still second place, but. I've finished like several runs faster than this. Rose! Father! <laughs> voice acting. Hot tear. Nuclear explosion there. That was the epic conclusion. Now we get to see the after. The afterwards. Yeah, they're totally oh, yeah, fine. I love this a lot. It's like the nicest thing of the credits and post, you know, end game. Like, it's little video scenes of like how everyone has their happy end. A little cheesy, but really, we have so many movies and games with like depressing endings. I like this happy ending, really. It'd be something to smile about. Flaming Rush sounds pretty good. Flaming Rush! Yeah, you missed when we were doing all the additions earlier. Madness Hero! Raising Dynamo! Yeah, get the happy ending out. Oh, yeah. Cool buggy. Not cool. Japanese ones are actually better. 
I don't even know what he does in volcano in Japanese. Like, Vulcano! <laughs> it's a volcano! It's like, volcano! Volcano! Something like that. But of course, double slash is the best in Japanese. Taggedy! Does feel good. There, Dart finally gives Lavitz his drink that he owes him from this one. I. And he also pours one for Zach Bull. <laughs> Man, this ending is so nostalgic. It reminds me of uh, when I was a kid beating this game. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, let's see if the credits load actually. <laughs> that can also happen. Dang, that sucks. They didn't load. Well, <laughs> you guys didn't go to YouTube and want to watch the credits. <laughs> we talked so much about this game being able to solve fuck on PS system. It had to happen at some point. At least it happened after the run was over, not in the middle of the run. This is like Invalid. the best place that can happen. <laughs> yeah, go to YouTube and watch the final credits.